Megan Fox. Yeah, Megan Fox has the story. Megan Fox. Megan Fox. Megan Fox writes at PJ Media. Eat Tucker. Damn it. Man. <laughs> I cried for two days. <laughs> Megan, thank you very much for that. So, um, <laughs> I can, I can explain the bed thing. <laughs> if you don't show up and vote, up your ass. Like Jesus going to the temple, he's like, I gotta whip this! <laughs> Get out! Get, Get out! out! The lovely and wonderful Megan Fox. Not that hey. one. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> Not the weird one that drinks blood in his toe thumb. Megan Fox. Megan. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. She's the devil. Megan. Megan Fox. Megan. Megan. Megan Fox. I've been very nice to you, although I could probably maybe not be based on the way you have treated me, but I wouldn't do that. You've never met a like me. You want to tangle? You want to go? Holy Holy sh- too much cussing on this. I guess we didn't bleep it, so we got to turn it off. But I just, it just, it's. It... You pissed off the wrong woman. Oh my God! I have been assaulted when Megan Fox runs wild on you, brother. She's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Not for publication. <laughs> <laughs> Destroy. I'm Megan. 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 Megan Fox. Thanks to Cheers. you. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to my channel. I'm Megan Fox, and I know a bunch of you are here for the very first time. And I just want to say welcome. Welcome to all of What the Hales' is followers who are interested in what's going on and what's happening to Jeremy and George in Levy County, Florida. So a little bit about me, since a bunch of you have not been here uh, before. I just want to tell you um, who I am and what I do. So you know my name. I'm the other Megan Fox, by the way. <laughs> there is another one. I don't know. You might have heard of her. You might not have. Uh, but I'm I'm the original. She's younger than me, so I get to say that. Anyway, I am a journalist, a broadcaster, an author. I write for pjmedia.com. I've written two books, Believe Evidence, The Death of Due Process, from Salome to hashtag me too. Uh, this is a book about false accusations that specifically women have made throughout literature and history to either have men murdered or killed or jailed or uh, all sorts of terrible things because it's basically an answer to the hashtag believe women movement that I think is very dangerous and anti-due process. And I wrote this book to warn you and warn parents out there about how to avoid these types of situations and uh, to not, don't believe the hype, you know, <laughs> the hashtags that are going around, except for buckle up, hashtag buckle up, get that one trending. We need that. My other book that I wrote is called Shut Up, The Bizarre War That One Public Library Waged Against the First Amendment uh, with uh, my co-author, Kevin Dujan. We wrote this about a library in Illinois near Chicago, where I'm from, where am I? I'm representing Chicago today. I'm from Chicago. I live in New York now, uh, but I'm a Chicago girl, born and raised, and we wrote an 
uh, a book about a war that we got into, a three-year war with a suburban library, the Orland Park Public Library in Chicago that was allowing men to watch pornography around and near and in front of children and also do things that I can't even discuss on YouTube uh, and not call the police on them. So this ended up in lots of lawsuits and uh, um, I reported on it extensively. They sued me. I sued them back. It was a whole war. And that book is great. Both of those books are on Amazon. You can get them. They are in the links in the description of the show. And you can uh, find those there. All right. So one of the things that I'm good at is investigation, freedom of information requests. That's what this book, a lot of it is about, how to do freedom of information requests and how to find things out from public bodies uh, in, you know, because under the law, the sunshine laws. And I am not a lawyer. I am a journalist, but I come from a family of lawyers. All my best friends are lawyers, and I am interested in the court process and in justice in general. I actually really love the law. If I had chosen a different, um, if I had gone down a different road, I probably would have gone uh, to law school. Although every lawyer I talk to is like, be grateful you didn't, which is funny. Uh, so, boy, has this been a really amazing ride. I'm so shocked there's so many of you out there who are so, you know, into this story. And I don't blame you for being that way, but it's just, it's kind of uh, overwhelming how many of you are out there that want to hear other people talk about this and see it get wider coverage. One of the things I, I don't consider myself a part of LawTube, um, that's what we call the lawyers who do the uh, reporting on YouTube. I'm like LawTube adjacent because I follow what they are doing and I report on what they're what they're doing and what they're commenting on. And I carry some trials here live as well. We do a lot of trial coverage. We covered the Maya Kowalski trial extensively here. That coverage, there's a playlist on that. You can go back and watch that. That was a really fun trial. I covered the Johnny Depp trial, the Gwyneth Paltrow trial. Uh, from a journalist's point of view and from a layperson's point of view, from a member of the jury's point of view is basically how I see oh, what we do here. So I do a lot of reporting as far as writing on different court cases. I have followed family court corruption for over 20 years. I have a 26-part series on pjmedia.com where I talk about all of the, where I investigated cases of family court corruption there, that was like a 26 or 29 part series, uh, which is on pjmedia.com. I actually, uh, on my podcast, I have a weekly, a daily podcast called Fox Den Daily. You can download it on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, anywhere where you normally would get your podcast. Uh, Fox Den Daily is uh, my show. And I would love it if you would go follow it, you guys. That would be so great. You guys have been showed so much love to the creators who like that umbrella guy and DUI guy who's going to be here with us at, at 4 o'clock with the hails. Um, I'm going to get into some things I wanted to cover first before we get to that part of it where we're going to watch a hearing at 4 o'clock with Jeremy and George and Larry uh, from DUI Guy Plus. And before that, we're going to go over some brand new documents that just got filed in the court. So I was going to go over the motion to recuse attachments. So I might still like talk a little bit about that because there's a statement from the attorney that Larry and I didn't get into on Sunday night that is very interesting, very interesting. And then we're going to watch the uh, January 23rd hearing after that. So, but there are new documents that were filed today in the Hales case. So we have a new motion. Um, what is it for? Let me look. It is a motion to compel discovery. It seems like the plaintiff is withholding discovery, didn't show up for a deposition, isn't turning over discovery in the Hales case. And so there's a motion to compel that just went in. All right. So the chat is really flying today. If my mods, um, if Rogue Mama, if you're here, spam the chat so I can give you your wrench today. Our, we don't have any rules on this channel, really. Just try not to use words that are going to get me, uh, you know, kicked off of YouTube. That would be great. <laughs> but as far as free speech, we're a free speech channel. Uh, try to get along in the chat. That's, that's something else I ask. Uh, you can disagree. We can all Americans, we can, we can make Americans friends again. And our chat has been really good about disagreeing and being likable about it. All right. I have written an article on pjmedia.com about this case. 
if you have not clickety clicked on it, you need to go and do that because that is one way to support this show. And also, I would love it if you would share it on social media. If you have a Facebook page, go share it there for sure because uh, that is where most of the traffic is generated for news stories. I know it's hard to believe, but that is the case. I am dropping it in the chat right now and I'm going to pin it to the top of the page as soon as it pops up here. Come on. Boy, the chat is moving so fast. You guys, I'm not used to having this many people here. This is like, ah, and by the way, you guys pushed me over 34,000 subscribers. Whoa, whoa. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I, and I hope you stay. I hope you stick around. I mean, we do a lot of interesting stuff around here. I recently am covering a case that you can't even believe about false accusations. Um, oh, I see you, Watcher. Yep, I will. Doing it now. Giving you a moderator wrench. There we go. All right. Uh, I'm covering a case about Laura Owens versus Clayton Eckert, the former bachelor. We call them the tonsil twins. Uh, it's the tonsil twins case. She is a false accuser. She's accused uh, Clayton Eckert of impregnating her with twins, uh, but there was only oral activity going on, according to Clayton Eckert. She's produced no evidence. Her she's also been avoiding discovery. She's also been avoiding her deposition. She didn't show up either, just like L Lynette here. And um, so it's very interesting. That case, you guys might be really interested in. Uh, you, it's an incredible, there's a uh, an entire playlist. It's called Fetal Attraction. You can go and check that out. 2,991 of you here right now. Actually, no, sorry, 3,046 of you are here right now. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. If we get to 50,000 subscribers, holy crap, that'll be a party. I will throw a party and you're all invited. So I'm going to give you the usual warning that I give whenever I get a spike in subscribers. And that warning is this. I look forward to disappointing you. <laughs> One, try, try not to, try not to rage flounce out of here the minute I give you an opinion that you don't agree with. There's definitely stuff I might say that you're going to be like, what? Uh, but I still believe and maintain that we can all be friends. Americans can be friends. To, and it doesn't matter who we vote for either. All right, here we go. First thing I want to get into is why don't we look at the brand new motion? It's the compel motion to compel discovery that was filed by Jeremy's attorneys today. This literally just came out on the docket and we haven't seen this yet. So let me pull this up. All right. Let's move this over here so I can see it properly. Motion to compel discovery. Respondent Jeremy Brian Hales, by and through underside counsel and pursuant to Florida law, states on February 26th, beyond the time provided by Florida Family Law, petitioner Lynette Preston filed her late response to respondent's request for production. A copy of the request and the response being attached. While basic documents were produced, the response is evasive and insufficient and otherwise fails to comply with the requirements of Florida law. Florida's discovery rules allow for the liberal production of records that are reasonably calculated to lead to the discovery of admissible evidence. Law permits discovery of any non-privileged matter that is relevant to the subject matter of the pending action. Florida family law requires that a party producing documents for inspection, produce them as they are maintained in the usual course of business or identify them to correspond with the categories in the request. In this matter, petitioner inadequately responded to many of the requests by not producing documents for inspection. Wrong. It's very wrong. You need to produce your documents. Yet seemingly knowing what these documents are, believing that a nebulous response is adequate under Florida's discovery rules, it is not. You are fake news. For example, response to request number one is insufficient under Florida's discovery rules. There are none other than the text messages between the petitioner and respondent of which the respondent is already in possession. There may be a few other documents responsive to this request on another phone of the petitioners. However, that phone is broken and the petitioner does not have access to said phone at this time. Well, that sounds 
That sounds convenient. That's what she said. What is disturbing about this response and what should not be well taken by this court is the utter hypocrisy in this response. The response doesn't state that these text messages will be produced as is required under the rules. Then it implies that the petitioner would gladly turn over her cell phone to show these now conveniently missing text messages. <laughs> That's a lawyer way of saying. Bullshit. If only it wasn't broken. Sorry. I like the uh, parentheses, sorry. <laughs> but as to text messages on some sort of device that isn't broken, those text messages will be used at trial and you're not going to get them until then. Simultaneously, the response assumes that respondent still has these messages and his phone has not been deleted or otherwise broken. In Grinnell Corps v. Palms, uh, the fourth district said the various instruments of discovery now serve as a device to narrow and clarify the basic issues between the parties and as a device for ascertaining the facts or information as to the existence or whereabouts of facts relative to those issues. Thus, civil trials in the federal courts no longer need to be carried on in the dark. The way is now clear, consistent with recognized privileges for the parties to obtain the fullest possible knowledge of the issues and facts before trial. Um, Supreme Court observed that one purpose of civil discovery was to abolish the tactical element of surprise in our adversary trial process. Right. Surprise is not allowed. You're not allowed to surprise the other side with some new information that they haven't seen. Uh, just so you guys know, it's hard for me to follow the chat when it's flying this fast. Uh, Super chats, of course, are always welcome. And oh my God, they're piling up. Holy cow. Peter Boy detecting things for the super sticker. Appreciate that. Ray, uh, Roy Mazzy became a new YouTube member. Welcome to the Fox Den. Uh, that's the sound of a fox, by the way. What does the fox say? It says this. It's a little scary. Uh, Diane Cook, thanks for the super chat, says the judge should pay uh, Jeremy Hale's attorney fees that he has wasted on 43 hearings. Well, actually, I think he should be getting paid by Lynette. He's acting as her co-counsel. He's acting as Silverman's or Silverberg. What's his name? Silverman, Silverberg. He's acting as his co-counsel, uh, basically litigating from the bench. You've heard of judges who legislate from the bench. This judge, the grudge judge, he likes to litigate from the bench. I think he wishes he were back in private practice and we can make sure that happens actually. <laughs> let's, let's start a campaign. Judge to Thomas's for uh, private practice. <laughs> Private law practice. Get off the bench, sir. You don't belong there. You belong in front of the court, maybe in front of a judge advocating for a client, because that's what he seems to want to do is advocate for, for a litigant in his court. All right. Uh, Peter Boy, detecting, thanks for the super chat, says, what the hails? Lily Smith, thanks for the super chat. So is the form online the only way to contact Kat Kim Kamek, Levy County Representative, and Ron DeSantis about this judge? Are those the only ones to contact? Um, not just the county. So I haven't looked into this yet. You would need the, um, you would actually, this is a good question. Uh, I believe you would need the majority leader to, to, cause you need somebody to, you know, start an action of impeachment. That's something we should look up to find out how it's done and who you go to. But I think the majority leader would be a good place to start, including, of course, the local representatives. But you want to go to both the House of Representatives and senators. You want as many of them to know about this as possible. Okay. Shane Cook, $2 for the cause. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mike D, thanks for the super chat. New to your channel. What the hails? Go Bears. <laughs> Go Bears. <laughs> Strangely, I'm also a Bills fan, though, because I have fallen in love with the Buffalo Bills since I moved here. Linux Charms, thanks for the super chat. Says podcast logo is almost done. Thanks for the stream, Megan. Oh, I'm so excited to see it. It's going to be so cool. Debbie Childers, welcome to the YouTube uh, membership. Welcome to the Fox Den. And you too, Lily Smith. Sandra Kelly, thanks for the super chat. People who are fighting for what the hails we support fully. We are strong and love what the hails. Wall of, rec of recusals for grudge judge. Hashtag buckle up. 
And we have David Rickards. Thank you for the super chat. Megan, a donation for your to your hair care. Keep up the good work. Yes, you'll find out if you stick around here for long that I have an obsession with my hair and hair care and curly hair in general. Uh, so you'll learn a lot about hair if you hang out here. <laughs> All right. Uh, Wild Tribe Chaos, thanks for the super chat, says, I helped Jeremy diagnose Lynette with liar beaties. <laughs> liar beaties is funny. All right. All right, you guys, let's move on here. Uh, again, because the chat is flying so fast, it's easier for me to see uh, Super Chats because they're highlighted. If I miss something in the chat, I do apologize. I'm not doing it on purpose. All right, moving on. The same problems exist with petitioners' responses to other requests. The petitioner has already produced all documents responsive to this request, she said. These documents have been provided to the respondent through entry of evidence during hearings and or filings in the court file. Notwithstanding that, the petitioner produced a letter from Paul Hem Hembry, Angela Gleason, Heather Marion, Patty Plumer, and Maria Hughes. By definition, the respondent is already in possession of this material. There are no other documents responsive to this request that has not been provided by the petitioner and disclosed to respond it. There are no other documents responsive to this request that have not been provided by the petitioner and disclosed to the respondent. There are no other documents respond. So it's just nothing, 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 she says. The petitioner produced a statements of facts and evidence log and additional video evidence. The petitioner intends to use the respondent's posted YouTube videos, which by definition are in possession of the respondent. Oh, now this is interesting. So number nine here, she says they're going to use the respondent's posted YouTube videos, but doesn't say which ones. Do you see? This is not okay. Let me, this is the, the, the thing about you can't surprise your opponent. They have to detail which videos they're going to use so that the defense can come up with their defense for whatever it is they're going to use from those videos. His lawyers, Jeremy's lawyers, need to be alerted to which videos. Jeremy has like a thousand videos. You have to tell the opponent which videos you're using. You can't just say, well, he's in, he has them because it's his, we're going to use videos from his channel and he owns all of them. No, 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 no. You have to say which ones, which ones. Oh, by the way, if I pull this out at any time, just so you can see that this is not a weapon or a strange, uh, this is, this is a, uh, what is this? This is a Theracane for my, my shoulder and neck problems, which I was, I had to take the day off yesterday because I have a pinched nerve and it was driving me absolutely crazy. So this is for trigger points. If you see me <laughs> digging into my back with this during this stream today, because it's going to be a long one. Uh, that's what it is. Oh my God. I need, I need help. I need help with this pain. It's, it's so bad, but I'm going to try not to uh, complain about it too much. But if you're wondering, what is that thing? <laughs> that's what it is. 4,000 of you here right now. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Let's get back to it. It's a big hook. Says Kathy and Kev. Couldn't we, could we use it on the judge? <laughs> could we use it on the judge to be like 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 in the old vaudeville acts? You just just hook him and drag him off stage. <laughs> can we can we just get can we just get a a a, a, a large hook for the courtroom? That would be so funny. Or a gong, like from the gong show. When everyone's had enough, you just ring the giant gong. Or the shame bell. We, that's what he needs in his courtroom is this. Shame. 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 <laughs> yes, we ring the shame bell here a lot. All right. Uh, so she thinks that she can just say, we're going to use his YouTube videos but we can't uh, tell you which ones. And so the defense will have no time to develop a defense for whatever it is she's claiming is defamatory or uh, harassment, right? So that's, that's totally unfair. Number 15, there are no other documents at this time that the petitioner intends to use at trial other than the documents that have been disclosed by the petitioner to the respondent thus far. 
The undersigned certifies that he has conferred or attempted to confer in good faith with the petitioner's counsel in an effort to secure this discovery with court action and has been unsuccessful. Wherefore, respondent requests this court to order petitioner to provide full and complete production of documents responsive to request numbers 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 15, and to pay respondents reasonable attorney's fees and costs for bringing this motion and any other relief that the court feels is just and proper. Um, uh, to the person in the chat saying, aren't the videos copyrighted? Well, yes, but that doesn't mean they can't be used in court. They, they absolutely can. They can be used in court. If she's trying to prove, it's not a republishing issue. Copyright is just for a republishing issue. It's for using, for evidence in court. So she can do it. Uh, Janice Wingfield, thanks for the super chat. Says, Megan, try dry needling for your back and shoulders. I get it done. I'm getting it done tomorrow. So I'm going to get uh, trigger point in injections tomorrow, uh, which is, they it's, there's dry needling involved as well. It it's it doesn't feel good. I'll tell you that. It feels awful, especially because they go into the base of my neck, right by my head, and oh my God. But hopefully it'll feel better afterwards. All right, let's continue down. 404. Request for production of documents to petitioner. petitioner. Uh, I think this is just repeating what it is. Instructions and definitions. The request requires production of documents or things in your possession, custody, or control, and for documents or things that are in the possession, custody, and control of your agents, employees, accountants, attorneys, representatives, or other persons who have documents deemed to be in your possession, custody, or control. Unless otherwise specifically stated, all requests call for the production of all responsive documents. Okay. If objected, you have to say why. Uh, must be organized and labeled. Um, any information requested below is withheld. If any information is withheld, that it's privileged, you have to say what those documents are and what the privilege is. Okay, got it, got it, got it. This is all pretty usual rules as for discovery. Um, basically saying to her attorneys, if you fail to give us depositions, you must tell us why. Uh, Marmite, I know that YouTube does not send out you notifications for my channel a lot of times. So if you want to be notified about when I'm going live, you have to follow me at meganfox.locals.com. You can follow me there for free. Download it on your phone. Uh, it's an app. Download it on your phone. Follow me for free, and then you'll get the notifications. If you want to subscribe, because we have so much fun there. We have live chats. We have a live chat going there right now, uh, which I cannot see at the moment. Locals don't don't hate me, but I don't have a lot of windows open because I have a feeling I'm going to get my computer's going to do the thing that it does, and I'll get kicked off if I have too many windows open. But anyway, there's a live chat there every day. Uh, and if you want to subscribe right now, the promo code is tonsil twins, all caps. You'll get two free months when you sign up for a year. And there's a whole bunch of exclusive content there as well. All right. And you will get the notifications there, though, for free. If you go there, follow me and click your notifications, turn them on and you'll get it. All right. So these are just discovery rules and definitions. So I think we can probably we can skip this. It's basically, you have to give us everything we ask for, and here's what those things might or could be. Then we have this, petitioner's response to request for production of documents. Oh, this was what they quoted in the in their motion, so it's basically just her response, where she, which we already read. Okay. Um, basically saying, I don't have anything, or I don't have to tell you. All right. Let's move that because we have something else I want to get into. Okay, so this is really interesting stuff. Are any of you familiar with our news? Because I was sent this today. There is, I'm not familiar with our news, but it looks like a uh, an online blog. Oh, wait a minute. I am familiar with our news. I know Tom. I interviewed Tom. It's Tom Lemons. Oh my gosh. That's funny. All right. So Tom Lemons is a journalist uh, and he has, he has written, I didn't know he was following this story um, or maybe he isn't. This is about a different 
story that's connected to Judge de Thomasus. So I just found this today. Uh, it was sent to me. Shocking developments emerge in Judge's divorce case attempts to conceal public fail. Now that is that this is allegedly Fifth Circuit or Fifth Judicial Circuit Judge Joel Fritton right here, this dude. And there's de Thomasus in the background there on the bench. So this is about another case that de Thomasus was involved in. And Silverman was the attorney. Ignore Archie Ruckus. My dog is barking. Kids must be home. A local circuit judge thought his divorce was coming to a close without dispute until his soon-to-be ex-wife raised new concerns over parental time-sharing and equitable dis distribution last week in a Hernando County courtroom. Now, where is Hernando County? And does de Thomasus also oversee Hernando County? Because he is the judge on this case. When was this written? This was in August of 2023. Our news first learned of the contentious divorce in September of last year. That's when Maria filed a report with H with uh, the county sheriff claiming that her husband had become violent and was making threats to order a hit on her new boyfriend, Commissioner Steve Champion. Due to the obvious conflict, Major Phil Lakin requested the Florida Department of Law Enforcement handle the investigation. Maria writes in her complaint, this isn't the first time he has made threats towards someone close to me or my circle. She goes on to explain that her husband warned that no one warned her that no one would believe her allegations. I have the sheriff and deputies in my pocket, Maria writes, that her husband said, allegedly. A source close to the family tells our news that Maria was so concerned for Judge Fritton's safety and well-being due to his homicidal and suicidal statements that she was forced to amend her complaint upon his request. Due to the retracted statement, the FDLE was forced to abandon their investigation. It should be noted. Oh, thank you, chat. Chat says Hernando County. Thank you, Kathy. Hernando County is in the same area, likely is in the area. So likely the same circuit court. Okay. That makes sense. It should be noted that the county sheriff refused to acknowledge that an investigation was being con conducted into Judge Fritton. Though, if, through a Freedom of Information Act request, our news discovered an email from Major Lakin that was sent to a the sheriff's information technology director, Matthew Bolo, asking him to hide information from our news regarding the Fritton investigation. Holy crap! In addition, Fritton was able to convince someone within the Fifth Judicial Circuit to conceal his divorce case from public records. Because you are a corrupt person. You're the most corrupt. This is bad. In addition, Fritton was able to convince someone within the Fifth Ju Judicial Circuit to conceal his divorce case from the public record. Sources say this is yet another example of Judge Fritton receiving special privileges that the average citizen could not receive. That's right. Divorce uh, filings are usually open to public inspection. Uh, wow. In an effort to prevent the appearance of prejudice by the Fifth Judicial Circuit, the case was transferred to the Eighth Judicial Circuit under Judge Craig C. De Thomasis. Well, now we have our answer. It was transferred because of the conflicts of interest, so De Thomasis got it. On Friday, our news attended a parental time-sharing hearing in Brooksville, and Fritton's attorney, Jeffrey Carrio, wasn't very happy to see our news sitting in the courtroom. At the start of the hearing, Cario demanded that our news be sequestered from the courtroom. Oh, now that's interesting. <laughs> so, so the judge's attorney wanted the media thrown out of the room. The following paraphrased conversation transpired. Judge's attorney says, I'd like to invoke the rule and remove all witnesses. One who is a potential witness, who is Mr. Lemons, who is in the back of the courtroom with his camera. We're asking the court to remove him from the premises. Uh, Judge de Thomasus said he's the potential witness that you've identified. Cario says that's correct. Can you proffer as to how he would qualify as a witness? Cario says Mrs. Fritton and Mr. Champion have been using Mr. Lemons as a pawn in this case to try to embarrass and discredit my client. He is not a member of the press. Oh, they love to do that. They love to say they can decide who is a member of the press and who isn't. Uh, a member of the press, by the way, is anybody who picks up a pen and reports on something. The First Amendment of the United States Constitution guarantees that no government body can decide who is press and who isn't. Not at all. Um, so that's against the that's why we have an amend, First Amendment that says we have a right to uh, freedom of the press. 
unencumbered by government interference. So you can't say he's a member of the press and he's not. She is and she isn't. There isn't one like governing body that can, you know, certify who's a member of the press. But they love to make that claim. If you don't work for the mainstream press, they say, you're not a real journalist. You're a blogger. Well, it doesn't really matter. Like bloggers break big stories. So if you break it, you break it. You don't have to work for NBC to uh, make a bit, you know, make a big splash. All right. Cario goes on to reference another one of his cases from several years ago, which the former RNRF also covered. Cario says he invoked the rule of sequestration during that hearing and that we were subsequently removed from the court. What Cario fails to mention is the judge is to the judge is that RNRF sued the court for violating our First Amendment rights and the ruling was overturned. Good for you, Tom. This is a common trick used by some attorneys to prevent the media from reporting on high profile court cases. Judge de Thomas, and they sure do, Judge de Thomas says, gave our news the opportunity to testify and defend our right to observe and record court proceedings. Oh my God. Oh my God. Judge de Thomas thinks that the media has to defend their right to be in an open courtroom. Excuse me, what? What? Bullshit. I'm trying to figure out which button I want to use right now. I know. Screaming goat, because this is what's going on in my head. <laughs> what? <sighs> it, this shouldn't even have been an issue. The judge should have been like, no, denied. It's He's reporting on this. He's here. Like, what? No, I'm not going to throw him out of the courtroom. This isn't Venezuela. But he decides instead to say, you can get on the stand and testify why I should let you stay. Oh, God. I'll tell you what I wish uh, could be told to this judge at some point. Go fuck yourself. But go fuck yourself. We need Elon in that courtroom. All right. Um, <laughs> we reminded the court that we cannot be compelled to disclose our sources. Therefore, our news cannot be called to testify as a witness. No shit. Maria's attorney, Joshua Silverman, so Silverman is involved in this one too, also defended our right to be present and even provided federal court opinions that supports that right. Also, Silverman was on the right side for once. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you, Silverman. In the end, Judge DeThomas has ruled in our favor, and the proceeding moved forward with litigating the Fritton's proposed settlement. Judge DeThomas was prepared to enter a final judgment in the case because both parties had previously signed a proposed settlement. Silverman argued that Maria was not prepared because she was not afforded an opportunity to dispute multiple issues of serious concern. Silverman argued that Maria did not have legal representation until August 22, and then she made several attempts to communicate with Cario in an effort to renegotiate the settlement. Cario argues that Maria never contacted him or mentioned any issue until Friday's hearing, but our news obtained emails and text messages from a source that shows Maria and her former attorney requesting a reevaluation of the settlement. According to the proposed agreement, Judge Fritton would only have to pay $800 per month in child support to care for their four minor children. Wow, that's cheap. For a judge who makes a ton of money, Judge Fritton makes over $182,000 per year. And according to a 2021 campaign financial disclosure affidavit, Judge Fritton claimed to have a net worth of over $1 million. Maria only made $26,000 last year and had to borrow money from a family to retain an attorney. In addition, Cario is asking Maria to pay his client's attorney's fees. Wow, that's bold. That's, that's bold. Wrong. In light of the developments and lack of Maria's representation prior to hiring Silverman, Judge de Thomas has ordered a continuance so that Silverman and his client can provide a counter proposal to the court. Court is expected to reconvene at a later date. Silverman and his client declined to comment following the hearing. 
Cario did not respond to our request for comment and stated, as you are aware, these parties have children, and as such, we will not litigate this case in the media. We are fully prepared to respond to any false allegations being made in the courtroom, not on Facebook. I suggest you wait until this matter is fully addressed in the proper form before you attempt to defame my client and harm this family. You know, when people do this, like, no, new, the news is not here to defame anyone or harm anyone. We're just reporting what's happening. Our news replied, as a journalist, it would be unethical to use my platform in a manner that would harm children or anyone. It's funny how Tom is answering everything. I, he's thinking the same thing I am. This is a high profile case as it pertains to my audience. Any allegation that a family court judge is abusing his power to influence his own divorce, commit domestic violence, or provide fraudulent information in a financial affidavit would be something the public deserves to know. Right on, Tom. Right on. Our news will continue to follow any new developments in the Fritton case. Now, what is interesting to me about that article is that we have more proof now that the judge, Judge DeThomasis, is very is, is opposed to and doesn't really understand the First Amendment. I mean, in this case, he allowed the media to stay, but he was actually considering kicking him out. What? Mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. And also, I think it's more evidence that Silverman and the judge have a long history of, you know, Silverman being in front of him. I've heard rumors that they are very close. And yeah, you never use the children's names when you're reporting on these things. That's right, chat. You you know, we, we redact those and that's how you report divorce cases. You just leave the children out of it. It's not that hard. All right, Kate, Charlie Lynn and Rogue Mama. Uh, let's see, we have Kate became a new member. Charlie Lynn gifted five memberships. Wow, Charlie, that's so generous. Thank you so much. Rogue Mama gifted a Fox membership. I appreciate you. Oh, hey, Rogue Mama, would you spam the chat so I can, wait, hold on. I need to add you as a mod. Oh, I must have closed down the studio. No, I didn't. There you are. Rogue Mama. Uh, I'll tell you when. Hold on. Oh, my God. The chat is flying. I, I'm not used to this. I'm waiting for it to catch up. There you are. Okay. I'm going to add you as a moderator. All right. There. Okay. Let's get to some of these super chats in about 12 minutes. The, uh, Jeremy and George will be joining us from What the Hales, and also Larry Foreman at DUI Guy will be joining us as well. All right, let's get this one gone, this one gone. Okay. Thanks for the super, super sticker, Debbie Griffith. I appreciate you. Um, Rudolph Stewart Hammerstrom, thanks for the super chat. Appreciate that super sticker. I'm not sure which is which. Helen Gall, thanks for this super chat. Hi from New Zealand. Love your channel. I love it when you guys come from all over the world. It's fantastic. Um, phrasing? Uh, me and my phrasing. All right, Caroline. Thanks for the super chat. Says This reminds me of the movies God's Not Dead, We the People. I'm not sure if I ever saw that or not. I don't think I did. Rogue Mama says, welcome to the Fox Den Squad. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a weird noise, but that's what they sound like. Uh, Tom Stewart, thanks for becoming a member. Welcome to the Fox Den. Ellen Brunetto, you too. I'll save your ears from another uh, another squeal. Teresa Finn, thanks for the super chat. Says you're my new hero, Megan. Hashtag Megan rocks. Well, I appreciate that, but I do look forward to disappointing you soon in the future. Uh, surely I will. No one can live up to expectations that are that high. Uh, Rose, and we're we're only medium smart here. I'm medium, medium smart. That's all we aim for. We aim for medium smartness and being just good enough. And that's good enough. You know, it really is. Rose Chapman, welcome to the Fox Den. Thanks for becoming a member. Juliet Morgan, thanks for the super chat. She will only take the videos and twist them. Well, and if she does, that's why the defense needs to know which videos they are so that they can, you know, mount a reasonable defense of them. Jamie Bartholomew, thanks for the super chat. At least she finally shut the hell up. I'm not sure which one you're talking about. David Rickards, thanks for the super chat, says, do you think the judge will recuse himself on Friday? And if so, what excuse to try to save face will he use? With his track record, I doubt he will recuse himself. I'm betting, I'm leaning towards no. If 
by some miracle he did, I think he would just say um, probably something about just because of the appearance of alleged appearance of impropriety. I don't know. I, I, I think he probably won't though. Dude has a big ego. Tina Pullman. Thanks for the super chat says Silverman is on supposed is on supposedly on a limited basis. And David Rickards, thanks for the uh, super chat, says, bring on board Mr. James Freeman, number one First Amendment auditor. I haven't heard of him, but I could look him up. Sarah Adams says, calm down, hashtag fat neck. Thank you. <laughs> Janet Shar, great article about the Hales case, hashtag buckle up. Man, could you believe that phone call that Larry got? What a nightmare. Debbie Childers, did you want the files I referred to today? Yep, you can send whatever you want. Go ahead. All right, let's see. Um, do we have time? I've got 10 minutes. Before they get here, let's look at uh, Doreen Inklis's um, She filed in the motion for recusal. Larry and I didn't get to it because it was a you know long document. But at the end, there were exhibits and... Um, a statement from Doreen, who was the attorney that wrote this. Now, if you remember, the judge went on and on about this memorandum. He, we're going to watch that in the hearing. He complains like you can't even believe about the some memorandum that Jeremy's attorneys filed with him. And he insulted the memorandum. And he tried to say that it was wrong and it wasn't legally correct. And, and he insulted it. Like, it was insane. So this is Doreen's response, Doreen Inclus's response to the judge about that memorandum. The memorandum of law referenced in paragraph 7F was an 11 page document of which the first eight pages were devoted to detailing petitioner's conduct at her deposition. The last three pages predominantly addressed the conduct of attorney, attorney Joshua Silverman in interfering with Mr. Shockett's discovery efforts before appearing in the case and disrupting the progression of the case, which had been reset for trial on January 26. After two requests for continuances by Mr. Shockett had already been granted, Mr. Shockett's first request for continuance was to allow him to conduct discovery and prepare for trial. The second request for continuance was due to Ms. Preston's and Mr. Cook's failure to appear at their deposition set in December when trial was scheduled for January 4. So the court... Judge DeThomas is trying to put all the blame on the respondent and his attorneys for saying that you're the ones who dragged this out because you asked me for all these continuances and I gave them to you. However, when, when you look at the, the facts, the reason they had to ask for the continuances was because the, the plaintiff didn't show for the deposition. You can't go forward to trial without your depositions and you can't go forward to trial without the discovery, which they also did not produce. So in essence, it is the plaintiff who is dragging things out and the judge is allowing it to happen because he's not ordering them to compel, uh, not ordering them to compel discovery, not ordering them or sanctioning them for not showing up at a deposition. You know, it's illegal to not show up at a properly noticed deposition. It's, it's not legal. You have to show up. So I, I don't know why the judge is, is allowing it, but you know, I guess that's one more question to ask. Um, says here, although there happened to be a bomb scare at the courthouse on January 4th, that was not the reason the case was continued to January 26th. That continuance was due to Preston's discovery misconduct. So they got no discovery. How can they go to trial without the discovery that they need? How is that? How do you go to trial? Mr. Silverman did file a limited notice of appearance on Preston's behalf on January 18th, as well as a motion for continuance. Mr. Shock had explained to the court that Ms. Preston's and Mr. Cook's failure to appear yet again for depositions on January 17th automatically necessitated the continuance requested by Mr. Silverman, who caused them not to appear as indicated by him in an email to Mr. Shockett on the evening of January 16th. Neither Judge DeThomas' February 14th order nor his comments at the January 23rd hearing mentioned anything about the discovery issues raised in the memorandum. His order and his comments created the appearance that we were requesting sanctions solely because Mr. Silverman had asked to continue the trial due to a conflict. Do you see, this is very sneaky. 
it's very sneaky that the plaintiff's attorneys are complaining about all these continuances when they themselves did not show up for a scheduled deposition and did not give discovery. You can't go to trial without those things. You just cannot. No one will be prepared. And now the judge is all pissed off because there are continuances. Well, he needs to be pissed off at the plaintiff because they're the ones who are causing the continuances. I believe Judge DeThomasus mischaracterized the content of the memorandum of law by omitting material facts related to the discovery misconduct that was the gravamen of our complaint. But that's, that's intense. Uh, Judge DeThomas has mischaracterized the content of the of the memorandum of law by um, omitting material facts. That's a uh, that's bad, and in doing so, unfairly portrayed Mr. Shockett and me as unethical and unprofessional. I believe Judge DeThomas has comments about the memorandum made at the January 23rd hearing, which we're going to watch right after this, were unduly and unfairly harsh, insulting, and intended to degrade and humiliate an attorney who was merely doing her job. In my opinion, and I agree because when I watched, I've watched it already, and I, I, when he starts screaming about the memorandum, it's like, oh my God, the poor woman who wrote this, the poor lawyer who wrote this, this is a ter terrible of him to do this. It's just like, it's reputation damaging, you know? 5,000 of you here, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to this channel. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. You know what's amazing is Jeremy's audience has a lot of love to give. You guys have been, you're really impressive to me. His audience is so loyal and, and friendly. And uh, it's interesting that so many of you are so interested in his legal, what's the word I'm looking for? Challenges. <laughs> so thanks for being here. I appreciate you. Um, I believe, oh, let's see. In my opinion, the fact that Judge DeThomas took it upon himself to write a five-page single-spaced order denying Hales a second motion for disqualification when Rule 2.3 blah, blah, of the Florida, yeah, blah, provides that a judge is not take is not to take issue, it self-evidences, if it self-evidences extreme bias against the attorneys who are subjects of that order. Having reviewed the video recording from January 23rd, it is my opinion that Judge DeThomas has behaved like an advocate in his treatment of attorney Shockett and that the judge's conduct toward Mr. Shockett at the hearing was oppressive and abusive. Wow. This is, by the way, if, if he does not recuse himself after this, this will be going to the appellate court and this memorandum here, this, her statement of fact is going to go there too. So the appellate judges are going to read this attorney saying that this man tried to on purpose humiliate us as attorneys. Um, and he did that by leaving out material facts. Wow. I believe that Judge DeThomas has exhibited extreme bias against me as a member of Shockett Law Group in the course of this proceeding, and his bias is supported by the record. Additionally, on February 20th, Judge DeThomas' judicial assistant sent an email to counsel to schedule various motions in this case. Once the date and time of February 28th at 1.30 p.m. was selected, the judicial assistant sent an email at 2.26 p.m. stating, including Mr. Feather. It was then communicated to the judicial assistant at 2.44 p.m. that Mr. Feather had to represent a client at 3 p.m. that day on a DUI matter. At 4.45 p.m., a scheduling order issued which confirmed that the hearing would occur on February 28th at 1.30 p.m. at which and which contained the following language at the bottom. So they scheduled it on purpose at the time when Feather wouldn't be able to make it. All parties and their attorneys must appear unless specifically excused by the court. Judge DeThomasis has not pr previously required the presence of all attorneys at a court hearing. In light of his February 14th order, as well as his remarks in the January 23rd hearing, I am very concerned and troubled that I am required to appear before this judge. In light of this record, I am very concerned that this hearing will be utilized as an opportunity for the judge to continue to, to berate, scold, and humiliate Mr. Shockett, Mr. Feather, and myself. I believe that through this case, Judge DeThomas has developed an extreme dislike and bias against the attorneys in this case, including myself. And based on this record, I do not believe he will provide fair treatment to other clients I may represent in his division. Under penalty of perjury, I declare the foregoing facts and sworn statement are true. Uh, signed Doreen Inklas. All right. 
right before uh, our my guests come to this program, I want to show you, those of you who may have missed, um, if you missed Larry and I, the UI guy and I, on Sunday night, reading the motion to recuse, if you missed it, there was a part in it that um, you have to see, and I'm going to play it for you right now. It would be Larry's impression of the grudge judge. <laughs> Larry's impression of the grudge judge. Uh, hold on, let me bring it up. Stop screen. Hold, please. Where's my hold music? Hold, please, while I pull things up on the computers via the internet. Here we go. Oh my God, look at my face. <laughs> this is so funny, you guys. All right, again, Larry Foreman's impression of the grudge judge. Do you agree that the depo that was taken by video as opposed to just audio was proper <laughs> or improper? Do you agree that it has been broadcast to your client's YouTube channel? You have to answer that. Did you tell me? Did you tell me? Have you done anything? And has it been successful? Would you agree they've been unsuccessful until today? But that being said, in the context of this rule of safeguarding in the attorney's responsibility, but now you know it is being hosted on the YouTube. You agree that the depot? <laughs> I am telling you, but if this YouTube thing doesn't work out for Larry, uh, he could absolutely have a huge career in community theater. <laughs> Maybe even Broadway. Speaking of Larry, how you doing? Can you hear me okay? Oh, oops. sorry. I had your stream playing in the background and I was like, am I listening to two Megans? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I was uh, just playing. From now on, Larry, when you when I have you on my program, I'm going to introduce you with this clip. <laughs> <laughs> did you just do that? I, I saw you were playing that. Yeah, I did. And it, specifically, this part right here is my favorite. Now, you know, it is being posted on the YouTube. <laughs> I am telling you, you, oh. you are supremely talented, my man. Uh, you could be huge on the stage. I'm telling you, Larry, with those facial expressions and that voice work that you can do, I am, it was like a rageful Mr. Ed. I mean, I, it's just the greatest thing I ever heard. I'll take it. Thank you so much. Curtsy. <laughs> Oh God, how are you today? Good. I literally just got in uh, like 20 minutes ago. So I'm, I was going to set it originally for three. And I'm like, you know, just to be on the safe side, I'll set it for four because uh, the judge on the bench today wanted to take a break for like 45 minutes. And I was like, oh my God, this was perfect. This was perfect. But I scarfed down a snack. I Literally, I ate breakfast at like 3.45 p.m. So I had no time for anything today because I, I was in Breckenridge County in the morning, which is an hour, 45 minutes west. And it's an hour east of that down to E-Town, Elizabethtown and Hardin County. Then I have to go up north to go home. So I literally I've been on the road since 8 a.m. And I just got in. So six oh hours, gosh, well, eight hours of driving. Thank you for being here through all that. I had a pretty awful busy day as well. I had to get my podcast up. Fox Den Daily. Make sure you follow it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon. And it was a short version today because I was, you know, running around trying to get this, get ready. I'm not used to streaming it in the afternoon. I usually stream from 11 to two mm -hmm. um, in the morning. And then I do my, uh, I record after that at two for the podcast, then get that up. And then I'm done by the time my kids get home from school. So mm -hmm. everything was backwards today. <laughs> it was like, mm -hmm. oh shit, I don't know if I can do this. So I was literally running and hitting publish on that podcast right before we went, I went live here. Um, this has you. been unbelievable, Larry, right? Like, can you believe the interest in this case? Um, yes. Uh, it, 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 no, but yes, at the same time. I see what you're, what you're trying to put down, and I'm picking it up. It's basically like, 
it's just a case in, of stalking in BFE, you know, Levy County, Florida, but not anymore. Not since Judge De Thomas has decided to make this about the voice of 8 billion people. Yeah, it's, it's interesting um, that this has just become huge. And I think the world is watching. And I think Judge De Thomas uh, needs to just do the right thing and and just get off the case and let another judge take it over because this he doesn't want what's coming after this, which is just going to be nationwide humiliation. You know, like can we just just get off the case, Judge. Just take a vacation or something. Go go on a vacation. Where do people in Florida vacation? Since we all vacation in Florida, where do they go? Probably Maine. Uh, I don't know. Maine? <laughs> Maine? Come to New York for a vacation. Come just get, get out of Florida. Go go on a vacation somewhere. I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get this party started. I'm so excited today to welcome to this program for the very first time, Jeremy, Jeremy and George. George. Hails low. Hey, oh, Hello, we made guys. it. How's it going? We were uh -oh. having a, a wee bit of difficulty with... Um, yeah, internet in the middle of <laughs> nowhere <laughs> um, typically is an issue. So we finally, you know, we're good now. We're I think good. we have an we have echo, echo problem. problem. Can you? I will take care of it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we had the yeah, same, had issue, same issue, issue when, uh, when uh, I had them on. He fixed it yes. very quickly. And it okay. is fixed. I think it's gone. How about awesome. That? It's a stream yard with you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for being here, Jeremy and George. You know, the first question that I really had for you guys before we get started to watch this hearing is, when was the moment, Jeremy, when you were in court in front of Judge DeThomasis that you actually, oh my God, look at that mug, Larry. Stop it. The tears of opposing counsel. Mm, so <laughs> do, you delicious. Take that, do you take that into court with you? That's a I'm about to start. I'm about to start for sure. You really need to. That's funny. Um, Jeremy, when was the first time when you were in front of Judge DeThomasis where you started to fear that this judge was not going to give you a fair hearing? Well, I went into the actual court hearing and uh, we were together. I went into the court hearing and my lawyer, Attorney Feather, who uh, often, even though he, he he's not in the court hearings after the first court hearing, but uh, my Attorney Feather says, listen, this is going to be very simple. We're going to show him the law and this will be a done deal. And he doesn't even know you have civil protection orders against her, Lynette and John Crook. And so um, us going in and having civil protection orders, knowing Florida law has to accept those civil protection orders by good faith and measure, and yet completely and totally disregards it, and then starts a verbal attack on attorney Feather. And I'm sitting there in that first hearing just going, what the hails Whoa. just happened? Whoa. Was who was the judge that you first went to in Florida asking for the protective order when you first tried in Florida? So what we did on May 13th, 2023, we sent a cease and desist through our attorney uh, who represented us then, Stan Griffith, who was a former judge who actually judged the <laughs> Thomas's Took now the sits in that seat. Uh, this All story right. is so multi-layered and so crazy. It really so, is. Stan but you, you, yeah, you filed, though, too, for a protective order in Florida, but were denied that one. So we did. and But before we did that, and I know there's so many layers here. Before we did that, we sent a cease and desist. As we sent a cease and desist, we also asked former judge, but then our representing attorney, Stan Griffith, we said, we'd like to get an injunction on these two. We've got so many things happening look at it all. And he goes, Jeremy, this is Florida. He goes, there has to be two committed crimes that they have to have pressed against them. And then on the third crime, then you can actually get an injunction. I was like, oh, so they can kill me the third time. And then I get it. And he went, it's Florida. Wow. And so he actually told us, he's like, you cannot get an injunction. And so we, we did not pursue after that. When we got back to Florida, so we snowbird. When did we get back? October? This season? Yeah, this season. We had to wait on the Ohio judge to make a decision, but we, we arrived on 
October 30th, October 31st. Somewhere around that. We had our Ohio civil protection orders in our hand. The very first place we stopped was Levy County Sheriff Station with them to make sure they had their copies as well. And we were stalked by Lynette mm -hmm. and Crook to the Levy County Sheriff. They literally stalked us there. Videos all up on the channel. They knew we were going to be there because we had announced it the night before during our live stream. So. Oh. We are going to... And then to answer your original question, Megan, yeah. and then later our legal counsel here in Florida said, hey, file for another injunction. We did. He denied them. We, we both judge, found four. We judge, took, judge to Thomas's. With four case numbers issued by the Levy County Sheriff's Office for them violating our civil protection orders. And which by good faith and credit, Judge to Thomas's said no. He sealed them. He would not let anybody see them and and we're back in the same florida circus yet again but but here's the thing i don't get so you filed for a protective order in front of judge to thomasis and he denies that but lynette goes and files for one and she gets it what, what is the difference between the two we're trying to figure that out as well please How she because he kept serious. saying we're gonna watch know. him we're going to watch him actually say, I have to take her allegations as true. I have to. I have to take it as true. Well, why weren't yours taken as true? And so, why isn't he taking this true? Sorry to interrupt. The motion to disqualify him, which he also has to take the facts as alleged as true. So right. he's literally, he's, again, I think if we were to summarize his MO, his modus operandi, the way that he operates in his courtroom, is he takes all the things he likes and he uses them. And then all the things he doesn't like, he just ignores like they don't exist. So you allude yeah. to that clip that we're going to watch. He emphasizes. So just so Mr. Hales knows, I believe that's what he said. It might, it might have been a little bit different. But he directly speaks to me at one point and states, this court must take this as truth. That's the law. And so he actually throws all the truth that we've presented mm. with every screenshot, with video. You know, we can't video clip with a petition to get an injunction in Florida. But we say, hey, we will show you all the video evidence. We will show you all the audio evidence. We will show you. And we put screenshots in there and he denies it, even though by Florida law, good faith and credit, they must. He should have said, yes, you have a civil protection order in Ohio. Therefore, you automatically get one in Florida as well by good faith and credit under the law. And he says, nope. And the crazy part is, if you follow the Levy County docket, it appeared where Jeremy was the petitioner. She was the respondent. I was the petitioner. She and John Cook were respondents. And then when he denied it, that's when it got sealed and it disappeared. It disappeared and it no longer existed on the Levy County docket. I've seen things like this happen before, and it's we we were able to get screenshots of that. Oh, you we did! You got that. screen. I was just gonna say, people have been around a lot. Of, some of these corrupt court systems have learned how to take screenshots and pictures of everything. All right, so I'm gonna bring up on the screen the uh, court hearing of January 23rd. We're gonna watch it together. Yeah, that was um, a good one. That was a good one. Yeah, it really is. Not this is me, the, that was hearing number four. Hearing number no, that was. 20, you said January 23rd, correct? Yeah, January yeah, 23rd. Oh, okay, so that was the fourth. That was the last one. Our fifth hearing is tomorrow at 1 o'clock. All right. One, two, well, three, four. <laughs> that should be pretty interesting. Can't wait to see the, Can't wait to see that one because most likely you're going to have Judge DeThomas screaming at you about all the media attention that your story is now getting. Uh, so that should be oh, he. No he does I, not I figure like he's going to slap an injunction on you, Megan. <laughs> well, I'd like to see him try. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, Hi, good morning. I'm Judge Thomas. It is 10.02 a.m. January 23. This is the case style. This Preston and Hales. Case is 38-2023-ER416. We're here on several motions from both sides um status conference last week or oh this was 11 was motions the hearing that, 11 motions uh, the limited notice of appearance filed on behalf of the petitioner was to address matters related to uh 
changing the date currently scheduled for January 26 to reconvene and resolve this matter. And respondent or on respondent's behalf, council uh, advised in part, I believe that they were seeking a continuance or potentially for different reasons. Holy okay, I'm going to interrupt him for a second to say that I have watched a whole lot of court hearings and he is already going on and on about stuff that he shouldn't be. He's supposed to. This is what judges normally do. They go, you know, we're here on the matter of and they read the number and we have the petitioner and the respondent here. Please state your names for the record. All right. Who's to, who's going first? And that's it. Like, oh, that's really? literally what they do. He goes on for like 12 minutes. And he's going to talk about Mark Feather again. Again, reciting about Mark Feather. He's Here already complaining. Him. He's already complaining about respondent and what respondent filed. Now, like, uh, as you're watching this, let me give you a little backstory here, okay? Lynette has been a pro se litigant who he has he has truly acted as her ju her judge and lawyer constantly yeah. guiding her giving her legal advice okay and so now we have plenty of haters just like anybody else out on youtube world and so a hater gifts her seven thousand dollars now she's on she's on uh disability which i guarantee you now that affects her disability but she's not going to claim it we know that because she doesn't do anything legal in the first place and she hires silverman who was a uh, defense attorney with Craig the Thomasist, the judge in Gainesville? These two were buddy buddy. And Silverman asked Craig the Thomasist in Levy County to preside over his divorce when he didn't even live in Levy County. He lived in Gainesville, Alachua County. I mean, there's some shady things going on here. This is, the, he's unreal. This guy just continues to complain. Well, let's let him go. Can you turn the volume up just a little bit, Megan? It doesn't, you can't. Is that maxed it's, out? So people wear headphones. If you're having trouble hearing, if it's like on your TV, you're going to hear it better using headphones. Just giving you a heads up. Yeah. And court audio is notoriously bad and there's yes. literally nothing I can do about it. So here's what we'll do. All of us on the panel will mute ourselves while the court audio is going, and then we'll unmute when we're talking because that will help with some of the background noise, okay? So we'll all go on mute. Um, and other matters related to that. Um, and the court directed that the parties by 5 p.m. on Friday, January 19th, file their respective motions. This matter is noticed for hearing January 18. One hour is set aside. I've got some preliminary comments that will lead into the time. I'm still going to allow and provide both counsel with each party 30 minutes apiece to present their arguments. But I want to comment on a few matters. The um... Here he goes. Petitioner's motion to continue evidentiary hearing, which is scheduled to be resolved and adjudicated today, was filed January 19th at 8.12 p.m. The respondent filed on 1.19 at 5.22 p.m. What styled as motion for sanctions, including voluntary dismissal, attorney's fees and costs and related relief. The... <coughs> matters filed subsequent to that he loves saying the exact time that things get filed 8 12 p.m at 6 32 today really yesterday specifically filed on january 22 monday at 6 59 6 59 today the cover communication to my judicial assistant states attached as the case law portion to go with the motion for sanctions filed on Friday. Um, the fact is what's attached to it does not contain even one case, one copy of a case at all. So it's not a case law portion. It's styled as a memorandum of law um, with no cases attached. This is the part that I was telling you about earlier when I was reading Doreen's statement to the 
judge about why he should recuse because he's going to go on now for 12 minutes insulting the uh, Jeremy's attorneys for the memorandum that they filed, just insulting them. It's, it's, it's incredible. To it, but certainly some cited within it, but it is primarily an argument. Um, and um, it's considered as such. Um, and so we've got, it will come up later, we'll certainly address non-compliance with the directive regarding timing the filing documents, late filing effectively this morning or seven o'clock last night, filing additional argument. Council's got 30 minutes to present their case on both sides. The matter is this, um, January 26th is scheduled. Um, counsel for the petitioner filed what's styled as a notice of limited appearance on January 17 for the purpose of addressing a motion to continue the January 26th hearing. Um, and it's clear to the court and it should be clear to the petitioner that if the court doesn't grant that relief, she may be without this counsel to, to represent her. And so prospective counsel in a way, but who files a limited notice of appearance to address this issue, um, we're going to address here today. That we're going to address um, it here today, but we actually, we already know. Here's a little sneak peek. We don't never get there. Part or part of the characterization in this argument, which in one part was called case law. Side note, case law, she's dodged depositions three, three times up to this point. And I am surprised that the judge never, um, you know, sanctioned her for that after the second time, maybe. Wouldn't that, because it's it's against the law to not show up for a properly filed deposition, right, Larry? You you can't. That's what I would say. Yeah. Do that. Well, second time is her mom died. Now this is the crazy part. Second time she goes in there. My mom died. Now during the actual, then then it was mandated. She must must show up for her deposition. She only did half the deposition, and then Silverman comes in without even representing her. He wasn't even re legally representing her yet and said, this deposition is over. And so she goes in and says her mom died. Now, you have to understand this. In the first hearing, he tries to reschedule, and Mark Feather says to me, Jeremy, can you come back tomorrow? And I said, no, I have, I have a flight. I'm going to Ohio. And I was flying to Ohio. I had to go get the certified letters for civil protection orders from the sheriff. And then I also had to get notarized copies for contempt of court for Ohio because they have broken the civil protection orders so many times. And so I told him, no, I got a flight tomorrow. I got to go take care of things in, in with Ohio court. And he turns around and he says, no, no, my, my, my um, client has to go to Ohio and take care of things. You know, these issues in, with the Ohio courts. He has a flight in the morning. So come, come, come to find out later. He, he's, he's, he hasn't held me in contempt of court. He said, I did not comply. I gave him my flight tickets proving I gave him copies of the notarized court paperwork which court did happen and and when she says my mom died the early in the earlier uh hearing he says well can you provide a a, a receipt where you filled up with gas to go see her that's what he required of her a receipt for filling up a tank of gas i give him tickets of flight i give him all the notarized court documents and he says mm -hmm. i'm out of compliance with the court just so we all understand. <laughs> it's insanity. I think I boosted the volume some. Chat will have to let me know if this is a little better. Including extreme argument, quite frankly, that describes extreme the of the limited extreme argument, including extreme. Larry, how would you feel if a judge told you in front of you know, opposing counsel and everything was going over a motion you filed. Mm -hmm. And he said, including this motion here, including extreme argument, frankly. Well, how would that feel to you as an attorney? It, it, the opposite of what I felt this morning <laughs> in court, because there was one judge who literally was like, yeah, you know, this, this is a very, very well written motion to one of the litigants, not my case. And I think she was a public defender. God bless her for everything she does. And the judge was like, this is really long. Can you like 
write me a three pager so that I can like quickly read it. And part of me went, wait a second, you are asking, you know, for lawyers to condense their arguments. But then I was like, wait a minute, maybe the judge actually has a very interesting point. He's just trying to condense, you know, give me the meat. Don't give me the potatoes and the fat. If you can trim the fat, if possible, trim the fat, take away the potatoes, give me the meat. I'll review it and I'll rule on it. And I'm like, you know, actually, he earned my respect very quickly. But I mean, calling your your argument extreme. Yeah, no, mm -mm. nope. Oh, my God. Pure, pure bias. Not acceptable. Bias. Exactly. Just not, bias. Acceptable. you know, and I used to be of the position, Megan, just like you, like, judge, just remove yourself from this case and everything will be peachy and oakily dokily. Not anymore. Now he needs to be removed from the bench. Like that's there's that's it. That's there is no more recusal is the the first half of this battle. The second half of the battle is to remove this man so he does not tarnish other people's uh, futures and takes away their freedoms unconstitutionally. Sorry, but I may be alone in this. Chat, you have a choice. The choice is very low court audio and normal us, or higher court audio and loud us. That those are the only choices. If I boost the volume on the court feed. We get boosted too, and there's nothing we can do about it. I've already turned my settings down as much as they can go. So if we're too loud, I'm sorry, but otherwise we, you can't hear the court. So I will turn off the volume booster when we get done with this court hearing. Notice of appearance and the late appearance of an attorney potentially on behalf of the petitioner, but accurately today here on her behalf to argue a motion to continue. The length of continuance will be addressed if it's to be continued. Um, but we're, we, we've got language in this, quote, memorandum of law, unquote, which is not really a memorandum of law that states. In what? How are you to this? Calling counsel for the. This memorandum of law that is not really a memorandum of law. This petition that is not really a memorandum of law. It is literally entitled memorandum of law. It's not really. He's trying to humiliate these attorneys. I agree with Doreen exactly. I agree with every word she said in, in her statement. He is literally trying to humiliate and make them feel small. He is he's berating them, her in particular, for writing this thing that he is claiming is not really a memorandum of law. Did you read it, Larry? Did you read the memorandum? I don't know. Maybe. Which one is it? So uh, many. Yeah, I know. Question. That's a good question. I don't think I read it either yet. Um, can you? What, can, so can you forward me the, the source that shared all the docs with you? Can you forward them to me while we're watching this? Yes. Thank and, you. And allow me to share this with everybody viewing. So we do have a legal team on this. Even though you've only seen Mark Feather in hearing number one, you've seen Randy Shockett in hearing number two, number three, and number four. But Doreen is the individual who is drafting this document and some other documents that Larry's already gone over, the third motion to disqualify, which is frankly, it is a work of art. This woman it really is, is a legal genius. All right. Doreen Inkles, you have not seen her on camera and yet. She is priceless and a legal genius. She is very passionate about what she does and what she believes in. I don't know why I just got kicked out of the studio. My computer sometimes does weird stuff. If I disappear, I'll be back. Larry can handle it. Yep. Um, uh, Larry, you can check your text messages. I sent that to you on your text. Um, so where was I? I'm going to get this back up here. Uh it on edge yeah here we go all right <sighs> Lord. petitioner who's really just trying to address the issue of calendaring that it's a ridiculous excuse for an attorney who's coming into a case that's already scheduled for trial what okay no i'm sorry pause uh, it's ridiculous for attorneys to be coming in so late when a case is already set for trial so you know what you do, Judge? You continue the case. You give them a new date so that new lawyers can prepare for this case. Because guess what? That's what happens. Look at what's her name who went through like nine attorneys already down south. Sarah Boone, right? Sarah Boone right. has been. Well, 
have we heard the judge go, you know what? We're tired of getting continuances. You're not getting any more continuances. Enough attorney. I mean, eight attorneys she's gone through. This number nine will eventually enter their appearance. He's getting upset over number two entering his appearance or her. Well, actually, like, he's getting upset over number one because Doreen is arguing that having attorney Silverman come into the actual courtroom and then state that he can't be there for the final hearing. He has to accept the hearing as it is. Okay. So yeah, when yeah. Randy, when Randy came in on the case and I had to hire him, I had to hire him within 24 hours because Lynette lied and stated that Mark Feather offered her money or bribed her to make this whole hearing go away, which now makes him a witness and not my lawyer. He had 24 hours to get up to speed for the hearing, the final hearing the next day, which I got a continuance granted, not based on anything I did, based on what Lynette said, lied about my first attorney. But Silverman, and this is what Doreen is saying, Silverman is coming into this knowing the way that it is, and he's had two weeks to prep beforehand, all right? He had a week before this, and he had a week after this to prep for the final hearing and he knew he couldn't be there for the final hearing and doreen is saying this is unacceptable he has had more than enough time he's had more and than enough time see, yeah you're gonna see she says it's unacceptable he's already acting as her attorney and john crook's attorney who he does not represent because he already put a kibosh on the depositions for both of them up to this point and and she's saying this is not okay yeah, uh, what's his name? Sh uh, Shock. Wait, what's his name? Shock it. Shock it had less time to prepare than, um, and he wasn't complaining. Shock it had less time to compare uh, to prepare, and then uh, Silverman did, and Silverman's complaining about you know having to get caught up, which which is it is ridiculous. Like that is ridiculous. So the judge is again going over the motion and just berating Doreen for all of these things that she wrote. It it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Silverman is no exception to the principle that an attorney takes the case as he, as he finds it. He should have declined representation if he couldn't fulfill his responsibility of being here on January 26th. He has no good cause. He's acting with contumacious disregard of the court authority, bad faith, willful disregard, gross indifference to an order of the court conduct that evinces deliberate callousness, intentional abject interference with the orderly progression of the case. He's reading, he's reading from her motion, right? That he says okay, is not a memorandum. Right. Okay, okay. <laughs> he's, cool. No, I was, like, I was about Larry, to have a heart attack. Larry, no, Larry co calm <laughs> down. He's reading from breathe, Dorian's breathe. motion who is saying that Silverman has acted in this way. And okay, the judge okay. is pointing out, these are the parts of her memorandum he hates. So he's reading it out loud to say you did something wrong by putting this in this memorandum. But I mean, Larry, if another attorney, if your opposing counsel is acting in a way that you think is in bad faith, are you allowed to say so in your memorandum to the judge? Um, I mean, you're throwing your own lawyer under the bus. You can do whatever the hell you want. It's just good. No, no, no. Opposing attorney. Oh, She's talking about opposing. Doreen sure. is talking about Silverman. She's talking about Silverman, you know, dragging his feet What's so the that problem? they can so that they can never get to sure. an answer. If, as long as you believe it, and if it's if it's uh, you know if you're being can candorous, is that a word? It is now. If so. you're being candorous towards the court and you're telling the truth, and this is how it happened, and it is helping your client, throw the other party under the bus. We do it all the time. Yeah, well, he's gonna he's complaining about this. He's saying this he's not is supposed this to is, because this it's is his buddy. Okay. Because it's his buddy. Right. He's defending him. MG Law's in the fact. chat. MG Law's in the chat. Folks, go over there and subscribe to MG Law, too. He's What's a up, decent, MG? He's a decent dude. He says, if the attorney is acting in bad faith, and I will certainly put it in my brief. Yeah, I've seen it a million there times. Right there. Yeah, I've seen it a million times. There's nothing unusual about an attorney complaining about opposing counsel in a memorandum. And this guy is acting like Doreen's memorandum is some, you know, worst thing he's ever seen. So he's going to continue reading the parts that he hates, and then he's going to berate her for putting it in there. And, and you're also going to notice that Judge de Thomasis interrupts Randy Shockett, my representation. Oh, yeah. Every, every single time he time opens his mouth. And never, ever interrupts his buddy, Joshua Silverman. And he is only complaining about my representation and me. And he never has one negative thing to say about Lynette or Joshua Silverman. Just yeah, it's so we all understand. Ridiculous. Yeah. Watch, his, ridiculous. watch his reaction between between the different attorneys watch how he treats silverman versus how he treats shock it it's 
it's unbelievable. Further and further. And I point that out because I want it to be addressed by both counsel that the record actually shows that on November 29, when the respondent was represented by counsel Mark Feather, Mark Feather went off with an opportunity to reconvene the following morning at 9 a.m. And I'll get into that. Oh, yes, you will. Misrepresentations to the court, which I have to say, I have to say this part where he now is going to he's arguing against her memorandum. That is the job of Silverman. If Silverman feels that his reputation is being besmirched by a memorandum that, of law that was put into the court, it's his job to stand up and say, Judge, I object, and here's why, and here's why this is wrong, and defend his own honor. The judge is about to do it for him. He is becoming the plaintiff's co-counsel right mm -hmm. now. He is litigating from the bench, Larry. I just came up with that today. You know, we, we see the legislating from the bench. This dude is litigating from the bench. Very he's not, he's not supposed to be an attorney. He is about to argue this motion for the plaintiff. Watch this. It's incredible. Gained his client the first of many continuances, um, misrepresented why the continuance is necessary. The court relied on the misrepresentation, granted a continuance. And then when the court scheduled it for the following week, and Mr. Feather represented no objection to that date, um, and the court pause right there. Pause the right there. This will be a priority. Okay. It's going next week. Wait. Was no okay. He says Mr. Feather did not object. He literally just got done in hearing number one, yelling at Attorney Feather. Attorney Feather's back is towards Judge DeThomas's. He's talking to me about scheduling. And then Judge DeThomas's says, it will be this time, this date. And then he goes, adjourned. And Mark wow. Feather never heard a single thing. I've seen thing that. He was talking to me. Never even gave him an opportunity. Never gave him an opportunity to even speak. It was out of the cherry world. picking. Yep. Oh my God. It's awful. It's and he literally, MG Law agrees with me. This is the plaintiff's attorney's job to argue against whatever the defense put in. It is not the court's job to argue in front of uh, plaintiff's counsel. And if he, it, this is outrageous what he's doing. It's outrageous and it gets worse. No pushback. There was no judge, but I might have something. And then he files again he another know. filing. After there was no pushback because he was like, court's adjourned. Exactly. <laughs> That's what he did. That's what he did. Yeah, there's I saw the video on your channel, Jeremy. That was hilarious. Your your attorney turns around to talk to you about what dates and he goes, Courts adjourned. <laughs> exactly. That's what he did. And I mean, you can't then get up and be like, oh wait, wait, I have a I have a conflict, right? It's over. Oh my God. After hours, basically the Monday before the Wednesday hearing, a motion to continue that does nothing to point out that something came up between agreeing to the court date and the actual court date. But instead, in relevant part, as it relates to today, Mr. Shockett, who was co-counsel to Mr. Feather, files a notice of appearance 24 hours and 20 minutes prior to the commencement. And 20 minutes. He, there you go, Megan. He continues with that whole... He, he keeps doing that. It's He's very... He's very, he loves to say those exact time stamps. Because I am a judge and I'm very exact about everything that I do, including taking away, let's see, which amendments did I take away from you, Mr. Hales? I took number one, I took number two, I took number five. Is number six taken away yet? Well, I've taken away Hales' sixth six amendment right as well. I forgot about six. that one. 14th, probably, probably the 14th, the fourth, probably. I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot here. Oh my Keep God. Mind, the only reason why Randy Shockett and, and Doreen are representing me now is because Lynette filed a supplemental affidavit saying that Mark Feather tried to bribe her and now he's now a, he's witness. a witness. Yeah. Right. Why well, Gail? Gail did. wants to know why is he doing the time recital? It's my theory that people who do this, like, look at how he's looking at the docket right now. He's he's looking at that. He's on the computer. He's showing everybody, I'm the boss and I have access to everything and I can see. Here's the evidence. He's acting like a litigator right now. He's a prosecutor right now. That's what he's doing. He's being a prosecutor. 
in his own courtroom. He is a also civil the, case. He's prosecuting the 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 defense, and he's like, "Look at eight fifteen, and on January second, you did this." I've never seen anything like this. I've well, never seen a judge do this. Keep in mind, he was a defense attorney in Gainesville, who then, when Stan Griffiths actually stepped down overnight, no explanation, all of a sudden, Levy County is in a world of hurt with no judge, and DeSantis actually appoints Craig. Mm -hmm. So then COVID happens. This is not a seasoned veteran's judge. This is a judge that is cutting his teeth right now and, frankly, knocking my teeth out with his biases. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So eloquent, Jeremy. I, I I love listening to you speak. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just incredible what's going on here. I, I've literally never seen a judge do this. I've seen a lot of bad judges. But this really, you know, Larry, your video that's the worst judge in Florida. Huh. I think that's becoming more and more accurate the closer I get to this case. You know, I'm just catching up on this and it's like, holy crap, I've never seen a judge act like this before. You should read and, the, the reviews on, what is it called, that website? I did. The, I saw robing? that. The, the yeah. Robing Room. The, the robing, robing Room, room. which is a great site, by the way. If you ever yeah. have a bad experience with a judge, you should head right over to the Robing Room and make sure that you give them a review. It's a great place to actually have the public say what they think about judges. This guy has a terrible rating. He has a terrible history. They call him a misogynist, that he hates women. and that he's, <laughs> He treats people pretty bad. Mansplaining. In court. Mansplaining. <laughs> we call this what he's doing right now is judge splaining. He's judge splaining to the uh, the defense about how bad their their memorandum is in his opinion. Oh, we conclude these proceedings on December six, and so for counsel, this is concerning to the court. For counsel to describe the actions of an attorney who steps in with a limited notice, trying to address the limited issue of the calendaring of the event that's now scheduled for 26. This is concerning to the court, he says. This is concerning to the court. She's already told the court, I can't be here, but can you allow me to be heard as to that matter? We have an attorney calling that bad faith, willful disregard, indifference, unprofessional, intentional, abject interference. And nonetheless, um, we're dealing with current counsel, current co-counsel of the respondent who 24 hours and 20 minutes took on a case that he knew he could not be prepared for. And he filed another motion to continue, which would have been about the third motion to continue, if not the second, depending on how you look at it, on behalf of the respondent. And so well, we already heard from Doreen in her statement that that was because the plaintiff did not show up for a deposition. So when he tries to make it sound like the it is the respondent who is dragging this case, that is a it's a smoke and mirrors move. Yeah, they did file for a continuance because the plaintiffs didn't show up for deposition. Right, Jeremy? Absolutely. They dodged it and said they were out of town because her mother her mom was died. dying. And then in her deposition, Randy goes, uh, can can you share with us any, you know, what, what did he say? He's he like, said, ma'am, what evidence do you, you have, have that your mother died? died? She goes, my mother didn't die. <laughs> oh, no. Come on. Oh, my goodness. If you haven't seen the deposition video that I Wait, is she that, dead? Is she dead or not? Well, we call her Rasputin. You know Rasputin. Mama uh -huh. never die. I mean, they all tried to kill him, but uh, he, she's Mama Sputin. She's Schrodinger's she cat. Dying. She's both alive and dead until you open the box. Is she Schrodinger's mama? Is she actually a, is she alive or not alive? I'm confused. Is she, she is alive? alive. She's she, well and alive. She's, and she's alive. She's even posted oh it publicly online. It was a miracle. It was a miracle. The day after the deposition was scheduled, Mama Sputin is alive. The crisis, Hallelujah. Is, alive. The crisis is over is how she works. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Miracle. That's unbelievable. So the depo is a must watch. Yes, absolutely. Uh, thanks for the super chat, David Rickards. Uh, can Jeremy please give us... The listeners. <laughs> I've been hearing about the err, uh, and uh, yeah, I had to hear it for myself. Uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. Oh my that's god, the, that's Jeremy's impression of the infamous Lynette Ugg. 
because she typed in U G H a lot in all of her uh, oh messages in her text messages. <laughs> Everything is uh. By the way, I've been getting a lot of people, not a lot, but s several very, um, I guess, interested parties, probably very obsessive people contacting me to say, you don't know the whole story and you don't know. You're just telling one side. Um, Excuse me. Read my article on pjmedia.com uh, because I've linked it at the top of the chat if you have questions about that, because I literally cannot do my job as an, a journalist and reach out to the other party here because this judge has infringed on my First Amendment rights through his yeah. injunction. Yeah. I can't do my job. I can't reach yeah. out to the other side because this judge might put Jeremy in jail for it. Yes. So I am waiting on that. If I and and also I'm really not reporting on her. This is not about her. This is about this judge. Yep. I am reporting on the actions of this judge. I mean, now I I happen to like Jeremy and George. I think they seem like really nice people. But I don't know the facts of this case. It is it is extremely complex. It's gone on for a long time. I don't care who's right or who's wrong in this exchange. I care that the justice system in, in this county, in Levy County, is being impacted in a negative way by this judge. That is what I see, and that's why I'm covering it. I care about court corruption. I care about corrupt officials. Uh, because you are a corrupt person. You're the most corrupt person. This person is the most corrupt person in Levy County, and Donald Trump would agree. Uh, and we need to stop this from happening. And it doesn't matter who's in his courtroom. It doesn't matter who wins in this case. It doesn't matter who's right and who's wrong. What matters is that this guy, this judge, is bastardizing the black robe. This is yeah. not what the black robe is for. This is not what we hire our judicial, uh, uh, this is not what we hire them to do. They work for you, by the way. The judiciary works for you. Yep. You are the boss of the judiciary. You are the one who can say impeach this judge, which is why if you want him impeached, you need to call the legislature of Florida, senators, House of Representatives, and the governor, because the governor appointed this guy, get enough emails and letters to the governor and he might call his favorite senator or the majority leader and be like what the hell could do something about this they are Hopefully the ones that who are responsible the hail, do something about this <laughs> but but to, to clarify line that and john crook they are a small sideshow in the circus now yes judge craig de thomas's is the, the main, main event show. Yep. he yeah. is attacking fundamental constitutional rights Right there. Yeah, that's what this is about. It's not about her and it's not about what's going. I mean, it is for Jeremy and George. They've been going through hell. But for, for me and why I want to cover it and why I want to talk about it is so that you people see what a what a bad judge is like. And uh, so that's so it really to me when I see comments like you don't know the other side, I don't need to. All I need is this hearing right here. All I need is is his behavior. And it's bad. All right. Let's well, move. and the other oh, side. Sorry, Go ahead. A judge has already seen the other side in Ohio and deemed that they were guilty and they both have civil protection orders on them. So the appropriate people have seen the other side. Right. And so right. they've seen all sides and they said guilty civil protection orders. Jeremy and George's lives are in danger. Exactly. And yep. uh, it's very interesting that to Thomas's won't honor uh, the Ohio order. I think that's a problem. I may have to Huge write an problem. article about that. I may have to, that could be the next topic of my article. I need to do some research on, on those cross state orders. And you see how, how it keeps coming, coming up, Megan, me. the whole, sorry to interrupt, but the, the, the mm -mm. cherry picking, it's, it's all about cherry picking this. If, if to, to just like, he should tattoo it on his face. I cherry pick. And everything he does, everything. He's got there. He, he could he could tattoo all of the cherry picking right there. Just <laughs> he does, he, and he's not. He's also. I think uh, Doreen is right. He's leaving out material facts. Right. He's leaving things out by berating Jeremy's attorneys. He's leaving out very important things like. The plaintiff didn't show up for her deposition. So, of course, they need to file for a, a continuance. He never says a word about them not showing up for their deposition and not giving discovery. This is a problem. This is a problem. So I would just suggest you all evaluate the context in which we are brought here today and keep 
the extraneous, unnecessary name calling and characterization when the record evidence establishes that the court accommodated current respondents counsel when he needed a continuance because he said he couldn't be prepared because he got into the case knowing the case was scheduled and he came in as co-counsel to a lawyer that told this court here we go again here we go somewhere between okay remember larry's impression because it's about to come into <laughs> he's gonna get himself all worked up right now here he goes. This he's really mad that someone told him that they could try this case in 15 minutes. He's so pissed. And he gets going. And I also like the part where he says, Can we cut back on the name calling? And no, Judge, you're just about to get the name calling. The name calling hasn't even begun yet. <laughs> buckle up. Because hashtag, buckle, hashtag up. buckle up, Judge Grudge. <laughs> Here it comes. I haven't even looked at the locals chat yet, but I imagine the memes are epic. 4.50 p.m. and 5 p.m. Judge, I only need about 15 more minutes to conclude the entirety of my case. I found that to be incredulous understatement of the morning. I don't know of a lawyer who could have because he said he needed to present two additional witnesses. He needed to cross-examine the petitioner who at that time took about two hours to not even get through with her direct testimony. And he didn't even address whether he was going to call his client and or maybe forgot whether he was going to make legal argument to the court. There was no way anyone after this judge has spent 40 years almost on a daily basis in a courtroom could have done that in 15 minutes. But in that context, Oh, here he goes. Current counsel, co-counsel Mr. Feather, Mr. Shaw, <laughs> took the case and said he couldn't be ready. Start tallying co-counsel. And this the flying arm motions, but there it is. Everything's fifteen minutes. He's yeah, he's like your co-counsel, Mark Feather, said fifteen minutes. Well, the reality is, it would have been less <sighs> than fifteen minutes if we actually look at the statute. And he found that oh wow. Uh, they don't meet the statute. Jeremy's just videoed his life. That's it. He is they, not only is he litigating from the bench, he is also um, pre. Uh, what is it called? He 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 has a you guys. He has a crystal ball. He can see the freaking future. Like he can actually. See, what is it? You are not allowed to point out my hypocrisy. <laughs> Objection. Do not Objection. Allow <laughs> uh, he's not only litigating from the bench he's also trying to say what will happen without even knowing what it is he's literally foreshadowing something that he has absolutely zero clue on how it's going to go down zero oh he knows exactly how it's going to go down are you kidding me i'm sitting there going oh my goodness he's taken away my freedom of speech he's taken away my my second amendment rights he's taken away access to my property i'm not allowed to drive on my own public road to access all of my property he knows exactly what he's going to do and then he's going to try and make me take all my videos down sharing the truth of what these fools have done to us it's too late now now he has to go after that umbrella guy he has to go after me he has to go after megan yes, i mean there's a lot me. of youtube channels gonna have to shut down over the next few weeks so this objection shadow. you are you are a journalist and therefore a liability to my corruption <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's foreshadowed in every single hearing exactly where he's headed. Uh, so he's a judge and a clairvoyant. Got it. Yes, sir. <laughs> you guys, this is so funny. Just FYI, my locals chat asked AI, what does a meme lord look like? And this is what AI made for them. I am dying at this. <laughs> it's a monkey chained to a desk drawing. This is exactly. Oh, that this is, is deep. Isn't that unbelievable? That Meme Lord. So deep. It's Isn't like that chained, something? Like I see that, you know, chained to society's norms and, Larry, and Larry, you're getting too deep, man. I'm Let's getting too deep. Deep. Sorry, sorry. I'm a philosophy <laughs> major and a lawyer. Please man. forgive me. You're parking me. It's this a monkey. Funny. It's a monkey drawing. Got it. Yes, sir. Okay, Is it? Sir, yes, there sir. Moving on. Semper Fi. I think AI, <laughs> I think AI is so fun. The tears. 
Larry's having a moment there. I'm Larry's sorry. You, my brain turns on. You, it's, it's a dangerous place to be. <laughs> I think AI is so fun. Uh, and like, especially with the AI artwork and the memeing has just gotten so much better since AI can help out. And oh, it's fantastic. All right, let's keep going. He's going to, he's still talking. By the way, this hearing has been going on. Yet no one has spoken on their client's behalf yet. We're just listening to a soliloquy, a Shakespearean soliloquy by the judge of all of his complaints about this case. <laughs> it's unbelievable. How many minutes in are we so far already? 10, uh, 20? It looks yeah, like 10. That's I think 10 we're about 10 minutes in. Soliloquy. That's insane. Insane. Oops. <laughs> Again, accommodating. Thanks a lot, Marilyn. Style. I want you to keep that context in mind. The court's taking 12 minutes of your time. Silver and, I'll take more if I want to. <laughs> and I'll take more. Yes, Your Honor. Well, All right, here it comes, Silverman. Uh, the first thing I want to note is um, I saw Mr. Shock had referenced in his email to the court on Friday, and the court just referenced it a 5 p.m. deadline on Friday. I'll be candid. I don't recall from our. I remember the court saying we had to file by Friday. I don't recall 5 p.m. at the court Saturday. I do apologize. I don't fault Mr. Shock for filing after 5 p.m. Uh, the initial motion he filed. Uh, obviously, I filed mine 7 something p.m. but both were filed on Friday. What I do object to is Mr. Shocker's motion being heard today. The reason I object to that is when Mr. Shocker filed that motion, uh, forwarded to the court on Friday, he indicated there was additional authority, additional information he wanted to include. As the court noted, that was not filed with the court, um, styled as a memorandum of law until I believe 7 p.m., 6.55 p.m. Uh, yesterday evening. So it was filed almost two hours after the close of business the evening before a 10 a.m. hearing the following day. Um, I don't engage in trial or hearing by ambush. Um, I respectfully ask the court to decline to allow Mr. Hales and his counsel the opportunity to do the same. Um, candidly, I had a rather full calendar with my family last night. I did not have, I have read what was filed last night. I did not have the opportunity to go through it in full and pull all the cases and read everything. I therefore object to it being heard today. Uh, we can reserve for another day uh, the arguments I have on the fact that the motion or whatever it is is completely unfounded, fails to cite relevant law, and the law that I have been able to review thus far uh, seems to indicate it doesn't support what they're asking for. But I am before the court on a limited basis, uh, pursuant to the rules of family law procedure, asking the court to continue this Friday's hearing. Contrary to the, uh, as the court noted, rather bombastic assertions in the pleading filed yesterday evening, um, I have done what I think is the appropriate and ethical thing to do here because when Ms. Preston contacted me, I knew I would not be available this Friday. I will not make notice. A plenary notice of the a judge is quiet, silent, for a no interruption, not a peep. Not a peep. That is why, nothing, the family law rules of procedure, I have filed a limited notice of appearance asking this court to consider continuation of Friday's hearing. Judge is being so respectful. Noted, if the court denies the continuance, um, I will not be able to represent my client on Friday, and Ms. Preston is fully aware of that. Before Even though a week said, before he I came into her deposition, it. shut it down, and said we were harassing her, that Randy was harassing her, and shut down her deposition and John Crooks. Who but did that? Silverman. He didn't even legally he didn't even legally file a motion to represent her yet. He, she had no legal representation. He comes in, tries to shut down, and he did. He shut down the the uh, deposition, so lack of due process, and then shuts down John Crook's lack of due process. This whole thing, lack of due process. Mm -hmm. And the Thomasus is allowing it to happen. Mm. Uh, look at how quiet he's being, how respectful. Look, he's taking notes, and he's listening. We're going to see a much different judge in a minute here. Mm -hmm. Much different. He, we, we found finally the one person in Levy County who can make this judge shut the fuck up, and that's this guy, <clears throat> Silverman. Thankfully, he <laughs> shut Lynette up too. Because if you watch the hearings with her, oh my goodness. So well, we, I, we are we give him props that he can keep people quiet. Interesting. I am going to play a sound every time the judge interrupts one of these lawyers. You're going to hear this every time that he interrupts. This is what I'm going to play. Okay, so we're going to count how many of those we hear when we, we'll see if if he does it to Silverman, I'm going to hit the button. So far, I haven't had to do it. Here we go. The court will be 
getting from me a motion to withdraw, a stipulated motion to withdraw before the end of the day. Um, with that being said, the court has laid uh, quite a bit of the record already. This case has been previously continued, um, I believe multiple times at the request of the respondent and over his counsel. Um, I have not yet obtained the videos of the court proceedings, although I've had, I would say the pleasure, but I would say more displeasure of having reviewed at least some of what Mr. Hales has posted online. <laughs> and there are excerpts of that court proceeding online, which I understand is the subject of another proceeding in this case uh, next Monday. Um, and uh, I think that on an equitable basis, Your Honor, um, as I point out in the motion, both parties are entitled to representation by counsel. This court has previously continued this case at the request of Mr. Hale so that his counsel could be accommodated. I'm asking the court to do the same in this case so that my client's counsel, potential counsel, can be accommodated. This is obviously a complex case. There are issues related to the Fifth Amendment. I think those are, I point that out in my motion to continue. Uh, Mr. Shockett um, raised it in an entirely different manner in um, the document he filed last night. Um, regardless, I am aware from the state attorney's office that there are criminal allegations against both of these parties. Um, and so the stakes are somewhat higher than they might be in another civil case. Um, of Can you pause record. right there? And so yep. for the reasons I cited in the motion, Your Honor, it is very important. I can't believe this judge has been quiet for like an entire yeah. two whole two and minutes. He's taking notes. You Just notice so how he's taking everybody notes. Everybody yeah. understands us. Joshua there. Um, and that'll make sense later when you see my deposition with Joshua. And um, I am in a gag order right now by this court to talk about that deposition. What I will share is my lawyer was busting up beside of me. But oh, you got him. Okay, so anyways, um, what he's talking about, the criminal allegations, are all the violations of the injunction. Okay, so there's a violation of all the Ohio... Uh, civil protection orders in Florida, they call it an injunction. So she's under investigation. He's under investigation right now for all those violations in both Ohio and Florida criminal allegations. Okay. And then she's gone back and she has said, well, Jeremy, Jeremy referenced to me, he sang a song and he talked about turtles. turtles. And so that's another motion. And then another motion, of, he said bad neighbors and everybody knows who the bad neighbors are. So that's another motion. So she's filing complaint in regards to me breaking the temporary injunction that takes away my freedom of speech. Okay. Which the state attorney has had 30 days. They've done nothing with it. And I don't ever believe they ever will. I was very careful to make sure, even though, to make sure I respected his his temporary injunction, even though I don't respect Judge Craig Thomas's. But that's what the criminal allegations on both sides are about. Yeah. Jeez. And my client be represented by counsel. The case law that I do cite in my motion uh, clearly stands for the proposition uh, that um, continuances should be granted when reasonable um, and when not overly prejudicial to accommodate a litigant's request to obtain counsel in the context of injunction proceedings. And that is Which is, what I'm sorry, this is literally what Judge Thomas has just said. No, this is unreasonable. You should have come prepared. And now Silverman is arguing the exact same point that the judge said is not acceptable. And he's like, oh, I'm listening. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> it's literally just contradicting what the judge said, but because it's his buddy, that's okay. That's a oh strong memorandum God. of argument. MG Law says, my daughter just said she hasn't hit the button yet. <laughs> nope. No, because nope. he's still very quiet. It is not, although this is a somewhat complex case, this request is not really complex. And so I'm otherwise going to stand by what's in the motion. Uh, and I think it clearly sets forth uh, a reasonable, and quite frankly, compelling case for a reasonable continuance of Friday's hearing. Thank you, counsel. Let me just ask you before I turn to respondents' counsel, with regards to the length of continuance, um, obviously the court has to weigh uh, any potential prejudice to the respondent who has currently a temporary injunction in place that has been modified. He's that weighing the prejudice by this court. Wait, did he just say he has to weigh the potential prejudice toward Again, you? Because I have a temporary and then the court. Yeah. He's got to he, weigh the prejudice. Let does me tell he hear you, himself? that prejudice is heavy. It's heavy. Does he hear himself? Like he's the one prejudicing you. But does he hear himself? Wait. He is trying to make it sound like he is aware that you need to be treated fairly, but he's not treating you fairly at all. 
So, good God. In conformity with the Second District Court of Appeals opinion, that's the most recent modification, um, issue 1229, uh, this court in conformity with that modified it to his benefit to some extent. Um, but obviously the court needs to weigh the length of the continuance in light of the totality of the circumstances, which I'll discuss uh, at a relevant point here this morning. Well, I'm sure he will um, at length. Hey, so, Megan, I, I just got to clarify, is this a redacted video of court or is this an unredacted video? Of court? It is re redacted. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because the redacted <laughs> and unredacted are exactly, exactly the same. 100 I don't know. Yeah, same. how would I know? How would I know? I think exactly. it is redacted. It's just redacted. But I mean, I want to make that's sure. the other thing. That's the other crazy part about this is like this redacted versus unredacted thing. It's like, oh my God, don't release unredacted copies then if you're so concerned they're going to get out in a public courtroom like in a public there's, hearing there's nothing to redact and there's the there's rules exactly the same there's the nothing rules to of florida as i learned from our sources the rules of florida when it comes to redacted and unredacted portions see the judge makes it a huge deal that like you know unredacted information could have potentially leak out on jeremy and george hales's channel the reality is the rule was put in place the purpose of the rule is to protect social security numbers of individuals, children, if it's like a, 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 a right. someone under the age of 18, or if it's a like mental inquest hearing, those, those hearings are usually protected. Those are basically the three things. First names, last names, I believe even home addresses are not covered by the rule. I, I, I don't have exact verification of what I just said, but it, common sense dictates that That's those are okay. So it's because it's so public. publicly available. Exactly. You can't look up just so anyone's social security number at the drop of a hat. You know, this right. really private protected information. That's why the rule was instituted in the first place. And the Thomases, as I've said before, I think, Megan, you're on my channel when you asked that question. Um, he butchered the rule and made it apply. First of all, it was it was Mosley who unfortunately kind of fell into this whole thing in the first place. And then the Thomases was like, I acting basically as Mosley, you know, sanctioning Feather. And I'm like, wait a minute, you're not sanctioning anybody. He's already been sanctioned by Mosley. You are just repeating his words. And he, he he likes power. He likes to remind people that he's a powerful man and he can he can do things to people. <laughs> That's why he likes giving exact timestamps. It gives him a there you power go. rush. It's all part of the same system. You got it. Power rush. God, here he goes again. Give me a sense, for instance, you know, the case can be continued for the following week. It could be two weeks. Give me a sense of what you think you need to be ready uh, and prepared. What really becomes, just in short, day one was continued and despite offering to reconvene the following morning, November 29th to November 30th, and the respondent Oh, here we go again. Before asked for longer time. Here we go. Um, Making the respondent really look bad. That was unnecessary. Early January, um, there was a bomb threat in the middle of the hearing, and thus we did not complete that day's um, events. So and so we're scheduled for the 26th. So but again, Doreen said it wasn't because of the bomb threat. It was because they they were asking for the continuance because they didn't show up for a deposition. Exactly. So again. Position. And everybody who's wondering where's George at this point, George is outside right now with the Levy County Sheriff because John Crook is breaking the 500 foot protection order. And he's in a vehicle for hours upon hours upon hours with this four year old child that supposedly has a life threatening condition. Ignoring the 500 distance. He has he had no business being there. God. So in effect, it's the third day. Situation. And I understand that you want to obtain copies of the court proceedings. So just give me a sense of what you think the time frame reasonably would be for you to be prepared. Obtaining copies of the court proceedings is not uh, like Mr. Lanier, my paralegal, has already started working on that. I don't anticipate all having difficulty with that. I don't think any of the other business directed to Mr. Feather applies to me or my office. So we shouldn't have any, I should have those in the next couple of days. Um, I do intend to depose Mr. Hales. Um, and I believe you're going to love that, Larry, when I release it. You're going to love it. Um, I 
when we get to the appropriate part about any motions they're bringing with respect to discovery, which again, respect that I don't believe is properly before the court today. Um, I believe that he, that Mr. Hales through counsel, if he can properly serve um, Mr. Um, Cook with a subpoena, has the right to depose Mr. Cook. So I know he intends to take that deposition. Um, as to a further deposition of my client, um, again, when we get to the appropriate date and time to hear that motion and the memorandum. Or Still quiet. Mr. Shaka filed last night. No interruptions. We had a long discussion about the fact that it has improperly included communications between his office and mine in violation of the Florida Bar Rules of Professional Conduct. We can talk about the fact that he left out uh, the fact that I have made a motion for 12.31 OD to terminate or limit my client's uh, deposition. We can talk about the fact that it was improperly noticed. Um, it was taken as a video deposition when not properly noticed as such, and that Mr. Hales pasted the video of the deposition all over YouTube. We'll get to all that. Um, I don't expect- and Which I think is a misstatement of a fact, if I'm not mistaken, right, Jeremy? Because you only posted a snippet, not the entire depot yeah. cover to cover. Is that correct? So yes, uh, it was only it was only snippets from the actual deposition. One, you see the TV there. One of the things that we were yeah. going to show from the deposition is she's texting the entire time illegally, and then she deletes the text, and it's an obstruction of justice during the deposition. And we're set up ready to show that to Judge to Thomas, which he completely and totally denies. Ignored. Now, number two is I paid two thousand dollars to have the deposition recorded. Not only hers, not only John Crooks, but mine as well. And so I legally own all the intellectual rights of that video. And Silverman goes on to say that it wasn't properly noticed. So what he's talking about is in the in the statutes, it must say who the de who the deposition videographer is. Well, they don't know who it is until who the person is assigned at that moment, and that person identifies themselves during the deposition. And so it right. was trying it was, to say that it's not properly noticed because the name of the videographer wasn't on the notice is crazy. That's just a that's put a yep. person's name a technicality on it until that person is actually assigned to it. And Did so you, this is, were you but, but it's not just a technicality, Megan. It goes further than that. The minute. So let's say there is a technical in in uh, uh incongruence like you you violate the rule okay let's say you did not name the videographer it's a violation of the rule the the video deposition would be like improper inadmissible whatever however the or you know you could reschedule it or whatever however the minute the litigant either representing themselves pro se or with their lawyer they sit down in that chair and that camera turns on all technicalities that you just mentioned are waived wow. they're waived they're waived Oh, that's exactly. interesting. They are legally waived. And the Thomasus is allowing this to happen in the courtroom. It's mind blowing. Are they waived because you you took part in the deposition, Larry? So you're basically giving your consent to be consent. here. Yes, you're saying okay. that whatever yeah. violations that may have occurred, I'm okay with it. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but he does have an opportunity if he can serve Mr. Cook properly to take Mr. Cook's deposition. So I figure we Josh, none of this is, is relevant to the motion to continue. But... Well, and so because I'm asking him what needs to be accomplished. What are you saying? Know, what's not going to be accomplished? Right. So he's arguing. we have two depositions that need to be taken. Judge just completely ignores that. Com really just completely ignores him. Just being like, well, yeah, it is because I say so. So, you know. Yeah. I believe we can get that accomplished in the better part of the day, if not an afternoon or a morning. Um, so I would think at this point, a two to three week continuance would be appropriate. Um, okay. So that's where right. I, I just want to get a sense. We'll, we'll narrow down. All right. I got to get my finger ready on the button. Are you ready? Because there, there's going to be a lot. Not Let's one interruption. Let's first address the issue of. Not one for why Silverman. Or why not? Should we address what is was characterized late last night after hours as <laughs> case law, which was not case law, it was titled oh. memorandum of law, but really is an argument. But certainly you could make argument, we're here for argument on, on issues. Um, but with regards to the laundry list of sanctions that you're seeking, there's an objection to hearing that. 
Okay, Mr. Mr. Uh, Shockett, it's now your turn. But before it's your turn, I'm going to tell you all the reasons why I hate you and your motion and everything in it and how you filed it. Before I just turn to you to say, okay, Mr. Shockett, it's your turn. I've seen judges handle courtrooms before. I have never seen a judge do this, Larry. I've never seen this. I've oh. never seen a judge go, let me tell you all the reasons why I really hate you before I give you your turn to speak. <laughs> and the sanctions he's going to place on me before right. ever hearing anything. You hear him and the sanctions that are coming. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Goat screaming. Where's my goat scream? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Thanks, Your Honor. Good morning. Um, Thank you, Your Honor. May I please continue have another? Continue this issue by giving a little history first. Obviously, let's start from the beginning. They already have effectively gotten a continuance. Your Honor recalls. She didn't appear for her. We were supposed to finish on January 4th. She was supposed to appear for her deposition December 21st. So was Mr. Cook. Not taking they notes. Didn't show up. They filed motions. She filed a motion to reschedule her deposition. She also filed a motion to not take Mr. Cook's deposition. The day of the bomb scare, Your Honor, ruled that both of those depositions need to go forward. And we scheduled them here in open court on the 16th and the 17th. On the 16th, this is what's shown here. We can uh, we'll address the issue whether this is ready for today, but you saw, you know what happened, Judge. They didn't finish the deposition. Still not so, taking notes. And we are complaining about the actions of opposing counsel before the notice of appearance. Mm -hmm. I don't know of any rule that says you're, you, you have privilege to say something to somebody in an email and you can't be shown to the court. That doesn't make any sense. So what you have here is we gave you a Facebook post and we also showed you some emails where before in their appearance. You're arguing, you're arguing the merits of the motion. Okay, well, I just wanted to point out that, with that effectively the they got Press it. Press the button. Because there we you didn't go. get our, our required discovery. Well, the record reflects that the respondent uh, has a on November 20th. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, that's number two. Based on misrepresentations to the court and got the benefit of that to the significant high potential for detriment to the petitioner. Detriment not only because it's still hanging out there, but at that time it was hanging out there without a temporary injunction in place. And, and the court precedent and whole specter of weighing continuance with the temporary injunction is wholly different than one when there's not. When we came back, when you were appearing on the respondent's behalf, right at the outset, I said to you, well, now the court has to look at this differently because intervening, there was a second, I believe, if not third, but second, I believe, supplemental petition, which resulted in a temporary injunction. And despite yes. representation- Saying that my, that Mark Heather attorney yeah. tried to bribe her. That's why he put an injunction on me, not on anything I did, but what she lied saying my attorney did. Just make sure you understand that. There's a temporary injunction on me, not because of anything I've done. Unbelievable. 9,000 of you here in the chat. Make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to do that. The only excuse for not hitting that button is if your thumbs are broken. And I doubt that anybody here has broken thumbs. <laughs> and even if you even if you do, you could use a toe. You know, use your toe then. You know, you're, you've got toes too. You could just push that with a toe. All right. Uh, this, this guy drives me absolutely crazy. Instead of letting shock it give his argument he is now gonna he's launching into another soliloquy about all the reasons why he doesn't like these attorneys he's complaining about feather again isn't he when does he stop i know he never every <laughs> hearing it never fails every hearing it has yet to fail oh god fails is aware when the court receives a petition or a supplemental petition as a matter of law this court must accept what's alleged in the petition Oh no. As true. So, okay, there we go. Period. End of discussion. As true. To decide if it's true and if it's competent substantial evidence. But the court must accept it as true. So despite allegations that the court is accepting what she says, yeah, as a matter of law, when it's pled in a petition or a supplemental. If you petition, stop right there, what? despite allegations, he's tipping his hat. He's watching what the hails. And he just started that whole that whole sentence on Mr. Hales needs to know. I have to take this as truth, except if Jeremy Hales and George actually file information. Right. For then he doesn't. He evidence. says no. Or He's unless they file, your attorney files a motion to recuse. He doesn't take that motion is true. He doesn't take that allegation is true. And, and he should. 
because even the appearance of bias is is enough for him to step off the case. Just I the appearance. Think. Yeah, I ch hashtag I ch maybe that should be his punishment for this that he should get a tattoo across his forehead that says like grudge judge or yeah, I cherry pick. Yeah. Good lord, this guy. Because the court must do so. That's that's plain and simple. There's no choice. This interruption is still ongoing. The court can reject or accept any or all testimony of any witness. Okay. That's a great point. I want to just touch on that. Hang on. Hang on. That's the second oh, motion number three. to continue <laughs> that you argued. The respondent's third motion to continue. So that was that was on 12 1 at 556. 556. The respondent's second motion to continue. Respondent's third motion to continue was 12 5 at 1253. Respondents Why does this matter? Was the January fourth um, proceeding? Well, that was in conjunction with a motion for discovery violations of not showing up for their depositions. I hear you. Yeah. I, I know why. I've got okay. institutional knowledge of why. But every case, every lawyer, I took the case just like Mr. Just like Mr. Silverman. We take the case as we see it. And I got short notice, and I said I'm going to ask. You know, I'm not prepared, and I appreciated your honor doing that. But this. I'm just pointing out here you that know, this is a continuous. What, I did, what I did as a matter of law was to provide due process to Mr. Hales, your client. Yeah. I wasn't going to deny him that. Okay. And so on my, on my question, yeah, the way why he's are we suggesting now. Yeah, I was about to say. He wasn't going to deny you due process then, I guess, but he can deny you due process every other moment of this thing. That's the fifth God. amendment. I forgot about that one. So it's, it is, he did deprive you of three amendments at least. I know I made that joke earlier, but literally first, second, first, and, second fifth. and fifth and almost yeah, six, you know, right to counsel. It's like, well, I'm going to, because having unprepared counsel, I believe the United States Supreme court has ruled on this. Uh, there was a, a case from like the fifties or sixties. I can't remember. It's a horrific case. It was like a, 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 a it was either a, a, an R case or a murder case. And the individual hired a lawyer like last minute because he just couldn't find anybody until the very last minute. And the judge in that case said, uh, so the lawyer moved for a continuance. Like, Your Honor, I had less than 24 hours to prepare. And actually, it may have been Clarence Darrow, but that wasn't the original case. That wasn't the one that went all the way to the Supreme Court. Anyway, I'm sorry, I digress. No, the that's point is, interesting. The, the point is, you know, the lawyer in the case that I'm thinking of that the United States Supreme Court ruled on is uh, uh, the lawyer basically said, Your Honor, I need more time to prepare. This is a very serious case. There's lots of evidence. Please give me more time. And the the Supreme the, the, the judge said, no, we're going to trial right now. And of course, he ended up getting convicted, the gentleman, and thrown in jail and everything. They appealed, and it went all the way to the United States Supreme Court. And the United States Supreme Court set new precedent saying having – Unprepared counsel is equivalent to having no counsel at all. That is almost a direct quote from that case. So these that's the that's the deprivation of would be the of the sixth amendment. If 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 Judge De Thomas's was like, well, you said you're not ready, we're going anyway. Good Lord. So due process in, is in five. Number one, uh, first amendment. So if you guys are counting with us, other than the, the bleeps, which is freaking love. We're up to five now. We're up to five <laughs> at least. Um, so first amendment, you know, Jeremy is going to be punished for other people's speech. Number two, you can't have a firearm while this case is pending. So he can't defend himself. And by the way, Jeremy, I don't know if you got my email. There is a group that it wants I to did. make you a holster yeah. and, and send it to you. So anyway, and that's another those thing. You may not be aware yet. The victim's advocate's son, who the victim advocate is appointed to actually be an advocate for me because the state is going after Lynette for all these violations. The victim's advocate's son assaulted me. So protection is pretty important, but we can keep going on. Um, the um, number three is the uh, a Fifth Amendment violation, which is due process and potentially almost bordering on Sixth Amendment violation right to counsel. Again, the United States, not that he doesn't have a lawyer, Jeremy, but the fact that he has a lawyer that may not be prepared. If the judge was like, well, we're moving forward anyway irrespective of whether he's prepared or not, that would have been the fourth, uh, you know, amendment, not fourth amendment, but the fourth of our 10 uh, bill of rights amendments violations. And speaking of, by the way, one last thing before I forget, uh, this came in like an hour ago. That's why it's fresh. And I almost forgot to tell you this, Jeremy, there's a gentleman who called me who said, uh, 
so, you know, individuals who are deprived of their Sixth Amendment, excuse me, of their Second Amendment rights, such as, you know, convicted felons, or in your case, uh, which uh, uh, the judge taking away your Second Amendment rights so you can't protect yourself because of the stalking charge. Basically, anyone who has either temporarily or permanently lost their Second Amendment right, there is something called, and I don't want to make a mistake, I want to read this exactly. It's called a PCP, it's like a pressure something air pistol called a Huben, H-U-B-E-N-G-K-1. And it comes in either a 22 or 25 caliber or something like that. You can actually purchase that and it would not be in violation of the judge's order, I believe, because it's not a firearm. And according to my source, this is all hearsay. I'm just sharing with you. Literally convicted felons who are for life, unless they get the record expunged, are prohibited from possessing any type of firearm. According to my source, those are okay for them, which is... I, I saw that and I, I figured I'd at least the, the, the my duty is to share and, and we'll see what happens next. You know what I mean? Well, we, we, so, we, we, so, we usually roll with a 40 cow or, or out, a crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have. Yeah, there's quite a few crossbows. <laughs> oh, God. Sick. The whole thing is well, sick. We, we roll with a 40 cow and a 45. depending. well, at any, it doesn't matter. We're not right We're, now. So. <laughs> right, because We're you're trying not allowed. to play it safe because we don't know with the county, we don't know who to trust, we don't trust the judge, we don't trust law enforcement. So we're just we're playing it safe. And right now, our cameras are stronger than a firearm. And people see right. as soon as you whip out that camera, people act differently. And so mm -hmm. with prayer and the camera on our phone right now, that's that's our uh, our weapon. Oh, trust me. I learned that when I went to the Johnny Depp trial because I was live streaming like when I would get in line. People really respect live feeds for oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Use it. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Sunlight. I'm saying the opposite. Effectively, if they've gotten it already. By, by, by her deposition not continuing, the Nettles case, Judge, we, we have to have discovery and it didn't, it didn't finish. Mr. Right, let's, let's put it in this context. Okay. Everything about context. Your co-counsel, current co-counsels to this day, Mr. Feather, represented he could be two about Feather. 15 minutes. He's so pissed about that 15 minutes. In hindsight, in error, this court regretfully allowed the deposition of Mr. Ms. Preston to take place in the first place. You we regret due process. We regret this that we allowed him to take the deposition. Process. Can How can this man call himself a judge? He regrets allowing legal due process. And and why does he regret it? Because you released it portions of it to the public. That was going to be public anyway after the I mean you paid for it. It was your property. You had there's no reason why it wouldn't be public unless there was an order from the court, which I'm taking it there wasn't one before you published it to keep it sealed or anything. Nope. So there there why would he regret giving you know allowing you to take a deposition that is legally prescribed in the first place like you great question you're entitled to it video for right. today so by the way everybody who's a what the hails fan we won that's today's video we won <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> what did you win, uh, you win? Uh, what did you win? Uh, you're not the case out. it's not over yet <laughs> well did you did the judge force you to take down uh the the deposition clips because i looked for them and i couldn't find them no, he hasn't. He hasn't forced me to take anything down yet. He's attempting, and he's eluded and foreshadowed that he's going to. Oh, I can't find the deposition one. Send me, send me the link I'll, for I'll that in my it, email. Let me, right. let me read it to me as well. Then I'll send you I the link. To it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to hear. Uh, a lot of speculation of why he's so upset that the deposition was released is probably because she pled the fifth so many times. Oh my gosh. Sorry, why does that matter? Maybe I'm missing something. Because, because it's embarrassing? Like, because it's embarrassing for her, maybe? Yeah. I don't, but you you can't plead the fifth. Did. It's not a criminal case. And she's the petitioner. Remember, right. I mean, the, for those of you who saw one of my videos, I don't remember which one it was, but this is literally the equivalent of going, Your Honor, I need this. This is an actual rendition of what's happening in Lynette's case, okay? I am, unfortunately, Lynette, okay? Your Honor, I am being stalked by uh jeremy hale please help me okay i will temporarily grant your petition thank you your honor uh jeremy now i'm jeremy okay lynette we're gonna do your deposition tomorrow okay no problem i am lynette again i'm here for my deposition okay lynette would you please tell us what is going on uh, i plead the fifth 
No, 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 no. Listen, honey. My mom died. We're here to help you. Like, you obviously need a protection, you know, from, you know, Jeremy. You're saying he's stalking you. So could you please tell us, you know, X, Y, Z. I plead the fifth. <laughs> no, that's the equivalent. That's literally what's happening. Like To put it in the simplest terms I possibly can. And you can't plead the fifth in a civil case. Like, there's you can't, to. because there's no liberty at stake. Well, I'll be careful with that because maybe you could be criminally implicated based on the words that may come out of my mouth. You know, if your next statement is, uh, yeah, I killed her, you know, even though it's a civil okay, case. That's true. Of course, that's incriminating. But she's the pl maybe the defendant would have that uh, issue, but the plaintiff shouldn't because the plaintiff is bringing the action. The plaintiff wants to be there. The plaintiff wants to say, here, hear my story. Again, the idea, ground, like, but I agree with you. This is neither here nor there. This is completely outside the purview of everything. But aren't I right, Larry, that in civil court too, if you do plead the fifth, though, it can be used against you. The, the judge can infer guilt from that in a civil case versus criminal. Well, I don't know about inferring guilt, but it definitely weakens your case. And the jury, I mean, look, if there's a jury there. There's an inference and, of guilt in a civil yeah, case. Yeah, yeah. I'm not that's, a lawyer. I believe that's I'm correct. not a lawyer, but uh, I pretend to be one. No, but well, it's, it's a very valid. You can't point. infer guilt in a criminal case when someone pleads the fifth, but you can't. I believe you can civil, in you a can. civil case. There is a case. Oh my God! There's a case on this. Delisi versus Bankers Insurance, four thirty six South Second, uh, ten ninety nine. D e l i s i versus Bankers Insurance, four thirty six South Second, one zero nine nine. You cannot have your case in your silence too. There you go, folks. It's it's established law. In, right. In okay. So there it is. You, if you're especially on the plaintiff side, yeah, you can't bring your case and then say I'm going to be silent. That's absurd. It's so absolutely everybody, absurd. Everybody understand what that means? The Thomasus should have dismissed this case immediately based on her pleading the fifth. You can't have your case and silence too. What you can't have your cake. Yeah, you get one yeah. or the other. And it should be immediately dismissed, but he did not. He does mention that it was unnecessarily embarrassing. Um, and that's too bad. That's her own fault. Stop embarrassing yourself And publicly. Jeremy is correct, by the way. Sorry. Jeremy is correct. You, you can have inferences in civil cases. So if you plead the fifth, they can infer you're guilty. I take yeah. my words back. You were right. Yeah. I have I have a very... I, I can't state this enough or or I truly don't even have the words to communicate it well enough but we have we have a phenomenal legal team backing us that we we don't just call a legal team or lawyers we call them friends mm, they've and they friends. they've been through us with the highs and the lows and there've been plenty of lows and there's been a few highs but it, it, we're blessed we're blessed to have them in our corner teaching us like when i'm stating this stuff i didn't know this i'm being educated through this process which is one of the most important reasons why we want to have this out on the channel to mm -hmm. educate people if they're going through this yeah and it's it's an incredible educational experience that's part of why i'm interested in it too it's because i always learn new things the more i uh, watch these cases what i've learned today is that uh I wouldn't want to be in front of Judge DeThomasis. I'll tell you that much because I don't think he does things right in his courtroom. Let's let's continue with this. Position of a litigant who, in the middle of her direct testimony, is is stop. We want to now take her deposition. I regret approving that. It's my <laughs> understanding from representations of counsel, and we, we've got oh a record God. potentially of what. But it's it seems to me that that process, which has resulted in. We'll fill in the blank number of hours of deposition, which you're now saying was unsuccessfully left incomplete, has now, I just heard from Mr. Silverman, also been published to the Internet, in addition to your co-counsel in violation of the Supreme Court administrative order, Published to the internet. SCAO 11 222, and in violation, excuse me, in violation of AOSC 11 22, and in violation of our chief judge's administrative order 1.14 version 2. 
Despite that, he requested and obtained unredacted copies of the 1129 and 126 proceedings. He never shut up. And is now answering to contempt charges from the chief judge since it's his administrative order. I swear to God, I am wanting to hear this so badly right now for someone to stand up and be like, Quiet, quiet, quiet. Shut up! <laughs> Stop talking! Way, sorry, Megan, completely unrelated. Um, is your chat slowed down? It is. Okay. Can you believe that? Does it need to be slowed down even more? What What do you have it on? Is it 10 seconds? It's 60. I rest my case. What? <laughs> no, nothing. Please continue. Is it okay? Is it yeah, good? Yeah, it's, it's good. I, I just wanted to make sure somebody sent me a message just to make sure that you had that done and, and never mind that's this okay. is insane this is really good good going i know the chat is moving so fast you guys it is insane and i will get to your super chats i promise but i'm not trying to make this a five-hour live stream we're gonna try and get through this this but dude somebody somebody said today i have to share this somebody was like it wasn't even a meme it was just like i forget how how to like how to memify it but maybe you guys can help in megan's uh locals it's basically like you know judge the thomas is, is in his courtroom and he's like you know you will obey and you will obey and i will take your amendment and then it's like law tube entered the chat and judge the thomas is like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> you have no first amendment you get no first amendment you have no first amendment you yeah. all get no first amendment He's like the Oprah of third world dictators, this guy. Yeah, like he just... has the link to the uh, deposition mm. video. Oh, it's you quite do? Entertaining. It is oh, quite I want to see it. I want to see it so bad. Oh, my gosh. I think I've watched it three times now. You know what kills me is this judge acting like you posting things to the internet is just the worst thing he's ever heard. And now I hear that this deposition has been posted to YouTube. Like, what? So what? And I, like I said, my friend Sean McMillan has an entire channel where all he does is post depositions. Unless there's a specific order from the court that says you can't post it, then you have every right to do it. So whatever. Okay. About what then ends up being disseminated and published on your client's YouTube channel. And so that's another consequence of there being additional time. <laughs> now face. I'm hearing this morning at a deposition has been provided on YouTube. And let me just ask the question, is it a, is it a video depo? Well, it is a video depo. It's improperly noticed as a video depo. It does not comply with the rule. Well, um, let's, fo let's follow the rules. That's why six, I'm asking the question, because there's we're already- the Oh, wait, wait, where's my beep? I, I lost zero. my button. There is. There. And so the notice that was filed on January 15th- Back to Silverman. Was in the title, just the title. How come he's getting to talk? It's not his turn. Sit down. Sit, sit. This is what I would have said if I were in the court. Do not sit down. Sit down. But hey, my down. buddy. But hey, my buddy. <laughs> my good friend. <laughs> good friend. Good lord. Were these two like best men at their respective weddings or something? Were they? Did you know that Judge I, the Thomases was the presiding judge on Silverman's divorce? That's Which what I heard. If you live in Levy County, your divorce happens in the county that you live in. MG Law says, let this sorry ass judge come after any of us for come for covering this. I dare him. He already tried. One of his associates, because clearly he's the guy said he was asking for a friend, calls Larry, leaves a message on his answering machine and says, buckle up. I'm going to file a bar complaint against you asking for a friend. Is this what you is this how you interfere with the administration of justice? Like this guy, this guy's unbelievable. Yeah, you know it's bad, Larry. I knew it was bad before that happened, but when that happened, I my spidey set senses went off big time. It was like, oh shit, they're scared in that county. They don't want this shit getting out to the wider population because there no way would somebody call you in another state and threaten you with a bar complaint if this was on the up and up. Sorry. Exactly. Wait. Yeah, hold a second. They probably would if Linet told them to, which means you can get an injunction against Linet, who's telling her followers to <laughs> contact you because this judge will slap injunctions on people for doing In nothing. Direct. And you get a temporary injunction. And you get a temporary <laughs> injunction. Everybody <laughs> gets injunction. 
I doubt that they would give it to. I doubt he'd give it to us. Like I, I doubt he'd give it to Larry. Larry, you should try. He's, I cherry pick. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. End oh my discussion. god! Denied and sealed. End of discussion. Now let me get back to Mark Feather. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've got I've got a pinched nerve in my neck, and I'm starting to understand that maybe it's Mark Feather's fault. I think that perhaps that's Mark Feather's fault. My whatever issues I'm having today, maybe it's Mark Feather because this judge man, he'll blame this guy for everything. He's got a hangnail. It's Mark Feather. You're Stop my toe this morning, Mark Feather. <laughs> Mark Feather. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Thomas, Mark Feather's fault. <laughs> when Judge Thomas says cusses around his buddies, you know, like Joshua Silverman, he's like, oh, Mark Feather. You know, <laughs> don't Mark Feather yourself. He's MF. His MF is Mark Feather. You MF, you Mark Featherer. You're such a Mark Featherer. Why are you typing Mark Feather and everything up? <laughs> so good. By the way, Mark don't Feather, feather it up. Incredible. What a feather up! He's an incredibly respected attorney. He is an incredible oh. man, and he is a friend now because of all of this. Yeah. And I'm glad to call him a friend. Mark, Mark, Mark. The chat By so the funny. Way, Mark Feather invited me to go fishing with him today, and I didn't so that I could be here with you guys. Oh, that's and awfully nice. Really oh. Wanted to go hang out and go fishing with him. Uh, you know, a it's a good thing you didn't, though, because had you gone fishing with Mark Feather at your next hearing, to Thomas, this would have been. Oh, I heard that the respondent went fishing with Mark Feather. <laughs> 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 contempt, contempt. I hope you still Taylor, have a chance to do that this weekend or something, though, by the way, Jeremy. Oh, I hope the opportunity is not lost. Someone in the chat said you, you, could, you could throw in an F off. Feather off. <laughs> feather off. <laughs> Love it. Off you feather. Oh, God. It says notice of taking video deposition by oh. subpoena deuces T. Putting it in the title does not comply with the rule. You can no, put things in the title. I've got the rule right here. We'll go, let's go to the an interruption of Silverman. We got one. Subsection B4. Uh, this, Any depo they, he was ready. Oh, so, yeah, see how sorry. ready they were? Uh huh. You see how ready they were? So scripted. My opinion. My opinion, and that's all it is. I can't, I can't share any truth, but boy, does this look scripted and pre-planned to me. And that's my opinion and only my opinion. All right, let's see. Recorded by video without leave of court or by stipulation, provided you follow the following rules. A, notice, must state in the notice is to be video with the name and address of the operator. B, the court reporter must be stenographically recorded by a certified court reporter unless otherwise agreed. C, procedure, must on camera identify the style, state the date, swear in the witness. D, custody of the tape and copies. The attorney requesting must take custody and be responsible for safeguarding the video. If I could jump in right there. <laughs> I did yesterday reach out to Mr. Shockett's office and ask him to provide me with a copy of the videotape, or the video recording. I guess nothing's on tape these days. Um, he directed me to the court reporter indicating that they had custody of that and that I would have to obtain it from them. We had a spirited discussion about the cost of obtaining that. But the notice, although it states notice of video deposition with subpoena deuces teeth, and I would note there's no subpoena issued in, uh, to a party, and there hasn't been a subpoena issued to a party in this case, um, does not contain the information about the videographer. It simply says the deposition will be taken before a court reporter and gives the name of the court reporter and a uh, internet address for the court reporter, and that's it. And because nobody knows that, the name of the videographer until it's actually it's actually assigned. And yeah. once she sits down and she starts her deposition, yeah, it's moot. She waves all rights. She but he's just going to leave that out. It is a mute point, and these two are are doubled up on it. They're yeah. tagged in this point. He's gonna he's gonna leave that out. Position wasn't concluded. My understanding is firstly that my client indicated she wanted to read the deposition. She was never provided that opportunity. And just That's yesterday, Mr. Hales, in one of his many monetized YouTube videos, plastered that video deposition all over YouTube. It was 621,000. By the way, he, he says problem. monetized videos. He has no idea what's monetized. And every time we show these these freaks 
Lynette and Crook, because of the content and their language, gets YouTube flagged. gets flags it and demonetizes all of them. We share them for accountability because that is our protection. Right. Yeah. Monet he wouldn't be able to tell which one of your videos are monetized or not. Well, Megan, let me let me show you guys this. Um, I don't know if you can share my screen. Yeah. Hold on. Because this is go. very important. This is what the judge is, is saying. And he is misstating the law like openly. And, and let me show you exactly where, where it is. So <clears throat> this is the rule. This is the Florida Family Law Rules of Procedure 12.330 as amended through a couple of weeks ago. Um, use of depositions, right? Use of depositions in court proceedings. So this is the rule that he's alleging that uh, Mr. Hales and, and or his attorney, whatever, violated, right? Yeah. So if you, if you go down to D, um, the this D, effects of errors and irregularities. This is the rule that he's pointing the finger at, right? He's saying, as to the notice, th this is what the rule says. Okay, let's go with the rule first. All errors and irregularities in the notice for taking a deposition are waived mm -hmm. unless written objection is promptly served on the party giving the notice. So the minute Lynette receives the notice that she's being deposed and she finds that, oh, the videographer has not been named, which is one, if you scroll up, it's one of the requirements, um, <clears throat> then uh, she can file a written motion and she can say, I, not show up to the deposition and she's 100% in the right, okay? However, here's what happens. If you scroll down to 3B, errors and irregularities occurring at the oral examination in the manner of taking the deposition in the form of the questions or answers, in the oath or affirmation, or in the conduct of the parties and errors of any kind that might be obviated, removed, or cured, if promptly presented, here it is, they are all waived unless timely objection to them is made at the time of the taking of the deposition. And so was objection made? Down, and and, no and I understand there wasn't. Was Jeremy made. can speak to that. There was no objection ever made. Well, then there it is. Uh, it is five, it's 544. It's after five. I have uh, cracked open the first beer of the evening. My husband was just traveling in Wisconsin and he picked me up a case of New Glarus beer. Have you guys had New Glarus Spotted Cow? before so good you know answer me i'm sober that. i don't need to answer that yeah I'm you sorry, don't have to answer that i don't Wis drink wisconsin yeah. oh my god i'm the only one that's all right i'm not i'm not ashamed uh i'm with you in spirit tears <laughs> of opposing counsel get me really yeah. fucked up so cheers everybody Gra grab your drinks cheers. and cheers that's sweetened orange <laughs> water from from walmart as I'm from Chicago, Wisconsin is just over the border, and uh, Spotted Cow is a favorite of Chicagoans. And and uh, every time they don't sell it here in New York, so whenever my husband travels to Chicago, he stops in Wisconsin to see his parents, grabs us some some Spotted Cow, and brings it home. And I'm always thrilled. He also brought home Chicago pizza and like all the stuff I can't get here. I do pizza. We'll do yeah. pizza. I do pizza. <laughs> well, Love that's pizza. coming. That's coming in a bit too. I've got. We've got the pizza. I've got my new my peppers, sport peppers. You can't get these here in New York for hot dogs. I don't know. I don't know how people eat outside of the rest of outside of Chicago, but it's garbage. Okay, it's just garbage. I know a bunch of you will will it will not agree with me, but look, if you want to know where I live outside of Rochester, in New York. They, their specialty is literally named the garbage plate, okay? The garbage plate is a thing, and it's disgusting, but they love it. It's gross. All right. Anyway, uh, back to the matter at hand, which is this court hearing, and a judge, uh, the judge is just going off on Mark Feather. He has just had it. He has feathering had it with Mark Feather. <laughs> Who the feather do you think you are? <laughs> So, Mr. Shockett, while we're Get the talking, feather out of my courtroom. Redepose <laughs> an individual who is there. Bird in here? There's so many feathers. <laughs> who your co-counsel only needed 15 minutes to call two witnesses, possibly Still the 15 minutes again. Argue the case and cross-examine. So that would leave. I'll, I'll be generous. Leave maybe 10 of those 15 minutes to cross-examine. Has now taken several hours of deposition. You have as his co-counsel. 
It's not complete. It's now broadcast. Do you, do you agree that it's been broadcast on your client's YouTube channel? I think I've seen a portion of it, yes. Okay, well, let's talk about then whether the deposition in video format was in conformity with 12310B4 and whether in conformity with that rule, you've safeguarded the videotape and the, clearly the language of videotape is now whatever format it's otherwise recorded in, inclusive of that. Well, my client, I gave it to my client, obviously. Um, and, oh, sorry, you turned this on. Oh, okay, so the, the, the rule as I read it, correct me if I'm wrong. it again. The attorney for the party must take custody and must safeguard it. So sharing with your client. All right, going forward, we are drinking every time he interrupts. Ready? At least I am. Uh, Larry, do you know what the legal... legal oh, wait, what? What? Safeguarding? Do you guys know what the legal definition of safeguarding is it's uh, not keeping i do not know what he means by from it. everybody the legal the legal application of safeguarding is that attorney must keep that video to give to everybody you're in charge making sure it doesn't get destroyed you give it to anybody who wants it the safest place for it to be is youtube <laughs> it's so public so right. Silverman and De Thomas are coming in and going, safeguard means nobody gets to see it. Wrong. Legally, safeguard means you protect it so everybody can, you distribute it. It's safeguarded so that you can distribute to those who want to see it and it's protected. It is legally safeguarded on YouTube. Good Lord. Not a problem there. What did you do to safeguard to assure that your client who testified or has made it clear to this court that his, his, I don't know if it's his main source of income, but his source of income is monetizing YouTube videos. That's what's what does that have to do with anything underlying this entire case? And you hand it to his source of income is monetizing YouTube. So what? So what if, hold on, someone brings an action against me. I've done nothing. Someone brings an action against me. I happen to be a reporter. I report it. And now because I'm making money on it, that's going to work against me in court because the judge is going to say, I monetized this person who brought some shit against me. No, 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 sir. That's my right as not only an American, but as a journalist, as a reporter, that is my right to tell the public what is being done to me. I, th this is it. What? I'm sorry. I'm having a it's hard mind time. Blowing. It's literally mind blowing. Yeah. <laughs> but look at how look did you hear the disdain in his voice about you monetizing videos if you were not in fear of of, of an unfair trial before now you should be at this point oh, how, what oh, are you absolutely. thinking sitting there listening to this what are you thinking being an entrepreneur and actually sharing with people and educating them and entertaining them and giving them and equipping them with, with tools to be successful in their life? And not only that, then all the money you make, you give to those in need. I mean, how dare we, right? How dare we? How dare you? Larry, doesn't this remind you of when the media came after us, YouTubers, for covering Johnny Depp and for making the Depp v. Heard trial and making money on it. This was the worst thing they, Taylor Lorenz and Kat Tenbarge at NBC and New York Times, they did these hit pieces on that umbrella guy. They dragged Nick Ricada into it. They dragged a bunch of people into it by saying, look at these YouTubers and how much money they're making. Yeah. They're making money. Now, the money that even Nick Ricada made, which was admittedly a lot of money i think he made 700 grand that year i think that was his total for the johnny depp year was around 700 grand that is a drop in the bucket in comparison to what law and crime made what the big networks made yeah. it is a drop they made in the tens of millions probably 50 if i had to guess accurately i'd say they because they spent like a solid I'm in the wrong 10, business Sorry. They spent 10 <laughs> grand just to get the access, you know, the rights to that, um, to the video feed. That's how much they paid for that. So just for that. So, you know, they had to have made, I'm sorry, it was more than that. I think it was a couple million. They had to have made 50 or more million dollars on this. The mainstream press 
made so much money, either reporting, live streaming, or whatever. And they're focused on that umbrella guy and Nick Ricada, who, ma who made a fraction of that. They're not even in the top YouTube creators, right? Jeremy, as big as your audience is, you're still a small time YouTuber in the world of YouTube. Like there are YouTubers out there with 230 million subscribers. Those are top tier. Like you're in, you're, you're doing great, but you are nowhere near this level of where he's trying to make it sound like, right? And but anyway, what's wrong with making money? Matter. That question is completely irrelevant. I agree it's with irrelevant. you. Again, but like, we don't even ask that question because it's the 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 key at issue here is not you know it's not a divorce. He's not divorcing Lynette. Thank God, you know, <laughs> marrying that woman it must be a nightmare. And well, now you're trying to figure out assets and what is your source of income and where are you making your money and show us your books. None of that matters None at all. Relevant. Why is he even talking about it? So right. to be clear, to be clear. So I know viewers have questions and, and we typically don't talk about this type of thing on YouTube. I, I actually think that it, it dumbs down the experience. It ruins the experience for the viewer, but I'm going to touch base on it here because of the legalities and what he's mentioned. So as you said, big TV, the way they're making money is they're selling ads. Every commercial you see, big TV is making money. Okay. YouTube does the exact same thing. They go out and recruit advertisers to put ads in videos, and then they give you a little bit of the money. Okay. So in regards of regards of what we do with that is we gift it back. And, and you see what we do, we gift it back. But here's the reality of it. We don't make money off of Lynette or John Crook. We don't make money off of other people. We make money off of who we are, our brand. It's what the hails. It's our life. These people stalked us. These people followed us, begged for money because they saw us give, at that point, probably a million dollars away, okay? So regardless of that, they wanted the money. They wanted the promotion. We have all the information that proves it, the screenshots, the text messages. They wanted us to work on their turd purgatory. It's not for turtles and it's not a sanctuary. They wanted our labor, our <laughs> money, our promotion. Turtle you made a million dollars. Can I have some, we please? May make I have some money more? based off of our life, our brand, our business right. we built, not off of them. You know, that Period. is a really good point. That is, in, in fact, I have never, I have never made that argument because I was just looking at it as, you know, all those big networks made money off of that trial. But you're right. All of the YouTubers who did well on that trial, on the Depp trial or any trial, they're making their money off of who they are, not on the trial. It's what they can offer yes. to the trial. It's what they can offer that nobody else can. We've had this conversation so many times. Yes. I was just talking to Larry about it. In the Kowalski trial, so many YouTubers were covering that. We each read the same documents every day. And still the audience was just growing and growing and growing because each person wants to hear the other that creator's opinion and that creator's opinion and my opinion and his opinion and on the same document it's not we're not making money on the document we're making money on what we're saying about it it's the personality Man. a friend of mine asked me that the other day he it was like he wanted to make a cooking channel and he's like larry there's so many cooking channels out there and i said his name is rob and i was like there are no cooking channels by rob last name i said his last name right. and i'm like and he's like wow i never thought of it that way thank you larry you're literally motivating me to start my own channel <laughs> you are the business and by the way if i was making money off of Lynette, then Lynette would have the net worth i do right because yep. she's stating that i'm making money but yet here she is she was begging people for a donation to put a, a retainer on silverman seven grants so, uh, somebody who loved us and then hates us that's a great point all grand. she has to do is no redirect money direct all that negative energy towards like you know jeremy and george or this and that all she has to do is take that energy and be like hi i'm lynette this is my turtle sanctuary donate you know make videos and whatnot that's it redirect all that negativity yeah, to if, positive if you're energy really making grow. money on her why can't she make money on her exactly there you go right and We've that's said that too i've said that so many times she would not be in poverty she would not be on disability she would be a multi-millionaire with multi-millions of turtles and and who knows what else i mean she could do whatever she wanted in her life and yet she Damn. has nothing she lives in garbage i want to get caught up on a couple of these super chats because they are getting really backed up uh, i'll be right back
Oh, yeah, go ahead. It's a good time for a break. If anybody needs to go to the bathroom, get some coffee, get a drink. Squid Pro Quo says, give Rogue Mama her wrench. Thank you, Squid. I did. She should have it. Uh, Rose Champ Chapman, Jeremy has been dealing with this psycho B for a long time, two years at least. Has it really been two years, Jeremy? 2021 is when she followed us here in end of 2021. And then we we had a meet and greet beginning of 23. She invited herself by avoiding to paying the registration fee fee. And when she asked if she can set up a donation box for her her tortoise rescue, Jeremy said, no, this is a celebration for our fans, for them to meet us. It would be inappropriate. And that's when everything spiraled out of control because she didn't get her way. Because she mm. wanted to launch her YouTube channel, use our fan base to, to promote her YouTube channel, and use our fan base for donations, and use our fan base for money. How's her uh, YouTube channel doing, by the way? The same as everything <laughs> she's ever tried to launch. It's been a failure. She's mm. not very good at marketing. She's very unprofessional. She airs out her dirty laundry. She's psychotic. She is mentally Here's what I would suggest for Lynette. If I, I, I want everybody to be successful. So focus on the positive, Lynette, and try to bring some positivity to the internet, and you'll get rewarded for it. Jeremy and George here do a lot of positive things, and people really respond to it. Their audience really loves them. And there's probably a reason for that. So if you're looking to get successful, try positivity. I don't know. I just, I just, I think maybe that would be more important than whatever it is you're trying. Puzzled Puzzler, thanks for the super chat, says the judge, regardless of recusal, will likely talk and talk and talk and talk to try to make himself feel justified, pun intended. That's a great comment. And absolutely, it describes this judge to a T. Crazy about a Mercury, doesn't it? Crazy about a Mercury thinks with Super Chat says George DeSantos was in Levy County Wednesday and Thursday. Wonder what he was there for. Buckle up, Buttercup. Ooh. He was in Cedar Key is what I heard. Was he? Mm -hmm. huh. I'm not sure for what, but I did recently read that he was in Levy County. I don't know, but he's my favorite off the rails uh, member of Congress ever. I mean, just just my absolute favorite. If, if you can get there by lying <laughs> openly... He's absolutely great. He's just, he ripped the Band-Aid, the, the, you know, the mask off of Congress and showed everybody what everybody is, which is a damn liar, okay? <laughs> Everybody's a liar. Don't let them tell you they're not all faking and they're not all lying about everything because they are. And George DeSantos was the only one to like, he, God, he's like, to me, he's like the, per, like a, an incredible example of performance art. Uh, and he just cracks me up. Julia, thank you for the super chat. Um, w HT is a big family. Yes. Uh, yeah. What the hell is a big is. family? I, like I feel that. Like it is. I, I feel that from your supporters. They just love you so much. And I really respect that. I think you, you must have done something incredible to earn that kind of loyalty and, and following. And we got for, those, for those people out there who have said to me that Jeremy and George's followers are a, are like a cult. I say sign me up for that kind of cult because they are so sweet and so kind. I haven't had any of these people, and I've got 5,000 new subscribers. Free candy, in the last free candy for all members. <laughs> it's, I've, I've had like 5,000 new subscribers, and they're all just like the most darling, sweet people. Nobody has been nasty. Nobody has been. They're all just saying, oh, please help the Hales. We love them so much. Uh, Desert Dragon Works. Thank you for the super chat. I've been a fan of what the hell's before there was a George and these quality people deserve better. Thank you for helping them be heard. These are the kind of comments I'm getting. Your people love you. Like, well, we love them. Yes. Lisa. They're so supportive. Back. Like we know, we know them so by loving. their personality. We can read their comment and we could tell you this is who it is. Like desert dragger works. That's Lisa. That's Lisa and in Arizona. She's yeah. in Arizona. We could tell you, we could tell you her personality. It's like, we know we've never met her in person, but it's like, we already know her. Right. I feel that way about so many of my regular followers as well. We, you know, it's, it's funny how you do get close to people who you've, you know, who've been hanging around the chat for a long time. Horowitz Feinberg and Horowitz, thanks to the super chat says, look, I've never even seen, heard, read anything from what the hails, but it chaps my ass to see anyone get screwed over by the courts like this. Yep. And that's why we're covering it. Not provided. Thanks for the super chat. Says following with the hails from India, they're fighting the good fight. Have been a fan of the DUI guy for a couple years now. Hashtag buckle up. 
and Michelle. Welcome to the Fox Den. Appreciate you. Shelly Hall, there is my Jeremy and George. Love you guys. Buckle up. Yeah, we have a lot of mutual uh, followers between What the Hails and DIY Guy. That's now, so funny. now we're gonna have a bunch of mutual followers. I know it. that's great, and I'm and welcome them all. I'm so glad to have them here. The wild lifer says, as a Chiefs fan, I should bounce, not buckle up. <laughs> uh, I have a I have a motto here. Let's make Americans friends again. That's my motto. We're gonna make Americans friends again, even if you're a Chiefs fan, you're still welcome here. So I love it. <laughs> Kathy Cab, thanks for the super chat. What the hell's FYI? Crook is in the house. Oh, oh, I don't. They're saying John Crook is is in the chat. Our stalking which... neighbor. So any any fans of what the hell's out there, if you could go back through the chat and give us screenshots of anything that you think was John Crook or Lynette, we have a court hearing again tomorrow before the final hearing on Friday. We'd love to utilize those. <laughs> give them to our legal team. That'd be great. Help us out. Uh, let's see. Therese Finn, the planet is watching. Love what the hails. Buckle up, grudge judge. <laughs> we, I intentionally bought this backdrop to take a jab at the judge because he said that he could get a signature on a former paper anywhere on the planet. He said I didn't need to fly home to Ohio to get my legal paperwork actually notarized. That he could get paperwork to anywhere on the planet. Anyone, anywhere But he on the spent planet. two months, over two months, trying to get me served for the court date in Ohio and he cut it. <laughs> well, I've never been able to get anything notarized if I wasn't there in person. That I've never that's not possible. No. That's ridiculous. Oh, by the way, your your chat, they're so loyal and so funny. I have gotten no less than about 300 messages to tell me that I reported incorrectly that you two are married and I hope that that did not uh cause an awkward conversation. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I called her your wife. I didn't know. And that, leaks. that was there's there's articles out there that we got married in 2012, but the crazy part is him and I didn't even meet till 2018. <laughs> <laughs> well, chop chop, people are waiting. <laughs> you also say I'm five five, but I'm six two. <laughs> Damon Percy, thanks for the super chat. Says I'm dropping all streaming services like Netflix and others for LawTube Reality TV. <laughs> Hales, Fanny, Trump, her, Deb, Viva Frey, Barnes, DUI guy, and Megan Fox. Listen, you guys, I haven't watched regular TV, and I don't know how long. I I keep Netflix just for the documentaries and for my kids, but I watch YouTube. I'm I'm riveted by by YouTube, frankly. Uh, Angie, thanks for the super sticker. I appreciate you. Jessica Kruger, feathers are in. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you get a feather. You get a feather. You get a feather. Everybody gets a feather, Murrah. Thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate you. Carol, thank you for the super sticker. I appreciate you. Sharon Carter, thanks for the super sticker. You're a pal. Tracy Fagan, thanks for the super chat. Says, welcome to the good old boy network of crazy Florida. You know, it's weird. One of the best judges I know is in Florida, and now the worst judge I know is also in Florida because Judge Hunter Carroll is a really good judge, and I keep bringing him up. He was in the Kowalski. He was the Kowalski judge. I keep bringing him up because his behavior is the exact opposite of this man's behavior, and he's in Florida too. So it's weird because Florida has like a mix of really good judges and like this really bad judge. And it, it, it sounds like that other one who was getting divorced wasn't so good either. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Julie Bug, thanks for the super chat, says G and uh, J&G explain her call to Ohio mayor. Now I've seen this in the chat. Tons of people are like, please tell her about the call. So go ahead. You want to go ahead? I mean, this, her, <clears throat> so she, allegedly says that she doesn't watch our videos and has maybe watched three or four, but she saw a video where we, where the, the, the mayor of Otter Creek flew to Ohio to visit her sister. And it just so happened to be our time allowed it to where we could all do something. And we made a fun video of it. Well, in her mind, there was another mayor that uh, Jeremy introduced her to. So I had a mayor friend who was a big fan of of watching the the mayor, Madam Mayor in Otter Creek, and he really wanted to meet her. So we met we met at a uh, basically we we went to that that little village and introduced him. And and so 
She, Lynette <laughs> sees so the mayor on video. She sees video. the mayor and thinks that it would be a great idea to contact him. Turns out she contacts the wrong mayor, contacts the <laughs> mayor in our village. Where we live, where, where we, we actually live. live. Calls three times and then makes threats that she's going to go to the local news if the mayor does not contact her back. And then she sends an email uh, defaming him and then sends uh, and then attaches a video clip. And stating you need to get him out of your out of your village. And that, um, what you know, it's a village, but. That's not how any so, of this works, though. You can't just ban well, someone in from her your village. world. It works that way. Yeah. In her bizarre mind, she's in control of everything and everybody. So not only did she contact the wrong mayor, like she a fool. Said she calls three times and then she sends this threatening Threatens email. Them. And that was used against her in the Ohio court that got the civil stalking protection order against her. That was one of many incriminating things that she's done. So that's that's the whole Ohio mayor um, story. Wow. Wow. That landed her. That was one of the many reasons that landed her the civil stalking protection order against so you her. So guys, you guys have such a fun um, channel, like normally before all of this started. Like you guys were like, you know, doing so much positive stuff and like teaching people how to make businesses and doing the, you know, the there there was that show about um, that I used to love watching of people who do what you do with buying the uh, the storage wars. Storage wars. wars. Storage Wars, right. I used to watch that religiously. I loved that that show. And that's what you guys are basically doing. Oh, look at this. Yeah, restorage. So re you, how long has it been since you could really just concentrate on what your channel was really supposed to be about? You've been doing so much of, I see this as like kind of overtaking your lives in a way. Well, our, really our channel is. is about our lives. So whatever is going on in our life that day is what we video. So, so the aspect of accountability with all this legal stuff is our only protection, especially mm -hmm. when a judge takes away your second amendment. Right. And so, uh, the video doesn't lie when we video, when we, when we video what they have done to us and, and we show the reality video cannot lie. And so it's accountability. So what the hails, we always say, you never know what the hails we're going to do, what the hails we're going to find, what the hails is going to happen. And so, and again, that's all part of marketing. I know you get that, but it is what's going on in our life on any given day. And this is what's going on in our life. And we obviously don't want that. That's why we sent a cease and desist. That's why we paid a lawyer $500 to send a cease and desist on May 13th, 2023. And all that happened is it heightened it and they increased more and increased more. And then we left for the winter and we went back to our home in Ohio and we went, well, maybe she'll stop now. Maybe they'll stop. And, then, and we were ready to just say, all right, it's going to end. But then she contacts our mayor in our village there with that nasty threats. That was the last And we, I went, done, done. I could I have, like, I could have told to you Ohio. that a cease and, I could have told you that the cease and desist was useless. I could have told oh, you no. that and saved you some time. That that's part of the process. <laughs> Once they ignore the cease and desist and you're in the hearing, it becomes very powerful. And so it's- well, Unless you're in front of Judge T D D T T Tomasis, because then he won't- <laughs> To Thomasis, yeah. Tomasis, yeah. whatever the hell. Tomato, tomato, to Thomasis, to, to Tom, whatever. Okay. Jan, I'm going to get, the Super Chats are coming in faster than I can read them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read everything that's $20 and up, and then we will move on with this hearing. And I will get to the rest of them at the end of the show. And I promise you that I will read every single one. Janice Wingfield, thanks for the Super Chat. Lynette said the nursing home intubated her mom in the nursing home. Nursing home staff cannot intubate patients only hospitals can or paramedics Another on the lie. scene or in the Another field lie. can intubate patients well that's pretty interesting isn't it that's that's pretty interesting uh vinny says a 50 dollars super chat thank you so much i'm a regular on the dui guy in hails now megan fox well welcome oh. to the channel Great, vinny. so glad to have you here you are welcome um dave H, keep up the momentum this has to go all the way to the top he says uh, let's see. I got Vinny. I think it will go all the way to the top. We we're pretty confident that this will end up. Uh, my civil liberties have been taken from me. We we feel very confident this may end up in the Supreme Court. 
Oh, Lord, that would be interesting. Elephant, thanks for the $20 super chat. Says, Hales, after the dust settles, are you considering selling your property? I'm not sure that billionaire who was leaving New York, New York City would love to buy it and develop the hell out of that small town. Ultimate revenge. Oh, that would boy, be hilarious. So, Elephant. <laughs> Mar a Lago uh, South. <laughs> the, uh, Everything is sellable for the right price, right? We, we do have a price in mind. And billions and billions and billions and billions and billions. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> we have a price in mind for the 70 acres. And George and I and Deanna, so many of you know Deanna, it also helps and works with us and, and does a lot to, to support us. And so we did look at a nine acre island. And the reason, and that was a few weeks ago. And the reason we, we had, we had my real estate agent fly down. We looked at a nine acre island here in Florida. And the reason is our stalking neighbors, because my philosophy is, is I'm on an island, they can't get seclusion. to us anymore. Seclusion. I'm mm -hmm. finally protected in Florida. And so we did come to the conclusion that we weren't going to purchase that island. And there were reasons for that. But uh, we will never, you were in the schoolhouse right now. And what the Hales fans understand, we have a 10,000 square foot schoolhouse. I'll never sell this piece of property. The 70 acres, we have a we have a price in mind if anybody, and if it was the state, because the sunshine or the sun pass is coming through. If the state offers us a certain amount of money, we'll sell. But we won't sell this piece of property right here, which is right around the corner from the 70 acres. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Well, and you're, li you're living in the schoolhouse now. You don't go to your, uh, the other property. You go to the other property. Yeah. Okay. Super sticker from Rick. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Boy, Larry's been on a long bathroom break. What's going on, Larry? You okay <laughs> over there? I'm, I'm all right. We finally got through it. We finally got through it. Uh, here we go back to the hearing. Let's go. Go, D. Tomasis, whatever his name is, D. Tomasis. You know why I keep getting it mixed up? I, on my wall of recusals, is a commissioner D. Tomaso, D. Tomaso, oh, yeah. in Washington State. Uh, he recused himself or got kicked off the case. I don't remember in a case that I was reporting on. But that name is so close to D. De Thomas Tom, that I'm getting a, my tongue can't get it correctly. Yeah, I I haven't said this in a video yet, but I have I I have something that may help you. You could call him Judge Dumb Tom Ass. <laughs> Dumb Tom. So that, that may help you a little. Oh bit. my God, that's going to end up in the next judge's diatribe. He called me a dumbass. Well, it's Dumb Tom Ass. <laughs> Dumb Tom ass. Got it, yeah. Judge. Dumb Tom ass. Perfect. So that, if that helps and you. And are you on know. What was that? If that helps you remember his name a little bit better. It I'm should. Just... It should. It should. Notice that your co counsel has. Wow. Look at his expression and listen. I forgot that he was yelling. Like we came back in where he's like, yeah, arms crossed, like staring daggers at your attorney and just like berating him already in violation of the Supreme Court order on no prohibition, prohibition, excuse me, prohibition against dissemination and in violation of our chief judge's Eighth Circuit order, prohibition court. against dissemination, despite the attesting to that fact. I your client has now monetized the posting of unredacted court proceedings from 1129 and 126, resulting in a lot of collateral problems directly caused by that. So you know that your client has, has previously disclosed unredacted videos. You know that your co-counsel is answering to the chief judge in contempt proceeding. It would have been concluded yesterday, but your co-counsel was afforded another continuance because he's somewhere uh, and unable to appear in court. That'll happen next Monday. And just another side note of accommodation. Oh God, this guy loves his own said, voice. In that context, and in context of this rule of safeguarding the attorney's responsibility, you provide... I apologize, but I lost count of the beeps, you guys. The, the chat There's has asked me how... There's been at least 15 by now. ...it to your client, and now you know that is posted on YouTube. And I'll have a discussion. Where's my dun-dun-dun? What steps have you taken to safeguard and to limit the continued publication of the 1129 and 126 on he asked that question Sorry, already second. but he didn't let him answer because he's been talking this entire time he's asked now we're on to round two of the same question before he lets your attorney answer yeah, the few, you can see the coming out of his ears 
I know. <laughs> Somebody needs to make a meme with steam coming out of his ears with the thought with the bubble that says Mark Feather. <laughs> Your co-counsel, Mark Feather. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. <laughs> fifteen minutes. They oh, took Larry. Care of fifteen minutes. Larry, yes. locals made your meme. Which Hold one? On. Oh, the... <laughs> you will obey my order. You will obey my order, and you will obey my order. You know why you will obey? Because I'm the judge. Law tube enters the chat. I swear to tell the truth, the whole time, <laughs> and nothing but the truth. So help me God, and I need His help here. <laughs> I love it. I told you. They're your, so awesome. Your locals are the best. Meganfox.locals.com. We have so much fun over there. The meme farming is intense. We have meme Don't farmers subscribe. working all day hard in the meme in the meme farms. And uh, they are over there for our entertainment. And they are the best. Oh, God. This guy is so angry. Larry, are you hearing his tone of voice? This is the second time he's gotten around to ask, what did you do to safeguard this thing? And he still doesn't let um, Shocket answer. Yeah. Very condescending. Oh. Audio and video of this court. I can't get an attorney client privilege. But you don't I have to answer that. Did you tell me? Have you done anything? We uh, have discussions. Yes. Has it been and unsuccessful? And with, and with uh, in the Philippines, I've had discussions about it. Oh, wait, I forgot my beep. Will you yeah, you did. I would, too. Okay. Today. I would agree. Use the relevance of that question. I would agree. Uh, Holy uh, crap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta catch up. We, he just went, would you agree that you have not been successful? So poor Mr. Shockett is like, uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Like he's trying not to get thrown in jail right now. It's literally what's happening with Mr. Shockett. Uh, yes, I haven't been successful, I guess, because you're basically screaming at me and telling me I have to tell you that I haven't been successful. Wow. Oh. Holy shit. He's not biased. He's not biased, He's is he? getting a lashing right now. You know, I already watched this, you guys. George, I watched this. And I still, it's still shocking the second time around. It's actually worse. I almost think... It's worse because it's so outrageous. Time. Yeah. The eyes start twitching. <laughs> I really, locals, I really need the beam with the steam coming out of his ears and Mark Feather 15 <laughs> minutes. You know, it's just, he, this guy is unbelievable. Relevance is, I have to consider that when you say I want to continue to depose her. And the big arm movements. He has not made one note. The entire time your attorney is has been speaking, not one note. Understood, understood, Judge. Um, if the court so pleases, either way. But I, I understand your ruling. If you want to overturn the ruling allowing your deposition, that's if the court so pleases. That's your prerogative. I felt well, it's not my prerogative. It's it's my discretion because it's granted to the court. Right. It's not my prerogative. It's my discretion. <laughs> Oh my God, he has to correct him on literally everything. Everything. He can't let anything go. Nothing. Nothing. Oh He's going back to the memorandum. He's like, let me pull out this other page of yours that I hate. Which is 12130. <laughs> Remember, he's not done any of this to Silverman. 2D. Nope. Before, Nothing. At any time. On motion of party, deponent, or upon, or upon showing that the exam is being conducted in bad faith or in such a manner as to unreasonably annoy, embarrass, or oppress the deponent. How about setting a depo that doesn't comport, comport with and comply with 12.310B4, rendering it a, making it a video depo when it's not in compliance with the video depo rule, and then having it published on the internet in a case of cyber stalking that's now gone on since September, how is that not the consequences of now disclosing that video on YouTube internet? Dun, that dun, dun. In a manner that might be considered unreasonably annoying, oh. or unreasonably embarrassing, or oppressing the deponent. Holy when shit. I want to have to deny I'm it. Wait, 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 what? I want to know how I can embarrass somebody else when all I'm doing is showing what they did themselves. The only person that can embarrass <laughs> me is me. Right. How, how, how do you embarrass her 
by showing her own words. How? Oh my God, this is so true. Uh, Jim Dare, thanks for the super chat, says, shut up and answer me. <laughs> <Judge Detoss. laughs> He's like a scorned woman. He is. He is, he is so emotional. He, this is the other thing. You're not supposed to be emotional. There's something called judicial temperament, right? Like a judge is supposed to have a certain temperament that he can control his emotions because he has to be in charge of a courtroom that's filled with people who may be very high on the emotion scale because some wrong has been done and people are upset and angry. And the judge is supposed to be the guy or the woman in the middle going, everybody calm down. The, the judge is the de-escalator. This dude is an escalator. He is like, we're go we're going to be high conflict in my courtroom because I'm the one making the conflict. In Judge Carroll's in the Kowalski case, I've I have so much respect for that man because when he would get hot under the collar, you could tell that it was coming, but then he would go, I need a break. And he would recess, go into his office, and I don't know, break shit. I don't know what he did. Throw plates at the wall, hit, the, maybe he had a punching bag. I don't know. But then when he came back to the courtroom, he was ready to talk and be normal and not take it out on the attorneys. This guy is like showing it to the, does he know he's on camera? I think he's so used, I, I made a point of this at one point. He's so used to living in his own little bubble of like, you know, a few hundred people he forgets that there's an entire world out there because he was, I mean, I think he says in his, um, uh, the, the video that he promotes himself running for judge. Have you seen that video, Megan? <clears throat> it's on his channel. I'm not sure. It's like uh, a one I'm minute not... promotion video. And there was a parody. Oh, have you not, have you not seen the parody? I don't think so. Oh, let me, oh, you're going to die. You, you guys. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yeah, one of the funniest things yeah, is let's... I found. In the middle of the night, I found his YouTube channel as he's attacking a Oh, YouTuber. shut up. He has a YouTube channel. Yes. Just, and oh one my of God. my videos, I call him out and I say, Judge DeThomasis tried to use YouTube to actually get elected, which he failed. I'm going to use YouTube to make sure he never gets real. Oh, now it makes sense. He hates your YouTube channel because he's a failure on YouTube. It all comes together. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay watch watch this this is the parody this is not the this is like the original oh no did we lose larry oh, you froze uh, oh no larry I, froze did i just glitch in my back yeah no your your camera's glitched but i, hear I don't know you if now. you guys can still hear me or larry see me. glitching happens the older we, we can get hear you. normal <laughs> don't worry about it okay <laughs> We can we can hear you and see you. You're back. Okay, okay go ahead. Cool. All right. So th th this is the, the the all the video is his original video from his channel, but the voice is different. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this shit. <laughs> this is funny. Hello, I'm Craig D. Thomasis, and I'm running for Levy County's court judge. I've been a resident of Levy County for 53 years. And I want to serve you, the people, I'm not going to lie here when I say my resume has been outstanding. Once served as a personal bodyguard in the Secret Service for George Washington Sr. I was the second man on the moon after losing the perfect game to Neil Armstrong. I was the man who gave President Abraham Lincoln the idea to free the slaves. Uh, as you can see, I'm a well-trusted and respectable guy. I'm the man you can all trust to ensure no truths being told here in the courtroom. I am fair, honest, and a role model for all those who meet me. Is the microphone off? Yes. Great. These meth head residents will believe anything. Political advertisement paid for and approved by Craig DeThomasis for Levy County Judge. How did they do that with a voice AI? How did it's they get be. it? It's, it's got to be. Just like him. God, AI is terrible. That was the man who gave Lincoln the idea to free the slaves. The, slaves. <laughs> the only thing it's missing is Mark Feather. Your co-counsel, co Mark, Mark Feather. Feather. <laughs> In 15 minutes. Mark Feather is the reason why I don't sleep at night. Mark Feather. Oh, this guy, this guy. Oh, God, that was fantastic, Larry. Why should I allow it to be continued? Well, that's a different question because of what happened in the deposition, Judge. All right. So let's let's that. Well, then let's start with 
do you agree or disagree that the Wait. notice of the deposition that was taken I forgot why by video there was an interruption as opposed to just audio was proper or improper it was technically in compliance it said video deposition the court reporter's name was listed on there i guess hyper technically it didn't have it didn't say videographer instead of court reporter but it clearly said notice of video deposition it it gave the it gave the address the only thing it didn't say was stenographer or videographer it just said court so reporter. the hyper technical oh, requirements of 12.31 you put in before have not been complied with that's correct so the notice was inadequate the result of that is that you got video footage for your client to publish and to make money on. Oh my God. Oh my God. No, because it's waived. It's waived. We've already been Absolutely. over this. And now, now it makes sense, Megan. You made it a great point. I did, I did not realize this. You're absolutely right. What every time he says, you know, and, and Jeremy's making money on it, I tried to make money on YouTube and I failed and I don't like that he's successful. Yep. Yep. He's got a YouTube channel. Why did he start a YouTube channel? It wasn't so it could be a, a failure. I he, didn't start a YouTube channel to be stalked by these individuals either, just so we're clear. <laughs> right. Well, or to spend 80000 with no end in sight in court right now. He's upset that he's a failed YouTuber. Judge DeThomas is a failed YouTuber who's upset with someone who's successful at it. And he's really butthurt Does about anybody it. Anybody have the link? Sorry to to Greg to Thomas's uh, YouTube uh, channel, or like, how do I find him? I want to find him. Sorry, that's a good question. Can you just search his name on YouTube and it comes up? Well, not anymore because so many videos have been made on him. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But oh, the meme is done. Somebody did a meme. Let me see. Is there a good meme? Greg for judge. Thank you. Oh, Larry, you're being accused of being a member of the Illuminati, unfortunately. Oh, hell yeah. I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> Illuminati hand signs. That's how you froze. That was your frozen face. Uh... <laughs> Carol gone. Take me away. Of all the fr the freeze faces, this one was really fantastic, Larry. I got to tell you, that was that was really good. All right, nice. you're gonna get a bunch of subs. Craig, Craig. wait, 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 Craig. Oh, there it is. Wait, wait, let me. Pull. One sixty-five. You got At it, Craig. Got it? Yep, for judge. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think there's a space in between Craig and four. Oh my lord. Oh, all right. Let's. Is it one sixty-five? What is after? It's Craig. The number four judge wait, one. Here you go. 165. Yeah, Craig Ford Judge 165. 165. He's so small, I can't find him. That's what she said. <laughs> Wait, well, I, have a, I have a button for that. Wait, I have a button. That's what she I'm just saying. <laughs> Craig probably has a small driveway and a small pipe. That's true what He's got five that's videos. Really okay, so here's the original. Hard. Extra large and extra hard. Oh, God. Extra large. Here it is. Here it is. I want to... There we go. This is his YouTube channel. So he's got this is the actual video. This is Craig the Thomas's for Judge five years ago. This is the oh original. God. Hello. Which he lost the election to one of his students. Oh, County Court. <laughs> I've been a resident of Alachua County for 42 years. Throughout <laughs> that time, it has been my privilege to serve the members of our community in their time of need. As an attorney, I've advocated for the rights of individuals and have advocated for justice on their behalf. As a legal educator, I've impressed upon the next generation of young lawyers their need to dedicate themselves to professionalism, ethics, and respect for the rule of law. All the things you are not doing, Judge. As a volunteer, I've served the needs of our community, raising money for veterans of the armed forces, oh, the serving on board of directors to help the, the needy soldiers. children of our community, and to help others in their time of so need. Tacky. I'm proud to have earned oh, to help others? many colleagues of my profession, and to have earned the endorsements of many organizations who are likewise committed to serving the needs of the members of our community. I hope to earn your vote and serve as the next Alachua County Court Judge. Political advertisement paid for and approved well, by Craig All the members of his Alachua community, unless you're all Jeremy, three of them. unless you're Jeremy and George and you have a YouTube channel that he's jealous of. And oh my God, they did it. They did it. Look at but this. There are testimonials. What? <laughs> Oh. 
<laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. We four hours which one? later. Which one? Wait, four let's hours. ask the chat. Which one? <laughs> Fifteen. <laughs> four hours yeah, later. Another one. <laughs> another one right here. Look at the feathers. <laughs> Oh my god. This is so good. It's raining oh, feathers. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my it's god. raining feathers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's raining feathers. All right, from let's get the sky. We'll never get through this. <laughs> I have a life to live, but I this is too good. No, I'm sorry. You can drop out anytime you need no, to. I We're don't in... care. I can't. I don't want to. <laughs> I know it's so funny. All right, we'll try to we'll try to be like judge, like the judge, like grudge judge when he's listening to Mr. Silverman, and we'll try to buckle it up, right? I didn't do it for that reason. I did it here to show you exactly. We have a queued up here to show you what. And then you want to disseminate it in court? Oh! Portion of the video. <laughs> wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! This court is the place to disseminate it. What? Where else are they going to put the deposition was literally to be played in court to be used in your case. What do you mean, judge? You're oh, now you want to disseminate it in court? <laughs> no, this is a FISA court now. This is a star chamber. It's a star chamber. The public's not allowed to know what's going on in this court. It's a closed court. We're, we're having a closed court now because you're going to disseminate it in court. What? Yes, judge. Yes, judge. Shocking goes. Yes, judge. Seven or eight different objections. Well, excuse me. I mean, we we also called during during the deposition, if you recall, judge, and there was problems right from the beginning of this deposition. Um, it, seven hours. If there were three hours of questioning, I'd be amazed. Okay, so let, let's say let's say at least three hours were fruitful, despite the fact that your 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 co counsel needed fifteen minutes to conclude. They have just fifteen a judge. minutes. I you on that. Really did, oh. but after that, the representation was made. She made another filing on the fourth, which was sufficient to meet her burden under the was clear and strong or strong and clear evidence, which you take as truthful. Uh, that Spade was the straw that lawyer, the like back that issued the temporary injunction. What? The what he's talking about is the additional filing is the one stating that my lawyer tried to pay her off, which is a lie. Right. Junction. Well, not really. Not really. No. And maybe Mr. Hales needs to be aware of this law also. As a matter of law, the court has to take what's pled in this petition or supplemental petition is true. When a petition results in entry of a temporary injunction with the return hearing, that means there's been adequate information contained within that petition to establish the imminent threat. Meanwhile, if you're cross-examining Jeremy's attorney and trying yeah. to shift the burden from Lynette to Jeremy. He's being co-counsel to the plaintiff. He's yes. litigating from the bench. This yeah. entire argument is litigating from the bench. He's being co-counsel. This is... I. It's unreal. Is, it's unreal. Is, yeah. This is absolutely crossed beyond bias and now has raised the level of impeachment. I'm telling... I'm serious. This guy needs to go. This is not a judge who is now doing you see now, now we're on board, Megan. See, because I was I was you the, the, when we when you started the stream, when I joined, you're like we need to remove him from this case. Now, we, you, I think we both agree. He he cannot be on the bench. No, this he can't be on the bench. Against. He cannot be on the bench. Any judge who litigates a case like this as a lawyer instead of as a judge needs to go. His He's only right. job, his only job is to keep his mouth shut. Listen call balls and strikes and make a call. That's it. Like make, make a ruling. His order, by the way, I ha I showed in, I was talking about on the, on Fox Den Daily, the podcast, which you can go download on Amazon, Spotify, Apple. Today I showed, I talked about the Kowalski. There was an order in the Kowalski case. Judge Carroll issued an order. Uh, let me show you. Well, I I'll just tell you, it was this long, this long. This was Judge Carroll's order today. It took this much space on a piece of paper. That is all that he needs. And that's very common, by the way, because orders are supposed to be direct and simple to understand. If you're droning on, that is literally can be, and in this case is the definition of bias. Oh, his order that he put in uh, telling them why he wasn't, you know, whatever the 
answer to the second motion to recuse. His order about that, about not stepping down, it was what double spaced, or, and, sorry, single spaced, single spaced, single spaced, 7,000 words. Oh my God, my editor, I would be fired if I turned in something that was 7,000 words, first of all. Like no one can read that with any attention span. Like you can't read past uh, two, th like 1,500 words really. And that's even pushing it. The average attention span is 500 words. This dude wrote a 7,000 word essay on why he shouldn't recuse himself. I Outrageous. It's out. The whole thing is outrageous. He's a shitty judge. Shitty judge. Well, emphasis okay. on Judge Dumb Thomas. So. Dumb Thomas, yes, Judge that's, Dumb that's, Thomas. Kind of fits where you're going. I'm just. You know. Hey, for the eight thousand of you who are in the chat right now, and if you have not hit the like button, what's wrong with you? Are your thumbs broken? Like this video. I, Comment below. Like subscribe it. to Megan's channel. Come on. Subscribe and to the Hales. Subscribe to me. Let's go. Subscribe to all of us. Make sure. I think they're all subscribed to the Hales for sure. Uh, but yeah, let's get that going because we need more likes. More likes means there's a sufficient case to be resolved and adjudicated by the court, but the element of imminent, you can conclude, was not in the petition itself, the initial one in September, was not in the first supplemental petition, and only became adequate, legally adequate, addressing the issue of imminence in the what was the second supplemental petition. So the issuance of the temporary injunction was the result of the finding that the allegations in the supplemental petition when taken as a whole with the previous supplement and the previous petition established imminent risk. And, and thus the court had no choice because I have to accept it as, as true and, and, and so on. So but not subject to cross-examination yet at that point or not correct. So it's taken as true without any cross-examination. Right. That's why we're going to have, we're going to have a contested hearing with full due process post a multi-hour deposition that was not in conformity with the rule that now is on video broadcast for the entire world to see that's caused reasonable, reasonably caused embarrassment, humiliation, potential danger, at least there's allegations. Oh, the whole world has so, seen a, a public a public trial? The whole world? Uh-oh, I just lost my place. That's okay. He's basically saying the same thing over and over again. We'll just go forward as far as I think uh, we were. Uh, well, probably we all could, but the consequences... We all could what? And, and <laughs> Take a break? Not another day, and, I, and I'm just in abundance of caution needing a full day for this till March 1, and, and that's that's just too far out. So I, I, can, think make, I can make... March one work, Your Honor. Um, well, probably we all could, but the consequences of time that are reasonably expected based on the negative consequences to the fair administration of justice, the orderly administration of justice, the compliance with rules promulgated by the Florida Supreme Court and the Chief Judge of the Eighth Circuit being violated, the court has concerns about the length of time and what might happen between now and then. It would be. And I certainly understand the court's concerns, as I indicated in an email to Ms. Cummings, Chief Judge Mosley's JA, on which Mr. Shaka was copied. I can't be here next Monday for that hearing. Chief Judge Mosley indicated that neither my client nor I need to be here. And quite frankly, we don't have a dog in that fight. That's between the courts and Mr. Feather. Um, I will hopefully think those order to show cause proceedings have impressed upon counsel the need to protect and comply with uh, the videos in accordance with the administrative order. Uh, certainly, if depositions go forward in this case, is he taking of, notes again? Who the depositions are of, pen poised to impose a protective order barring any publication. Uh, That's period, a good observation, uh, Megan. In accordance with the rule. Look, he's taking uh, notes. Uh, so I think we could address it there. Um, he I just clicked his pen. I can make the morning of the fifth. Anytime he goes, Silverman talks, uh, that he's every writing. time. Every time Silverman talks, he's writing. He's taking. Is he taking orders from Silverman? <laughs> Who's the real judge in this courtroom? Do we have? Did we switch roles? Silverman is now the judge, and Judge De Thomasis is the uh, uh, Lynette's attorney. Look at this! Damn it to hell! Damn it to hell! I am the law. <laughs> God, that's good. Yeah, I mean, interesting. MG Law just made the comment too that this the plaintiff has two attorneys in this case, and one of them just happens to wear a black robe. It's a fantastic uh, observation. Yeah. 
Look at how he picks up the pen every time Silverman talks. He literally picked up a pen and he's quiet. We should get him a feather pen. Yeah, we should get him a feather pen. <laughs> yeah. get him a oh, I'll be right back. When this case is over, you need to send him a gift and it should be a feather pen. <laughs> it's going to be engraved. Mark Father! <laughs> it's going to be engraved. You can only use this pen for 15 minutes and it's going to be a feather quill. <laughs> yeah. It self destructs in 15 oh. minutes. Oh my God. That's likely too soon to get everything accomplished. That basically gives us a week to get the depositions done. And I will certainly endeavor to do that, though it does look like it will have to be in the evenings or um, on the weekend uh, to get those depositions done. It was at done. 9 a.m. Alternatively, if they're okay with the Megan. First, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you yes. have one. You have a feather pen. Can, you, can you, you know where I got that? this? You know where I got this? From I Mark. Believe this. I got, got this at Mark. the Vatican. This is from no the Vatican. No way. For real. That's so it, it cool. Comes, it comes with its own uh, ink. It's got its. Oh, that's ink. so cool. Oh, that's and you can, like, Is that put, holy? Ink? <gasps> that is so fabulous. It says. Uh, I'm jealous. Bistro blue or something. Oh, I'm very know. jealous of this. This is a fantastic looking pen, Larry. This is a great pen set. <laughs> now, from now on, I want all the memes to have a feather pen in Judge's hand. Okay? <laughs> all the memes going forward, he needs to be holding a feather pen. Okay? Just letting you know, those are the new rules, the new meme rules at the meme farm. Get back to work. Nose is back in your memes. Here we go. I can make that work as well, and that will give both sides plenty of opportunity to conduct a discovery, hopefully... Mr. Hale's side of the aisle has gotten the message regarding the need to safeguard witness testimony information. Oh, you think I he's think gotten the message? By moving <laughs> yeah, I safeguarded it by putting it out on YouTube. Very much. I actually have. <laughs> I would say, I would oh, say, I would say that he absolutely got the message uh, that the judge was not happy about about the deposition being released. Uh, the remember, deposition he never said don't release. I apologize. You just reminded me. So remember, Jeremy had the question earlier, and it wasn't really a question. It was more of a statement uh, of what safeguarding means. The, the safeguarding rule, it, I, I finally, it, it all came to me, and my source also kind of jarred my memory because this is like, come on, Larry, work your lawyer brain sometimes. Uh, it's been a long week. That's my, and, and my week started Thursday when I had the hails on and the red, like, so my, my, I had no weekend. My, my Monday was my Thursday. Anyway, so, <clears throat> Safeguarding means that the lawyer that is in possession or the party that requests the evidence from the court that are in possession, their job is to make sure that it doesn't get destroyed. That's safeguarding. It's not that you have to protect it, put it under a firewall, and if it's given to somebody, now you're liable. I mean, you could be. It depends, but not in this case. Safeguarding means if you're the one who requested it and you may have you may be in possession of the only copy and you accidentally even destroy it, you are responsible because you are uh, given the responsibility of safeguarding, make sure that the evidence does not get destroyed. That's what safeguarding means. And he's taking it and again, butchering the legality and turning it on its face and turning it into like urban dictionary definition of, I promise I will not give it to anyone as long as I live. I will safeguard the information. I will take it to the grave. That's not what that means in the legal terms. In legal right, It doesn't mean censorship. No. The word it doesn't mean censorship. It means not losing it for record of for the court. Yes. And where is the safest place to make sure it never gets lost? The public. The internet. Where a bunch of, where a bunch of people will download it and then everyone will have a copy. Then for sure it won't get lost. For sure it won't get lost. Yeah. God, this guy. In the point which it's not life threatening. I'll well, just change it. Um, um. Um, I should have. I just thought of a new drinking game. We should have been drinking every time he says feather <laughs> <laughs> or 15 minutes. All right, so we got feather, 15 minutes. What else? Oh, Safeguarding. <laughs> Administration of justice. <laughs> we need a bingo card. More inclined to do the February 9 if you could otherwise accommodate that day. Okay, I just, I would, I can just ask this other judge, Cheeseman is her name. Um, Okay, they can, re they can reach out to this court. If we can reschedule it. So, but if absent that judge, I just know this is a 17 case. I don't think she's gonna. Here's the other issue that 
your court, your client needs to be aware of from the court's perspective and consistent with the statutory provisions that mandate upon continuance um, for good cause, the terms of the temporary injunction will remain in effect. Can I be heard on that, Judge? Sure. So, we, sure, he says. About the totality of the circumstances, <laughs> each pleading, each petition has its say 50 pages the first time in September, 334 pages in October. Each time it's weighing, it's weighing. The December 4th one, as you said, you know, the cumulative effect was it, the barrier, her burden of proof was reached in order to affect, which I think it's strong and clear evidence. Not taking notes on, on the issue of imminent, imminent. which okay. was, which was okay. not but what's sufficient. happened, that, but that was subject, not still subject to cross-examination. She's been asked questions under oath and she's taken the fifth. Uh, and I think at that point, there's negative inference to make. And please judge, I, 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 I this is important because yeah. now I think at least that plus the fact that a continuance was effectively done by not allowing the depositions that you ordered, not just her, Mr. Cook on the 17th, no show. I think now you have to at least take the fact that she took the fifth, the substantive question say, maybe that lowers it so that we don't reach the burden of imminent and, and the evidence, her burden has not been met. Um, yeah, but since that time, so then part of the nature of the initial complaint to be adjudicated by the court is the dissemination publicly by the way, Shockett's body language, he's covering his genitalia. He has been doing that since he stood up. He is in fear of getting kicked in the balls by this judge. And it's very clear. It's it's an unconscious, uh, this is something that body language experts notice all the time. If you're covering your private parts, especially if you're male and you're covering that area, it means you're in fear, you're, you're, you're feeling you know, not very confident, you're feeling like you're about to get attacked. Um, and I just think it's interesting that his entire body language throughout this entire process has been to fold his hands over his balls. Like, please don't, <laughs> please don't kick me again. Please don't kick me again. Jeez. Dude, observation, that, Megan. Let me add an observation that, to that too, okay? Um, it takes a man with very big balls and, and I mean that in the most honorable and respectful way to represent a YouTuber who will relentlessly fight for his freedom of speech. No, you know, absolutely. But he I, knows he's in the lion's that. den. He's in the lion's den right now. He is facing a lion who is want, who wants to eat him. So his, his, his body length, his body is like caving in and like, trying to protect himself from this because it's been an all out assault on this man. It's not his fault. It's the judge's fault. The yeah, judge absolutely. is literally. Judge. And I bet going through his mind, like he's trying, Larry, you can attest to this when you're in court yeah. and you're facing a judge like this. If you've ever faced a judge like this, everything you planned on arguing today is pretty much gone out of your mind because he's turned the tables on you. And now you're in a fight for your life. Now he's in this fight for his life about, oh, my God, he hates my client. He hates me. What am I going to do? So he's trying to pull things from places that he didn't count on, things that he didn't count on arguing today. So what if you, he's. What yeah, you did go ahead. notice, sorry, what you did notice is when you said that, I actually had a memory in my mind of it and you didn't catch this, but I just caught myself doing it. I held my breath. I stopped breathing for like 10 seconds because my, you know, my visual in my head, I remembered my moment of when it happened to me. So my most popular uh, moment that I had was in front of this judge. Let me show you guys. I shared it on my channel. It's a 60 second short. It's been made into a short now. This one has been seen 17 million times. Has Holy over crap. half a million uh, likes. Lawyer goes off on judge. Let me see if I can make it bigger. <clears throat> I, so I don't you think had I can. this actually happen on on video. I love. Yeah. This. Oh, that's me. Yeah, March second, twenty twenty. Literally two weeks before the world shut down. Oh, I'm gonna love this. Oh, wait, let me. Uh, audio. Oh, it's good. It's I, good. Yeah, he Jeremy is. You must good. follow the law. The law says Mr. you Ford. must stay proceedings. Okay, and they have. We're rolling to see if we get an answer. What would you, you like? You cannot to roll the case. You don't have jurisdiction to roll the case. That's exactly okay. so what I'm what, saying. So what are you asking me to do? You I am asking for you, for you to wait until the answer is received downstairs in the district clerk's office. 
they will distribute a copy of Chief Justice Minton's order to your honor and to my office. Once we have each have a copy, we will know what to do. Do we have a special judge or do you regain jurisdiction? You cannot hold it. I my can't. client, our experts, his police officers, to come to court every single day at one o'clock. It just doesn't work that way. The law is clear. You must this is and this not was, how anything works, Judge. Larry, you're such a boss. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take the compliment. But it, it, the real, this was me trying to recuse the judge. And the, the TLDR version is this. I filed a motion to recuse. She denied it. We appealed it to the Supremes. We have chief, You guys have Mosley. We have Minton. So our Chief Justice Minton said, uh, it, it, while it was pending, while it was pending before him, there was a beautiful case, one of my favorite cases to pronounce. It's a Shafa Zeta versus Shafa Zeta. It's a divorce case. It's a husband and wife trying to divorce each other and da 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 da, da. And in that case, there was a moment when the, they thought the judge was not being fair and they wanted to recuse him or her. And the problem is when a judge denies the motion to recuse and you appeal to your Supremes uh, of the state, please help me remove this judge. They're not listening in that period. The moment that your motion goes out to the moment that the judge rules yay or nay, the judge on the case loses jurisdiction. Like it actually, that's what the case says. You do not have jurisdiction. And I try to explain it to her in the simplest terms. Like, what do you not understand? This is obviously a 60 second clip of an eight minute actual full hearing, which is also on my channel. And it, it, I try to explain to her, like, what, what is so difficult? And she's like, well, I'm not being difficult. I'm just going to call you. So you're going to come in on Monday at 1.30, on Tuesday at 1.30, and, not, and Wednesday at 1.30, and Thursday at 1.30 until we get a response. And I'm like, judge, you can't, like, you literally, as you're sitting from the bench, the words coming out of your mouth have no power. And she could not, like, understand it. She's much better now. I, I, I have a very good working relationship with the judge today. I mean, this was four years ago, almost to the day. And... This this was just my way of, of explaining, and she, because she refused to listen, I had to go up in arms. And there's that there's one moment, and you could even see it in that clip, where I noticed the deputy kind of like shifted towards me a little bit, and you can see me going like, <laughs> and like I I, I kind of move my hands like because I'm not being confrontational. I swear I'm talking right. about the clerk downstairs, you know. But he got the, nervous. I, body language like gave me away because I, I really was not nervous, but psychologically, subconsciously, my mind was alert. Like there's danger coming, right? That's what I think this is. That's, that's exactly that's why. What exactly. this is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, one of my locals members, Rosalind, it is her birthday today. Happy birthday, Rosalind. And thanks for making memes on your birthday and being Happy in the birthday. meme the meme slave farm, which is what they're calling it now. They're in a meme dungeon. Thank you for, for making the, the monkey meme. with the chain. I you am memeing fun. all day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Lucy was funny uh, that time talking about the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> documentation, videography, whatever it is. Oh, he's still talking about the videographer. She's claiming is causing uh, her substantial emotional distress has to be decided by the court at some point when i get all the evidence right but bud love says that you can still use their name you can yep. do that as long as you don't have unprotected speech that's you know insightful yeah, I, fighting I'm the, words and i'm the one that that not only narrowly tailored it he didn't even let him to explain bud love which by the way i'm going to read that on this program at some point not tonight but the bud love decision is very interesting i read really? it the other day and it answers all of the questions that we had about this case. Like, hey, he can't do this. And Bud Love is, Bud Love is like, yep, nope, he can't. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. nobody, Bud Love is in a higher appellate court decision that said you, it is not cyber stalking to continue talking about a person as long as you're not using uh, what's considered to be illegal speech, which is threats of violence, incitement to violence, that sort of thing. Just telling people about your neighbor and these kinds of issues that you're having is certainly not. Nothing wrong uh, with that. Yeah. No. And when Megan says he can't do that based off of Bud Love, Megan's talking about Judge to Thomas's. Right. Right. Yeah. The judge. He cannot restrict your speech in the way that he has. Before yes. the Bud Love decision, the court then in conformity with that decision modified it again to your, right. for your client's benefit in conformity with the law benefit it's a, it's it took another, away my constitutional another, another right balancing things which is two more weeks of your client having the temporary injunction but what i'm saying is what two more weeks of you not being able to drive on the public road in front of your house 
Correct. How many week, How many weeks has it been since you've been able to use the public road? Since December 4th, 2020. I'm sorry. That's obscene. It's obscene. And, and, and why is that injunction in place? Because you might drive at a rate of a certain rate of speed. I don't know. What's the speed limit on your road? 25. 25. So this is to avoid you driving at 25 miles an hour past her driveway. But if they are at the post office, I can drive by no problem. If they're at Walmart, I can drive by no problem. So you're supposed to, so you're supposed to stalk them. You're supposed to stalk them to find out when they're not at home. So you can use your road. They're, They're encouraging you to stalk them. So you know where they are at all hours of the day so that that's the time you can use the road. That's ridiculous. So I can't drive by their property, but across the street is all road frontage of my property. I can't even drive by my property. It's absurd. But I can drive by them anywhere else in the world. And he's like, eh, two more weeks. (laughs) It's fine. Mark Feather! (laughs) What's happened since entry of this injunction? Here's the totality of the circumstances. Okay. On November 29th. School us, Judge. What is it? What are the, to- what's the totality? Counsel, oh, here we go again. Said, Mark Feather. The court said, I will accommodate the litigants. I will cancel what I have. We can come back at 9 in the morning. That was 5 p.m. the day before. Your co-counsel said the following, quote, <laughs> this was at 11... 11- this is on 1129. Oh my God. He's, got He's got quotes of Mark Feathers written down. Your co counsel, Mark Feathers, said, and I quote. And he's got it ready to go. Holy crap. 53 and 47 seconds. No, Your Honor, Mr. Hales is having to address matters in Ohio court related to this situation. He has to be there tomorrow morning. That's what was represented. That's what gained your client a continuance. Stop, 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 stop right there. He, that was he a doesn't misrepresent- finish the quote. He doesn't finish the quote. He fly. He has a flight out. So my flight was already booked tomorrow morning. Okay. At this point, my flight is booked. I'm headed to Ohio and I'm dealing with the court issues in Ohio. Nobody said, Mark Feather never said there was a hearing. Okay. Nobody said he says the Thomas's pauses in court to deal with Jeremy has to be in Ohio to deal with these court issues, which is exactly what I had to do. My flight was already booked the day that it was booked. And then the, I fly that day, the next day I go and I get everything notarized and I file for contempt of court in Ohio with the court issues. Everything Mark Feather said was truth. And he was presented with all documentation of that proof and this man can't get it out of his head the hearing wasn't that day and then he tells Lynette who says my mother died who isn't dead oh well if you just bring me a gas receipt or something but he just can't get Mark Feather out of his head he's determined to to turn turn this into the Mark Feather show uh I have an important announcement Chicago pizza has arrived. I'm very excited about this. I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited because I haven't had Chicago pizza in a while. Presentation because on 12, six at one 33 and 49 seconds through one 43 and 45 seconds, current counsel, Mr. Shockett yourself and questioning of Mr. Hales on a compliance issue established that he did not have a court appearance the following morning. That in fact, he went to Ohio to sign documents two days later in his lawyer's office. Court issues. That's that's the first continuance gained on misrepresentations to this court and less than candid representation. At least I didn't say my mother died. (laughs) This is also true. (laughs) 12-1-556, respondent's second motion to continue by Mr. Feather, which was inadequately pled, was filed at the last minute, did nothing to establish that it was something that arose between him agreeing to the date of 12-6 and the date he, never he filed agreed. his second motion to continue. The judge adjourned before he, he could did even nothing to say that something- Right, he didn't even give him a chance. Didn't even give him a chance. Arose 
unexpectedly that caused him not to be available. And it resulted in then you filing a notice of appearance and saying 24 hours and 20 minutes earlier, I need a continuance because I can't possibly be prepared, which the court again accommodated for Mr. Hales. And Mr. Hales, as I mentioned earlier, hired an attorney he knew could not be prepared. He knew he had a calendar conflict or at least time conflict to be prepared adequately. And he was accommodated. I've got no regrets about that decision. Is it conformity no, he with the law? No, he did not regret about due process and, and depositions. I, oh, I it makes me upset. He regrets due process. He regrets depositions. He regrets allowing due process in the court. It's ridiculous. I've never heard of anything like this. I've never heard a judge say <clears throat> things like this. I'm, I'm just waiting for him to, to find a way to somehow weave in a violation of the third amendment against Jeremy. Like you must quarter these troops at the end of day today. And if you're not quartering troops in your home by 5 PM Eastern, you're in trouble, mister. You're in violation of my court order and you will be fined and jailed. Quarter these soldiers. Yes. Within 15 minutes. <laughs> Mark Bella. <laughs> Oh you my remember God. Star Trek? You remember Star Trek when Captain Kirk and Khan, his <laughs> arch nemesis, and, and Captain Kirk's like, Khan! <laughs> the nemesis would be, Mark Feather! <laughs> oh my God. You guys are amazing. <laughs> I'm dying. All five. Third motion to continue of the respondent. I think that's mine, Judge. That was yours. Yeah. Okay, that was right. That, so they, they, ah. they were like three days apart. We, we heard it on so. <laughs> so wait, he's, he's trying to blame the, the respondent for another, um, you know, rescheduling. And Silverman has to pop in and go, uh, that was mine, right? <laughs> God. What else can I blame on his lawyer? Uh, Your Honor, that's my fault. Uh, it doesn't matter. We'll blame him. Yeah, anyway. And then he's like, oh, well, right. That was, it was fine. It was, it's fine that you did it. Oh shit! I did it again. This is so small. Damn it! All right, let's pretend we're way further. Publicly. We're way further ahead than we were. With the rules on posting or filing. I don't care. Needs to be concluded. By Basically, February he two. says I'm not allowed to post As anything. Where were we? Not anything with court anymore. He puts a. He basically puts a gag order on me, and I keep posting and talking about court. <sighs> Right, is that is the gag order written? Um, that's a good, good question. I don't remember. You know, so much. So. There's been so much. We've like, never gotten a copy of anything in writing. I mean, he says it. He says I'm not allowed. Let me ask my I, source. And I just, I, um, he can't take away my First Amendment right. It's protected speech. He's not God. Nor is he no. one of our forefathers of our country. Most well, of the time, he did tell Abraham Lincoln to free the slaves, so <laughs> he gets credit for that. He goes, he's been around a while. Well, okay, so gag orders are mostly unconstitutional. There are some cases in which right. you could say they were justified, but in most cases, they are not justified. Um, and in this case, there is no reason to gag you about anything. I don't know where we were because my stupid mouse keeps hitting the back button. Uh, but we'll see if, where we're at here. To some extent. My source says, kind of to answer that question, Jeremy, my source says that he refuses to sign it. I think there is an order in the file, but it's not signed. If and I'm this correctly. Under the sequestration and stating that that all witnesses. So he, so Silverman goes, oh, we want se se sequestration. Am I saying that right? I'm not saying yes. that right. And and that no witnesses are allowed to talk about anything or and, and by by me sharing what's going on in court now what they're going to try and do is throw all my witnesses out that are going to tell the truth about Lynette. That's what they're attempting to do. I noticed that he didn't seem to have that same order for her witnesses. Exactly. Yeah, crazy. All right, I think this is sort of where we were. By both counsel in, in person. Um, or if they intend to call this witness, I am going to, I'm not arguing with the court, but in light of this new information, I am going to renew my request that the court consider placing this on March 1st. I would also ask, I 
would want to depose an expert witness. Oh, I think we got past that. Uh, we don't have time. So for, what just uh, happened is is Randy case. just dropped a bomb in the court and said that we have a conflict. We have an expert witness coming. It is the nation's number one forensic handwriting expert who has already written a full report stating that Lynette is the author of all these signs. There were multiple signs that were set up all over Otter Creek that said that Jeremy Hales is the Levy County from Ohio rapist. One even goes so far to say he raped my daughter. Now, let's clarify, she never won, never, ever, ever contacted Levy County Sheriff to report this rape. We have a defamation suit. And remember, I said all of these all of these things, she kept running back to the courthouse and filing motions saying, Jeremy talked about me on his video. He broke the injunction. Jeremy did this. Well, our forensic handwriting expert took every single motion she wrote and then compared it to these signs and said, 100%, absolutely, she wrote these signs. And they are just now finding out it's a conflict on the date and she is coming to testify. And now they're, now you're going to start seeing Lynette whispering and she's like, they're, I didn't write those signs. Nobody said anything about the signs. And she starts to whisper to Brent and then Silver Joshua. Oh, that's funny. All this stuff. Wow. It's, it's insane. Jeffrey says no. that I'm, I'm further back. If I use the projector legs, we were right here. Should we do it or should we just stay where we are? Because I feel like we're never going to get through this if we go back. I got you Did up I to miss, speed. I didn't miss anything big, right? We, we, I got we, you up to speed. All right, perfect. We'll just keep going from here. Things of that nature. So I'll be asking the court moving over tennis this morning to require that any written work product that they intend to rely upon be turned over to my office no more than 48 hours before, no less than 48 hours before any deposition in the case. Obviously, we'd have to get with Mr. Shockett's office to schedule that and take into consideration the expert's calendar as well. Um, but again, if I keep coming back to, you know, I wasn't here. He's writing, the, the court judge is writing and very quiet. 15 minutes again. To case. I don't know how you include an expert in that. But with that said, if they are announcing their 15 minutes drink, witness, there's no pretrial order in this case. There's no witness disclosure. I do intend to depose her and I do wish to have her information before me. She's available in my service. He showed me a text. By the way, he program. did not depose the expert However, witness. So we're clear. He would destroy him. Does continue to March 1st, our request. He declined to depose the witness? No, the he expert? says there he wants to depose the expert witness. He did not depose the expert witness. And the expert witness would chew him up and spit him out as it is anyway. Oh, I'm the only one that has been deposed on their side of things. How'd that go? Chewed him up and spit him out. And do you I can't have that tape? When do we I, get to see I, that? I can't share it yet. I'm under gag order. I'm not allowed to share it yet, but I can't. Gag wait. order? Is that a BDSM term, Jeremy? <laughs> Maybe the judge is into that. I wouldn't doubt it with him, but um, I'm not allowed to talk. I'm not allowed to talk about the specifics of my deposition, which is very clear. He made that clear verbally here in court, but um, I have it. I, well, we've, we videoed it. Here's what I will share with you because this was before the deposition. So he schedules the deposition at the Levy County courthouse. And then Randy, my lawyer actually schedules a zoom deposition at the same time to so that it's videoed because I want it. I want I want it all, right? And so uh we get to the Levy County Courthouse and Joshua sees me and he goes, "What? He's here?" And it finally hits him. Jeremy is going to destroy me on camera and he's filming it and he's going to share it. And he didn't think you were going to show up. To your he deposition? Thought coming, he thought I was coming on Zoom and not on purpose, which oh. I was. So I'm in person on Zoom being recorded, but you know, I'm in person oh. and recording on Zoom. Unreal. Unreal. Mm. I mean and, I, and his and his world just his world just crumbles. Like, what in the oh crap, I'm gonna be on what the hails. <laughs> <laughs> and there are I can't tell you how it all went. I mean, I haven't even I can't even tell her. I can't discuss any of this. I can't just we don't talk, we don't talk about you know all of this stuff. So but I can't wait to actually share it. When I we can't get to wait that. till that either. That'll be like Same. a really fun night. Hey, when you do uh, have us on, we want to watch it with you. Definitely. <laughs> and we'll provide fun. the best commentary too. Yeah. There is some funny, funny stuff.
I would love that. Same. My God. Plus, to keep the temporary effect will remain the same. I understand that the additional length of time may factor into the court's analysis, but I wanted to be clear on the record that my client would be asking that the temporary remain in effect. And I think for all the reasons the court has recited, um, which I think essentially comes down to unclean hands on the part of Mr. Hales and counsel, not counsel, Mr. Hales, as to how they've handled this process, uh, I think that extension of the temporary is appropriate, whether it's February 9th or March 1st. So, Mr. Shockey, you need a chance or a moment to discuss with Mr. Hales that if what you're asking for, in effect, is a continuance to March 1, given the expected unavailability of what you feel to be an essential witness for his case, the court would consider doing so, but it would, it would be subject to the third extended temporary injunction containing language similar to the, the second one. And instead of through February 9, it would be through March 1. I think it's funny. He says he's going to give you a moment to discuss this with your attorney. You mean, unlike last time when you yeah. just ended the hearing? <laughs> oh, court's adjourned. I just what, need to drive on my road. So I don't die? So oh, I do, pause go, right there. Pause right there. So I just what, need to drive on my road so I don't die. Okay, so I know it sounds funny, <laughs> but it's real. Okay, so we actually, he's making me go out to the major highway where there are massive accidents and people are dying. Weeks before this, I walk out of the post office. This is no joke. I'm getting hit in the face by vehicle pieces and there's a car flipping oh three God. times in the air. And if I would have been one oh foot out further, I would have been dead. Now, now, weeks after that, somebody else dies. There's a major accident. This is a major accident prone area. I and saw your I video. Don't want to die. And so mm -hmm. people are dying out here every month. And so what you hear me saying is, I just want to drive on my road so I don't die. So let me explain this to me. If you can drive on your road, you can avoid the highway? Yes. So yeah, that. So he's been forcing you to take this super dangerous road. Yes. And I've seen the videos that you've taken filming accidents on that road. Scary. I would be very angry if a judge did this to my husband. I would be angry as fuck. I'm sorry. Excuse my language. But like, I'd be so angry that there's this chance that you're now putting my loved one in danger for this woman who we still haven't had an evidentiary hearing. The judge has not heard the evidence what are we doing? What are we doing? Why can't he take that part of it out? Why can't he say, all right, everything else in the injunction stands, except he may drive on the road, but he can't stop in front of your house. How about that? You already said it, Megan. It's it's a Shakespeare. It's a butchered Shakespearean play. It's a soliloquy of Judge the Thomases. Look at this. This is where he's making me drive. This is another major accident. So this is where somebody another major accident and he's making me drive through this intersection every time i go in between my two pieces of property and every week and it seems like every week and that may be a bit of an exaggeration based on week but every month definitely every month there is a major major accident and at one point i don't remember if this hearing or another one the thomas says to me he goes well you're a safe driver aren't you as if my oh driving my habits have to do with anything of those around me. I have temporary protect, or excuse me, I have civil protection orders permanent on unsafe people that are across the street from me. It's not based on me, it's based on what they're doing. And now he's making me drive on this unsafe area and he's going, well, you're a safe driver. What does it matter? Because of everybody else. The same as my safety is concerned with Lynette and Crow. Can we Sanity. talk for a second about a judge being able to tell you where you can and cannot drive? I'm horrified. I am horrified that a, that a person in America has that power. Without any evidence, you are innocent until proven guilty. You're an innocent person. But you're being told you can't use a public road. This is above and beyond the purview of a judge. Larry, am I wrong? 
Nope, you're a hundred percent on the money, Megan. What? It's Driving basically he's basically saying that you know he's limiting. What what would be the legal terminology for it? This is taking me back to law school, so please forgive me. I'm probably going to butcher this, but it's uh, limiting commerce. So there's this. Uh, Oh, God. Constitutional law, 2011. OK, this is how far back I have to go in my head because uh, I haven't done it since. There's um, it's, there's a clause in our uh, somewhere in our Constitution. It's called the Commerce Clause that basically allows you to travel from point A to point B uh, uninhibited by any laws or any, you know, short of like if you're like uh, facing federal charges and, you know, you cannot leave the country. I mean, those things are real. And people say, well, can I leave the state? A hundred percent of our clients can leave the state at any moment. Every single client I represent does not have their uh, ability to travel infringed or inhibited because that is the law. There is very, very, very limited circumstances and your your crimes must be so heinous to where like, you know, and you're out on a million dollar bond and they'll restrict your ability to travel. So interstate commerce is where it really comes in. And if uh, this is what the judge is doing, that's another violation. You're right. I forgot about this one because I remember there's talk of the easement or, or whatever that Jeremy has mentioned. And of course, you can speak on it better, Jeremy. But in legal terms, what the judge is doing is he's essentially limiting your ability to conduct interstate commerce. That would be like, I think the simplest way to describe it. The most complicated, simplest way to Wait, describe which it. Which amendment is this? It's not an amendment. <laughs> well, what number uh, are we at? Sounds like something that's in the constitution though. It's Where an is it? act. It's an interstate, it's a commerce clause. It's found in the constitution. The clause states that the United States Congress shall have power to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among several states and with the Indian tribes. And then there's like subsections and it's been interpreted in different ways by case law. Um, I, I forget. Maybe chat can help us out if we got any constitutional. Seriously, if we have any constitutionalists in the chat, please shout it out because I this is outside my wheelhouse completely. Um, and, and I want to be clear that I have respected everything this judge has put in writing, even though I have no respect for him. I have not broken anything he put in writing. Now, I also understand I'm probably going to he's going to give me a verbal thrashing like crazy for talking to you guys. And he's going to threaten me. And I mean, the reality is the reality is he may illegally imprison me i mean i'm i'm ready for that but can you imagine this judge making a martyr out of me for all youtubers i mean how foolish could you be is it bad that i hope he it's does it jeremy foolish. it like very selfishly so but like you said it, it will you will become a martyr and this whole thing will explode it is already blowing up and that will be literally the dynamite stick under his bench if you will well, he's going to become a precedent, though. He's going to set this precedent that yeah. uh, because this will end up going to a higher court. If he does not uh, recuse himself from this, this is going to a higher court. You're going to appeal it. He cannot win it. He cannot win this. Hashtag this is the buckle thing. up. Buckle up, dude. You can't. You. He thinks that he knows more than we do, Larry. That's his problem. He thinks he knows more than uh, those of us out here who have been. You've been practicing. All the people in YouTube, the lawyers on law have been practicing. I've been covering court cases for 20 years. He thinks he can win this. We say he can't. I think we are in a better position to tell him what's what, because we've been pretty right on all these cases that we cover. We've been very right. We've been very right on. The press, by the way, has gotten it all wrong. Who's gotten it right? Law tube. Who sees what's coming? Law tube. I keep like, calling I this case Johnny Depp 2.0 for a reason. Yeah, I mean, he thinks he's going to get away with this, but he isn't. I'm telling you right now, Judge, Grudge Judge, you better drop it. Otherwise, your legacy is going to be setting the precedent for all of social media. That's what's going to happen. It, you're going to be, your name will be forever in history as the judge who tried to kill free speech tr and failed and yep. failed. You're going to fail. Th this is not a win. In any way, is this a win? No, it's just not. Uh, got to you in the chat. 10 minutes, by the way. Go ahead. All right. And those of you in the chat, um, oh my God, 122 super chats. I'm so grateful to you, uh, but I'm, I cannot get to them all right now. Uh, we're going to try and get through as much of this as we can. And then I promise I'm going to read every single super chat after I let my guests go. 
uh, so they don't have to, they're not sitting through it. And I've taken up a ton of their time. Jeremy and George, how much longer do you got? We had five minutes to give you from the beginning. <laughs> we're, very busy. we're extremely busy. Um, <laughs> well, you are free to, if you've got to go, you've got to go. I'm not going to keep you here. We plan on being with you to the end. Yes, it's almost over. All right, it's almost over. Here we go. Your Honor, okay, yes, he doesn't, we don't object to the March 1st. Um, but again, I just, I know we've revisited this. Mr. Hales is, is obeying by the injunction to the T, including this issue about the public road. Um, and he's said again, there was an accident last week on that, on that road. It's a busy highway. He just wants to be able to drive on the road to get into his property. Um, when making it within 50, 100 feet when, when it's their residence instead of 500. That request based on matters previously argued before the court on two occasions is denied. Your Honor, I would ask the of court, course, please. in light of the new date being March 1st, I would ask the court to permit both sides some additional time on the decision. Didn't even consider it. Denied. 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 Sit down. <laughs> Good Lord. Discovery instead of next Friday the 2nd, I'd ask the court to allow us until Friday the 16th, which would be two weeks before the hearing date to complete the depositions. That's fine, Judge. Okay, without without opposition, what all other matters, as I said, instead of the two nine, excuse me, the two two cutoff date, it'd be February 16. Would the court entertain my Ortenis motion to direct uh, Mr. Hales through counsel to provide to me uh, and my office all written materials or other work product um, that uh, this expert would has relied upon or would rely upon at the hearing uh, no less than 48 hours prior to her deposition, whenever we are able to schedule that. If she's got a written report, yeah, I haven't seen it yet, but sure. Well, we're, we're not we, we're not going to ambush anybody. We have, I'm sure, if we get a report, we'll provide it. Not just a written report, but any materials that she relied upon I'll get you that. in forming any opinion that she intends to testify or may testify to in this case. Absolutely. Okay, well, without opposition, the court would direct that prior to 48 hours prior to the deposition of the person proffered as a potential expert witness, all materials relied upon to formulate her opinion and or any reports generated from those materials will be provided to counsel for the petitioner. By the way, all the materials are provided in her finalized report. Okay. With regards to the scheduling of her deposition, um, as well as any and all other discovery, I want to put a um, cutoff date we're now at February 16 for the Cook and Hale's deposition. And we could do her deposition by Zoom, I presume. Well, where is she located? Tennessee, somewhere. So, so I know you said she's going to be in Tennessee for the birth of the child or grandchild, but does she live in Tennessee? She lives in Tennessee. Well, yes, given the rules of procedure and the controlling law, I would have to consent to a Zoom depot there. Not for the hearing, but for the depot. Right. I would, I would um, be inclined to provide you all uh, opportunity to do so by February 21, which is the middle of the following week after the other depots need to be completed. Do you have consensus on that? that? That's perfectly acceptable on our side, Your Honor. I yeah. don't know. So what was the due, what was the date we had? 2-9? Two, 2-16. Two no, the one that we couldn't make it was the 9th? The February, February 9th date is now going to be changed right. to March 1. Adam Clark, the extended injunction will go through March okay. 1. So her conflict was the 9th. The so extended yeah, injunction. Well, so he's just, it, because we're getting a new date and I have not even been able to hear anything about this case, I'm just going to go ahead and extend your, your the deprivation of your rights. The I'm, still of under, your I'm still under the injunction taking away all my legal rights. I mean, no big this deal. Man has taken it's just away two more weeks, me. Jeremy. No yeah, come on. It's just a couple more weeks, man. Just, more just weeks. sit back and relax, if bro. Tonight, if I die tonight on that highway, you two better rally the charge against no, this man. Believe me. We know who did it. Me. We don't need to check. I hate even saying it, but my God, if that is a that's a hideous outcome that could happen. And he why can't he and he has every power to say, I can reinstate your rights to drive on that road right now. Just don't stop in front of her house. Just to clarify, he never had the power to take my right away, but he did it anyway. Correct. That's a good point. 
Like, where did that even come from? The you can't drive on the road. Did he write that in his injunction, like specifically? Just five hundred feet. You had to have clarified with him. Like, does that mean I can't drive on the on the public road? And he said yes. Because, like, what happens if you just drive on your road? Are they going to send the cops after you? You know, that's an interesting idea. Also, here's a thought, okay? While Jeremy is looking, um, there is a risk tomorrow that, I mean, because this has blown up since the last time they were in court, mm -hmm. that the Tell judge him. is going to go off on the lawyers because, mm -hmm. you know, if bar complaints are already being threatened, license revocations, yada, 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 like law licenses to practice law, threatening to pe put people in jail, to throw Jeremy in jail. I mean, there's a, there's a very... I mean, it shouldn't say high possibility. There is a possibility that the judge tomorrow at the hearing is just going to start issuing sanctions. It is possible. I wouldn't put it past Judge the Thomases to be like, you know what? I'm I I made an order. You violated my order. I, otherwise, what's the point of orders if they're not followed? You've clearly shown a disregard of my bullshit, but my order. Um, therefore, here are the sanctions. Blah 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 blah. So also bring your what he's saying is bring your toothbrush because right to jail right away. It's possible. It's possible, and I'm wondering he could hold you in contempt and throw you in jail. It's a public I, I courtroom, right? So people can freely walk in to just sit in the pews and watch the hearing. It's an mm -hmm. open forum. So if people want to come in and watch this live, if they're anywhere near Levy County, uh, Florida. There's nothing stop. What time is the hearing? Do we know, Jeremy? He's making it a closed court. You're joking. He can't no. do that. With witnesses sequestration, but I, I don't think he's closed. Oh, that's fine. Court. Okay, witness sequestration. No, that's yeah, fine. that's different. That's but, different. But sure. but you know, you you he can't just close off the doors and say courtroom no. is closed today. He cannot. He can't do that. He can anybody like, can walk anybody in. Anybody who's a witness, please walk out yep. because if you're in the courtroom and you're listening, you will not be permitted to testify. That he's allowed to do. So here's what the what the uh, injunction states. He does not say you cannot drive on your road. It says committing an act of stalking against petitioner, going to be or being within 500 feet of petitioner's residence. So if I drive on my road, but frankly, all of well, my he never said he ne when you said I want to drive on my road. He didn't clarify. Well, you can go ahead. He didn't. So he's in agreement that you cannot drive on your road because I is, would be within 500 feet of, of re, regardless. I mean, I have, if I, have I were you, I would just I drive on the road. Driveways. I have four different driveways that have the frontage and the only way to get to them is on the road. He's making me go through that highway where it's high accident and death area to come to my other driveway, which my yeah. driveway is under 500 feet from their residence. No, see, if I were so you, I'm I would just, I would just drive on the road, anyway. make him stop me. I would make him stop me because I, I don't know. I feel like that's another lawsuit all in itself. This, you know, the state can't stop you from driving on a public road. No, that's that's the Commerce Clause in, in a way. Obviously, I'm kind of butchering it because the Commerce Clause was it, it has completely different intentions. But the way it's been interpreted over the last 250 years, 300 years is mm -hmm. it, it allows yada, yada, yada. You get it. Yeah. Well. I think it's, I think the judge should have, if he should have, when you brought it up, just say you can drive on the road. You're yeah. just allowed to be, I mean, you're, how is that being within 500 feet of her? If you're moving, if you're a moving target, like that doesn't make any sense. If you're moving. You're, what time is yeah, the hearing no tomorrow? Different. The chat is asking. Yeah. What, what time, time is, is the, the hearing? Tomorrow's hearing is on motions and that's, it starts at one, but he'll have other people in there on injunctions and he'll wait for He'll make us wait to the very end. Yeah, because he wants Friday to clear the courtroom because he doesn't want any eyeballs. He wants yeah. he wants mm -hmm. to do you last because he's going to take the most time, and it makes sense. Okay, Friday's so it starts at one at nine a.m. Sorry, Friday's final hearing is at nine a.m. Tomorrow's Friday, hearing Friday, March. At I'm going to try to make it to that. So I have a jury trial that is scheduled in uh, Hardin County uh, on Friday. If my jury, I'm going to find out tomorrow. My my final pretrial conference on that jury trial is tomorrow. 
if I find out that for whatever reason, the trial on Friday gets continued or pushed or whatever, I'm going to leave Thursday night and probably come down to Florida, Levy awesome. County, Florida on Friday. I'm going to try and do that. We're going awesome. to barbecues then. If I'm not, <laughs> oh my legit. god, Larry! No, if I'm you... bringing my checkbook. I'm bringing what? Do I, what else do I need to bring? I'm bringing my feather pen to offer it to the judge in case he <laughs> wants to write something down when Silverman is speaking, and of course, put it down when when uh, Randy is speaking. So, yeah. If Don't Larry goes, I will tell you this: If Larry goes. I will live stream during the hearing. I don't think they can live stream it, but I will wait for Larry to call in. I will kill time until Larry calls in to hear what is going on in that trial because holy crap, this is going to be hilarious. But Either tomorrow the, I can't make it. Tomorrow there's 0% right, chance. Friday. Friday. But there's Friday. other people who may be able to make it tomorrow, and that's why I'm shouting it out because it's a public forum. Anybody can, can come in. Yeah. There's no, nothing stopping. Oh, my God. I hope. I pray the judge that Thomas is, is stupid enough to be like, uh, all of you need to clear the courtroom. We're about to have a secret yep. FISA hearing. Yep. Get out. Get out yep. now. That would be great if he tried to do that. Do it, judge. Do it. I dare do it, you. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Try to keep the public out of an open court hearing. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> we will blow this up so big you can't even believe it. You think you think law and crime is a big deal if they got on your case? Oh my God. Go ahead. Kick the public out of a public hearing. It'll be great. I'll get Robert Barnes on it. Next thing you know, Robert Barnes will be on his ass. There are Jeez. 33 law tubers. Actually, I made a list the uh, yesterday, today, this morning. Um, here we go. Where is it? We got Legal Mindset, Nick Ricada, Joe Good Logic, Lawyer You Know, Nate the Lawyer, Runkle of the Bailey, Law and Lumber, Ron Coleman, Law of Self Defense, Emily Baker, Viva Frey, Legal Southern Vices. Law. Legal Vices, Robert Barnes, Colonel Kurtz, Legal Bites, Uncivil Law, The Lead Attorney, Attorney Tom, Natalie Lawyer Chick, Law Talk with Mike, Potentially Criminal Sean, James from Court, Andrea Burkhardt, <gasps> Aussie Overlaw, <laughs> Nicholas Stero, Danny on Direct, <laughs> Megan Fox, that's you, Tug, AV to the Seventh Power, Making Law Simple, Steve Gosney, and the Civil Rights Lawyer are the 33 that I can And MG Law, MG Law, who's already MG picking law. it up. He's in 34. the chat. We will, we will, we, they'll all talk about it. Like it's, it will be no doubt about it. It will be big. And I hope everybody understands in law too. We never, ever wanted this in our lives. The Hence the cease and desist telling them to stop. If they would have stopped, there'd been nothing to show, right? If they would have just yeah. ceased and desist, There'd been nothing ever to even see and show. And this is where it is today. And it's out of control. And it Lynette and John Crook, they're a sideshow. The yeah. main of constitutional rights are being attacked. Yes, the judge. exactly. This and I'm judge. glad you recognize that, Jeremy, because, you know, and, and honestly, before I dip out, I want to say this. Honestly, props to the both of you. Because you could have made this about yourselves and be like, look at, and, and of course, it's just, you are a central piece to this because without you, Judge the Thomases may never have been outed. But you understand, and I, this is what I love you for, other than your philanthropic efforts as well, is the fact that you are understanding that this is about the First Amendment and Judge the Thomases. This is the primary one. I mean, there's more to it, but primarily he's trying to impugn making you responsible for my speech, for Megan's speech, for mm -hmm. Beaver's speech and Mac's speech and Patricia's and Trilby's and Chi Town Legal and Eye of the Beholder, et cetera, et cetera, and saying everything that they're saying in the chat, you, Jeremy, will be punished for. And that Don't is the me. central piece. That is at the top of the, of the of the pyramid. Oh, the <laughs> Illuminati, whatever you guys want. Illuminati. <laughs> that's, that's at the center of all this. And 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 God bless you, man. You you guys are 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 kings, honestly, in my book. So thank you, Larry. Tell the chat about your stream tomorrow. So, oh God, uh, tomorrow we have the big one. Tomorrow we are going to be going through. I'm in the process of redacting all confidential information so that. Uh, well, first of all, I don't want to get in trouble because if I get in trouble, you guys get in trouble and, uh, you know, everybody gets in trouble. So I'm making sure to redact any and all like personal information addresses. Uh, I'm, I'm doing addresses as well, just to be on the safe side um, in in the injunction uh, that Lynette initially filed on September 7th, which is like 61 pages, I think. 
and then or it's six, it's like it's it's a lot. And then the supplemental on December fourth, which eventually netted the judge granting the temporary injunction, the three hundred and how many pages is it? Oh, three hundred. It's a lot now. of pages. It's, it's a, a lot, lot of pages. pages. We're going to be going over that tomorrow on my channel, and um, yeah, that's that is that's the big one tomorrow. What time are we doing it? It's uh four thirty, four thirty p.m. Eastern time. So get we'll over be, there and subscribe. Get over and subscribe to DUI Guy Plus. Make sure that you do that. Larry, thanks so much for being here and for, for sitting here for four and a half hours. You're amazing. Thank you. Larry, thanks you'll be with us. Me. You'll be with us with Tug tomorrow night, right? Uh what time is that? I think it's like at seven. Let me look. I think, I think seven. Maybe you're not. I don't, I, I, well, I don't think so. I, no, this one, this okay. because we, we were hoping yesterday that you were going to come and it didn't work out. It doesn't matter. I'm I'm still happy. I, I want to do the injunction. So while you guys are live with Tug, I'll probably still be going through the injunction because there's a lot okay, to cover. Well, but if I get done, then, on him because yeah. I might get arrested and jailed tomorrow. So if I do, can you just jump on there? And if my that happens, I guarantee you I'll be on with Tug. Don't worry. Okay. There you go. Uh, don't the, worry. The three of us are on the case. So don't We're listen. You got, you got the best of, of law tube literally on the case. And Legal Vices is ready to jump in. He's just waiting for this uh, other hearing. He's covering the trial he's covering of Hannah Gutierrez to be done. Gutierrez, yeah. But he's he's paying attention and he's about to weigh in as well. So it's gonna uh, it's gonna get much bigger than this. So yeah, Larry, thank you so much for being here. I'll let you go. Bye everybody. Thanks, Larry. Thanks Take for care, everybody. Hi, Thanks subscribe. for having me again. Subscribe to me again. Subscribe to what the hails. Subscribe to me, and I will see you. Tomorrow on my channel, Injunction. And I also, before I forget, I also have two more videos now. Uh, well, at least one I'm going to do is which judicial canons did the Thomases violate? Ooh. They're going to be on Thursday. So that's a, <gasps> that's another one. Here, you want to see the thumbnail? I'll, I'll do yes. a little sneak peek. This is, I'm leaking, I'm leaking information. Yes, I want to see it. We're leaking right here, live. We're leaking information, Judge to Thomas's. Perhaps Wait, you want to hold Jeremy responsible for all these leaks no, that I, are coming. I, I, I'm going to be arrested. <laughs> so we got a sneak peek. This is nowhere. This is only on my computer for now. You, this you is will great. See it. This is going to be the, the thumbnail for that one. So anyway, thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks, good night, Larry. Larry. Bye, everybody. Good night. Good night. All right. So. I think I'm making an executive decision here. I don't think there's anything else in this hearing that I need to see. We have seen it all. We have seen everything that this judge has to throw at you, Jeremy, and at your attorneys. So I, I don't, we don't need to go back to it. I would much prefer uh, to let you have the last say of this incredibly long stream. Thank you so much for hanging out. And once you guys uh, are, you know, gone and on with the rest of your evening. I'm going to read, I promise you, every single one of the Super Chats that came in tonight, I will not get off the air until they are read. I promise, even if I have to go through three or four more beers, I will do it. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Jeremy and George, how do you want to wrap this up? What do you want people to know? What do we, What what's going on? Let's, ha let's have George have the last say, because that's the way it happens in our house. So... <laughs> <laughs> smart man um so with with everything going on in, in court obviously stress levels are high anxiety levels are high and we we truly appreciate you megan for for being for wanting to be a part of this and and exposing the judge and bringing more eyeballs to the case it, it feels good to have your support and we don't feel alone because we oh, know that it's good. Be right. Because from the, from the very first hearing, we're like, this isn't right. This can't be right. And so for you to validate that this is not right and this is not normal behavior, we appreciate you being a part of it. We appreciate Larry being a part of it. We appreciate the umbrella guy to, to want to be a part of it. And so definitely need a ton of prayers for tomorrow and definitely need a ton of prayers for Friday. I, I I tried to predict what's going to happen. And I was talking uh, to Deanna earlier. I was like, I, I seriously think the, the judge will drop it. He doesn't have enough evidence. There I is don't. no evidence. 
So that's what I'm rooting for, that it gets dismissed because there hasn't been any evidence of any threats of violence towards her. And of course, again, as a public service announcement, no one is to contact her. No one is to reach out to her in any way, on any platform, in any manner. That That's not what this is about. This is about holding our judicial system to account for the behavior that it has. She will have her day in court. This will get adjudicated at some point. No one is to reach out to her. Jeremy and George do not want you reaching out to her. They do not want you contacting her in any way. I am no, I don't want my audience contacting her in any way. This is about if you want to contact somebody, you contact your the legislature in Florida and you tell them about this case. You contact Governor DeSantis. You tell him about this judge that he appointed and how badly he has behaved. You tell him all about that. That's what you who you tell. You can call flood the legislature all day long and not piss off anybody. But as far as any of the litigants in the case, anybody connected to the case, stay away from them. Nobody here wants anything har any harm to come to anyone. We just want the truth out there. That's it. That's it. Jeremy and George, thank you so much for being here. You guys, everybody, if my those of you in my audience who are here, make sure that you're subscribed to Jeremy and George at What the Hales. Uh, they've been troopers through this whole thing. And we are, you are not alone, you guys. You're not. You're not alone really anymore. If you that. felt alone, you're not alone anymore. We're going to follow this to the end. And that's the way we roll here. So we're going to do it. It was fun. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for hanging out so long. We'll talk to you soon. Have All a right. good night. Thanks, Megan. You too. All right. I promised that I was going to get through every super chat and it starts now I got to text fairy and tell her to bring me another beer because I need, that's what I need. <laughs> I need another beer to get through all the super chats. Holy crap, you guys. Oh my gosh. Bring me another one, please. My ch I haven't even had a bathroom break. Thank God I'm not Laura Owens pregnant with tonsil twins, right? I would have had to go to the bathroom at least. Oh wait, never. Cause she's not. Shame. All right. I promise not to chew and read at the same time. Hold, please. All right. Now that I've said bathroom, I actually do need to take a bathroom break. So you know what you're going to do while I'm gone? You're going to do your squats. If you're new to this channel, we do squats. Usually we do them every hour. And we have Nick Riqueda, who is another law tuber who is uh, hilarious. He's the Pope of law tube, actually. He's going to fat shame you while you do your squats for a minute and 22 seconds. And I'm going to go to the bathroom. See ya. Be right back. Do your squats. You impose fatness on you. You did it by going, oh, I want the butter and the popcorn. Oh, I want the butter on the ice cream. Oh, I want the butter on the sandwich. Oh, I want the butter on the salad. Stop eating the butter. Can you just get up, walk one mile? Do squat! Walk farther. And if you can't walk, crawl, roll, get dragged by a goddamn forklift. Whatever is wrong with you, just move ever, ever. Get off the chair, get off the couch. No one is coming to service you while you sink into that furniture, while you become one with the pleather your poor ass got on that Walmart couch. Can you try not floating into sadness? Stop eating, stop drinking, start walking, start doing everything. Anything that you haven't been doing, you fat piece of shit.
I write them back and back and back. How many of you left? I don't know if I told you this, but the rule is if you leave during squats, it's because you're fat. I don't know. <laughs> is that why you're gone? Well, we only lost like 2,000 of you. Still 5,000 here. Okay. Let's get to it. Oh, did you do your squats? <laughs> All right. Where are we at? Denise, not the nephew, says a new nickname for the judge, Judge De Narcissist. I like it. It has a certain ring to it. Kevin Phelps, welcome to the Fox Den. Thanks for being a member. Tina Pullman, he needs removal from the bench. Yeah, I agree. Caroline says, we the people. Listen, here's the thing about removing judges from the bench and talking about judges who behave badly. None of them like it, but the good ones understand that it's part of the process. And actually they do kind of like it because they know that it means the system works. It means we still have liberty and freedom in this country and it's okay to mock a judge. I've told this story before, Judge Carroll in the Maya Kowalski case, we mocked him mercilessly, mostly because he just has this ridiculous hairstyle. This little tuft of hair. <laughs> He's got like a bald head, a little bit of hair around here, and like this tuft. And we called him the tuft of justice, and we called it Hair Island. And we weren't really making fun of him as a person. It was just this ridiculous hairstyle. And he goes in one of his motions and writes in there, I could say that I have a full head of hair, but the truth is that I have a small hair island in a sea of baldness. He writes this in an order because he understands, he gets it, he gets the process, which is I'm a judge. I'm the one with the black robe. I have the power of liberty and freedom and taking your liberty away. And so I actually have to respect that power and allow the people to take me down a notch if they decide to do it. Oh my God, that man won my loyalty at that moment forever because I realized that he realized the truth. He realized that he has an extra responsibility to not only tolerate the public's ridicule of him, but to participate in it. Good for you. Good for you, Judge Carroll. My God, I said some terrible things about you. I called you a wet ass P word. <laughs> I did because I thought he should have sanctioned Jay Hatch's attorneys and he didn't. Um, but he also showed us though, that he respects the first amendment. He respects for free speech and he found us entertaining. All right. Juliet Morgan. Thanks for the super chat says, love you. What the hails? Don't worry. I won't be on a plane. John Gibson. Welcome to the Fox Den. And Nancy McCain, thanks for the super sticker. MLS, making law simple. <laughs> thanks for being here. I starred your chat so I would remember to say hello. What an exciting show. RJ Medic, welcome to the YouTube Fox Den. Jay Selman, hi, Jeremy and George. Ugh to the judge. Ugh <laughs> to the judge. <laughs> Shane Cook. Is it normal? Is this normal for U.S. courts from Wales? No, no. If this were normal, we wouldn't be so shocked by it, right? We wouldn't. We would be like, oh, this is just usual. This is not normal. Not Most judges do not behave this way. Some do. Rachel McCullough, thanks for the super sticker. Appreciate that. Ms. Krim, what was his prior practice? What was his prior practice for the judge? Family courts, criminal, et cetera. I think he was a defense attorney, if I'm remembering that correctly, but don't quote me on that. I think that's what I was told. Michael Martin, thanks to the super chat, says, Larry might get this reference, but judge is basically, this judge basic, basically said, you agreed to my contract by not denying it. Now that's interesting. You know who else we know does that? Laura Owens. Laura Owens in the uh, Owens v. Eckert case, she's the woman who accused bachelor, former bachelor Clayton Eckert of fathering her twins, or the tonsil twins as we call them. She wrote up a dating contract 
she was that's what she was trying to basically blackmail the men in her life into dating her and then she would have an abortion for the alleged pregnancy if they dated her and signed this contract to date her but she would often send them texts like if i don't hear from you i'm having the babies if i don't hear from you in the next five minutes i'm doing this and she would take your not answering as a consent to do the thing if you don't answer i'm going to the media and since you didn't answer i thought you would be okay with me going to the media it's exactly the same thing crazy all right uh wankster thanks for the super chat someone gave him a 10 out of 10 the robing room earlier oh my god that had to have been the guy who called larry <laughs> let's go to the robing room and find out <laughs> Let's see the 10 out of 10. Oh my God. That's going to be funny. Let's look him up on the robing room. How do we search here? What do you mean you can't get there? Can't reach this page. Why not? The Thomases. Here he is. It says can't reach this page. Running. Oh my God. Did he have it taken down? Look at this. Look at this, Larry. Oh my God, Larry. Larry's probably not still listening, but Larry, <laughs> what if they had it taken down? Look what this says. It looks like the robingroom.com closed the connection. Oh my goodness. Refresh. No, nothing. Can't even pull it up right now. That is highly suspicious. Very suspicious. Do you think if he got the robing room closed down, that's some bullshit right there. Bullshit. You know what's a fun button I haven't used in a while? Let's do this one. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was going to put him. Uh, put, <laughs> excuse me. Skipper of Veteran Nation, thanks for the super chat, says, I can't wait to see Megan watch the deposition. Me too. I'm excited. I can't wait. I can't wait for the deposition. Um, I can't believe that I haven't seen it, but I couldn't find it on his channel. So hopefully I will get to watch it soon. All right. Shane Cook, thanks for the super chat, says, the planet is watching this case. Damn straight it is. And it's only going to get bigger. We may have some planets in outer space. Intergalactic attention on this case pretty soon c morris thanks for the super chat says the judge is a great cure for insomnia <laughs> you're not wrong when he's not doing the waving arms and the the mark feather um <laughs> he is pretty boring other than that life according to martin thanks for the uh, super chat says all started with a two inch pipe <laughs> oh i don't know what that means allegedly emotional damage augustine d'ambrosia thanks for the super chat appreciate you and claire you're up next thanks for the super sticker appreciate you Teresa finn thanks for the super chat don't forget that the judge regrets allowing lionette's deposition well he regrets it because why why do you think he regrets it because of really because of the publishing or because she made maybe an ass out of herself. I mean, he's the one who said it was super embarrassing for her. So yeah, why? Why was it so embarrassing for her? Welcome to the consequences of your own actions. Elsa Optaholt says he is corrupt. Keep the faith. G and J from the Netherlands. Man, what a worldwide audience. Fantastic. Nancy McCain, thanks for the super chat, says, and never has attorney Feather been mentioned to be having an odd medical procedure. Ron DeSantis must right the wrong of this appointment. Yeah, it's strange that Ron DeSantis, well, but you know what? Appointing judges is a weird thing. I mean, it's not like you know everything about them and how they're going to behave in court. Like, you, I, I'll give him a pass if he does something to help us get rid of him. <laughs> Man, people this brittle, as brittle as this dude is, doesn't deserve to be on the bench. Mistrust Loon, thanks for the super chat, says, I mean, maybe Jeremy's side would only take 20 minutes, but the judge would have to shut up and let them actually speak. This is such a good point. He's all screaming, 15 minutes. He's screaming, 15 minutes. 
but he's not recognizing the fact that he's taking up all of the court's time that they could have already used to put on the case. Marilyn Raby sucks dry gravy. Thanks for the super chat. Says D. Tomasis, I paid him to mess with the hails. My reach is enormous. <laughs> Pepper and C, thanks for the super chat, says, was Detomasis removed from the robing room? That is what it is looking like. It is looking like he has been remo removed from the robing room. And they may do the thing that they do when, like, for instance, when a business goes viral and on Yelp, a bunch of people like to send on it and leave one star reviews. Maybe they've put a hold on it. I don't know, but I'm really glad that Larry read all of those reviews before that happened. I got to tell him about that. Elvira, thanks for the super chat. We love you. What the hell? Stay strong. Thank you, Megan. Well, I appreciate you too, Elvira. Thank you for being here. Marilyn Raby sucks dry gravy again, says, don't worry about court next month. I've changed the locks, turned off the power and shut off the water. Buckle up. <laughs> Welcome to the Fox Den, Mama Bear Lee. It's fun here. We do fun stuff. Tina Pullman, we know you know we have good memes. Thanks for the super chat. John Cook is here. George. Okay. Wild Trob Tribe Chaos. Thanks for the super chat. Says Biscuit Boy is dipping into everyone's tea, Jeremy. Well, I don't know who Biscuit Boy is, but I'm sure I'll figure it out eventually. Wild Tree Chaos. Thanks for the super chat. Says Judge has been near. Liar, liar net. He has liar beaties. I hear that's contagious. Lily Smith, thanks for the super chat, says, I just go to Southern Florida to vacay. I'm in Levy County. That county has some problems, Lily. Has some problems. Maybe you should run for the board or whatever. Midget recap or row cap says, uh, how many think it was the judge that donated the money? Which money? I don't know which money. Boston Rob, thanks for the membership. Welcome to the Fox Den. Now, that's what the Fox says, by the way. It's very unnerving. Shelly Hall, thanks for the super chat. The judges need a, tat a tattoo for his head that says, I hate feather. Hashtag Mark Feather. Everyone all together now. Mark Feather. The next time that I get pissed off about something, I swear to God, I'm gonna, I was going to give up swearing for Lent which has already happened. And so I failed, but I was going to give up. I could just start saying Mark Feather, Mark Feather, Mark Feather it. Rose Chapman, thanks for the super chat, says, hello, Jeremy and George from Amarillo, Texas. You guys rock. Jack's mom, thanks for the super chat, says, judge said, socket, so socket, so you accept the, what is the sentence? The po or no content. What? Well, Jack's mom, thanks for the super chat. I appreciate it, but I don't understand it. Uh, that's okay. Kenneth Hegreen, uh, thanks for the super chat, says judges no brain. <laughs> okay. Lisa William, thanks for the super chat, says she stated that Jeremy is cyber stalking. That's the charge. Haven't seen any evidence of that yet, though. Terry, America. I mean, cyber stalking, by the way, is not talking about someone in legally acceptable terms on the Internet. That's not cyber stalking. Not in any way. Terry, um, thanks for the super chat, says someone is said the judge's ex-wife. Attorney Feather, judge's ex-wife. I don't know what that means. That wasn't a complete sentence, so I, I can't interpret what you meant. Innovative Magic, Don Wood, thanks for the super chat, says, this is crazy. You will win this. I agree. Eventually, it will be won. Probably not by tomorrow, though. Dan Davis, uh, thanks for the super chat, says, Tube Town is coming. I don't know what Tube Town is. Oh, YouTube. You mean YouTube Town. That's funny. <laughs> Tube Town. I like that. Tube Town. Mark Millen, thanks for the super chat, says, impeach Judge De Thomas says, yeah, I agree. Judge De Dumbass, right? <laughs> Wasn't that what we were calling him? Shayna Bumgardner says, how can they have guns and not Jeremy? Hmm. Because they didn't put a restraining order on them. That's why. Shoinia, Shoinia Bumgardner. Thanks for the super chat. Oh, I already got that one. I just read it two seconds ago. Liz Williams. I plead the fifth and I'm enjoying all channels. Awesome. 
glad to have you here. Mama Bear Lee, thanks for the super chat. He sounds like the teacher from Peanuts. Yes, he does. Thanks for the super sticker, Ghost Eyes Adventure. Appreciate you. Shelly Hall. Inju hashtag injunction station, LOL. You get an injunction and you get an injunction. Everybody gets an injunction and nobody is happy in Levy County, Florida. Kicking with Yaya. Thanks for the super chat. Like your uh, screen name. That's fun. That's fun to say. Kicking with Yaya. I'm here for the class action lawsuit. Love and prayers. What the hails? Hashtag buckle up. Shania Bumgarter. Again, then why do they still have them and not in jail? That's a good question. I don't know. But who knows why they do anything in Levy County, Florida? Dan Davis says, injunction, junction, what's your <laughs> injunction, junction, what's your function? Yeah, I remember Schoolhouse Rock. Yes, I do. <laughs> Mike Wolf, thanks for the super chat, says, I swear watching this judge do his thing is as painful as watching Otter Creek City Council meetings. You know, all city council meetings are pretty much like that. They're painful as hell. Uh, this book shut up the bizarre war that one public library waged against the first amendment. This is all about us sitting in public meetings for three years, three years, but oh, we managed to make it not boring though, because it's hilarious. Actually, it's a very funny book. Nancy McCain. Thanks for the super chat says it's a rather Batman esque many new self-defense devices out there that are not classified as firearms. <laughs> True. Marilyn Raby sucks dried gravy, says, I think we found someone else who sucks fired gravy. That's a really funny screen name. Juliet Morgan, thanks for the super chat, says, and they were so funny, the videos. You mean Jeremy's videos? Jeremy's videos are pretty funny. Lily Smith, why can't the Hales just appeal at this point? They have enough proof in writing of the judge's bias. They can't appeal until he denies them again. And then at that point, they should appeal. I wouldn't file another motion. I would go straight to the appellate court. That is a definite possibility. All right, let's see. Kimberly Stacy. Cheers, Megan. You're not the only one having an adult beverage. Yes. Cheers to you. Who knew I was going to end up on a stream with a bunch of sober people? I appreciate sober people. <laughs> I'm just not one of them right now. Mama Bear Lee, thanks for the super chat, says, OMFG, has a single word of Jeremy's defense even been spoken? WTH hails. Uh, yeah, that was difficult to watch. Difficult. Cappy Cross, thanks for the super chat, says, the more one watches what the hails, the more proof you'll see that of the good they do. Yeah, I've seen a lot, and um, it's all pretty good. Harriet Williams, I love and support George and Jeremy. Well, you know, partially, I'm sure no one really understands how they feel about this because you're not in their shoes and they put on a good front. Uh, but having to go through this for two years now, it's exhausting. And I'm sure they're tired and I'm sure they wish anything else were happening right now. Jessica Kruger, thanks to the Super Chat, says, no lie, he gave me a bag of Tootsie Rolls the other day. <laughs> Free candy for everyone. Marilyn Raby sucks dried gravy. Thanks to the super chat says a little upset that I don't get the coverage I was once receiving. I'm the original pain in their side. Nice. Welcome to the Fox Den, Donald Morrison. It's the terrifying welcome to my channel. Tracy Crumb. Thanks for the super chat. This judge has a small driveway and it shows hashtag buckle up. It's really funny that judges don't like to be ridiculed. They really hate it. They're very brittle. And that's why we should keep doing it. Because eventually they become like Judge Carroll. You weed out all the bad ones. And then the good ones rise to the top where they can take a joke. And it's no big deal. You know? Like if you're being criticized and people are mocking you for something as a sitting elected official, you either change what you're doing, quit your job, or ignore it. Those are the three legal options you have. You cannot retaliate against the public for making fun of you. No, can't do it. Jaden Sonic Channel, thanks for the super chat, says hashtag justice for Jeremy and George saying hi from Sydney, Australia. That's fun. P.I., thanks for the super chat, says keep up the good fight, Mrs. Fox. What the hails and Mr. Foreman. Yes, it's been great uh, getting to know the hails. 
Dreamer Jays, thanks for the super chances. FYI, has Lynette outdone her original goal by 100 times? George and Jeremy got kids over in Egypt all their school supplies by donations. Nice. Love Queen Tut. Yeah, that was a fun story that they did that. That's awesome. I think George has family in Egypt. Um, and that was very sweet. Debbie Farmer, thanks for the super chat, says Jeremy and George are the best. They've helped so many with just being them. It's true. Boston Rob, thanks for the super sticker. Appreciate you. Debbie, Debbie Childer says, j and we, we in Texas love you. Thank you, Megan. Boy, the, the outpouring of love and support for Jeremy and George is just huge. You guys are awesome. Pebs W says, been subbed to with Hales for years. I love what they do for people. It really is a testament to who they are and what they do with how many of you love them so much who have been watching them for so long. Mickey Mouse 1105, thanks for the super chat. I've been watching WTH for quite a few years. And although I don't say much, my heart goes out to them. They do so much for so many people. See how lovely you all are. Man, what an audience. John Alive, Judge De Thomas has lost the easiest uh, grape case in the history of the world. Check out the documentary Raw Deal. He tried to get his five minutes of fame. What is this? I'm taking notes. Just like Judge De Thomas says when Silverman is talking documentary what's it called raw deal i'm looking it up this could be good content i don't know we'll have to figure it out sounds good thanks for the tip jay selman thanks for the super chat says megan fox watching what the hails is more fun than the garbage on cable i feel that way about a lot of youtube to tell you the truth ray mall 1962 thanks to the super chat says became a fan of j and g because of elvis elvis presley <laughs> which elvis welcome to the fox den mystery ski mr isky mr isky is that is that right <laughs> Uh, thanks for the super chat. Donald Morrison says Jeremy in his warehouse in Ohio. LOL. Um, Candace Bingham. Thanks for the super chat. Says truly J and G are the best. Megan, you need to cover Lynette's adoption of her daughter. It's unbelievable. I have heard some of that and it just breaks my heart. Jeffrey Montgomery. Thanks for the super chat. Ask George when she'll be next visiting Elvis. Jeremy and George fans can't wait until this is all over and they're free to live their lives again. Yeah, that's what we all hope for is that everybody can go back to a state of peace. Matt Bond. Thanks for the super chat. Says waiting to see objection. Nah, <laughs> fuck you mean nah in court. How does Jeremy always attract the bat shit crazy people? I don't know, but I have that. I have that talent too. Damien Percy, thanks for the super chat. Says this drama is nothing compared to the saga of Town Hall Water Saga. I don't know that one, but you know, maybe. Sarah Joy, thanks for the super chat. You can get papers notarized online now. I've never been able to do it. I think it depends on where you are, and I don't think a courtroom allows you to do that. Debbie Childer says J and G. Please let us know if what we can do. We love you. Harriet Williams, thanks for the super chat, says George and Jeremy do so much good for so many people. Entertain, educate, support, and encourage. They are the real deal. Oh my gosh. I'm almost halfway through. <laughs> 54 left. Plus, I still have to check Venmo and Cash App. I know that there, there's some out there. KW became a YouTube member. Welcome to the Fox Den. And I will check locals as well. I need to check the locals. Oh my God. Do you know I haven't had Rumble up all night? <gasps> Rumble. It's the Rumble ghetto over there. Rumble, how are you doing? Are you doing okay? I have to check on my peeps over at Rumble. Oh my God. I forgot all about you. I forgot we were on Rumble. <laughs> oh man. This is what I hate about StreamYard. I want them to incorporate the live chat. <laughs> we're not worthy. <laughs> you guys are so funny. All right. Well, I don't have to worry about you guys, because there's no Rumble rants over there I have to worry about. Those are the pores only on Rumble. They're, those are my pores. <laughs> and they get ignored on accident. It's an accident, guys. Chris Tisdale, thanks for the super chat, says, Hey, uh, what the hells? I'm always watching, but in the back, lost my mom in 2016, February of cancer. I'm so sorry to hear that, Chris. Uh, just keep to myself some time I come out. Well, you take care, and I'm sorry for your loss. Tracy Fagan, thanks for the super chat, says, I would pull out my toothbrush and tell this judge to go to hell. <laughs> 
Not a bad plan. MG Law. This guy lacks the competence and temper temperament to be a judge. I totally agree with you. Marie D. And by the way, MG Law is an attorney. So that's another attorney opinion that he lacks the, the uh, judicial temperament. <laughs> Rumble says... We're fine. We're used to being ignored. They're like the middle child. They're the middle child of my of my streaming world. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Rumble. I had to close down a bunch of windows because I was worried my computer was going to take a, you know, was going to crap out right in the middle of it. Um, Rogue Mama on Locals. I think we may need Larry to read the Demonic Pizza Reddit post. You're damn straight we do. You're damn straight we do. That's hilarious. I'm going to ask him to do it. I'm just making sure I didn't miss any memes over there. Okay. I think we're good. All right. Getting back over here. Marie D. Thanks for the super chat. Says, I wonder if De Thomas told LP about Silverman. I don't know. Teresa Minnesota. Thanks for the super chat. Says, could you imagine if this judge tried the Waukesha case? Oh, my God. That would have been far more entertaining than what we've seen. Wouldn't it be great if he would use his powers for good? Wouldn't that be great if he would give the business to people who deserved it? <laughs> like Darrell Brooks? Barra Petros, thanks for the super chat, says hashtag buckle up. Man, I want to get that trending on Twitter. Candace Bingham, thanks for the super chat, says, that's Tat DeGreeve's video. He goes by DJ Raddus. He makes a lot of great videos. Uh, you must be talking about the parody of Judge DeThomas's uh, election campaign video. That was one of the funniest things I've seen in a long time. That was good stuff. So thanks for telling us who did it. Jeff H., thanks for the super chat, says, the DUI guy has been reported, and I'm going to report Jeremy and George to the Storage War Commission from Judge Devoted. Out. the storage war commission that's funny that's funny donna mcleod thanks for the super chat says he looks like one of the three stooges wags tail thanks for the super chat says tube town is coming ugh i can't do it the way jeremy does it oh <laughs> is that how you do it <laughs> i don't know Pebs W, thanks for the super chat. Says I'm a feather hating cherry picker and buckle up. We need some music. I need some music while I do this. Should we go with techno or lo fi? No, that's too much. This isn't bad. All right. Hi, I'm a feather hating cherry picker. Hashtag buckle up. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that. Kilo Bite, thanks for the super chat. Says, I'm so happy to see the Hales laughing now. Thank you, Megan and Larry, for doing that. You got to laugh at the insanity. All right, this is getting too loud now. Here, I need this. There we go. Vanessa Gregg, thanks for the super chat. Says, Jeremy, I think the judge just flexed the size of his driveway by saying it's actually at the court's discretion. What in the Mark Feather Hales? <laughs> that was a good one. Tracy Crumb, thanks for the super chat, says, I need all of these memes printed on t-shirts and then buy like now. Buckle up. It's good. It's good. Buckle up. This, there's so many opportunities here for, for, uh, for merch store. By the way, speaking of merch, I have a merch store. I have a really fun sweatshirt in there. It's oh for Fox sake. Here's what it looks like comes in all different colors oh for fox sake this one's also good sorry for having great tits and correct opinions on everything you can go to my merch store it's linked in the description there's a whole bunch of stuff in there there's some uh, a, a bunch of merch just go look at it maxi hensley thanks for the super chat says i am so glad this is going planet-wide together with the hail's wind divided they fall this is going to be a fun story, so buckle up, folks, because we're not even close to being done. Sorry to tell you, Judge DeThomas, but your day in the spotlight, it ain't over yet. Angelo O'Dath, thanks for the super chat, says this judge on YouTube has 12 subscribers, five videos, and one like across all five videos. Hashtag buckle up. Well, he didn't know what he was getting into when he decided to cross Tube Town, did he? 
No. Dean Bounds, thanks for the super chat. I'm six foot four and a monster of a man. Jeremy and George, if you need me, I'm there. That was nice of you. Mark Lane, thanks for the super chats. Is starting the Mark Feather for Al Alachua County Judge Fund. <laughs> yeah, Mark Feather does need to run. He should run for judge. He's an attorney. He should run for that spot. And he, oh, imagine the commercials he can make with that guy saying, Mark Feather. I would take every, I would take everything from those hearings. Every time he said my name and put it into a commercial, Mark Feather this, Mark Feather that, Mark Feather. And then my tagline would be something like, Mark Feather sticking it to the man. <laughs> Jeff H, thanks for the super chat. I support Jeremy and George. This judge should be removed from this case and voted out of office. Couldn't agree with you more. Wild Tribe Chaos. I made you a meme. Where to send it, please? Well, you need to go to meganfox.locals.com. Sign up there. Follow me for free. You can post stuff on my page. You can post a meme. Now, if you want to actually get into the live chat and meme live with all my, my memers in the meme dungeon, then all you need to do is subscribe. It's $5 a month. It's less than a venti latte at Starbucks for an entire month. I paid seven bucks for one of those the other day. Seven bucks. So it's five bucks a month. Use promo code tonsil twins. All caps get two free months when you sign up for a year. Meganfox.locals.com. That's where to find me. MG Law, my homie. My homie. I almost said my homo, but that would not be accurate. My homie. He is not a homo. He's home. He's a, a, a hetero. <laughs> There's basically isn't a judge in this case. The plaintiff has two lawyers with one of them simply wearing a robe. Speaking of my homo, where's Flux? Flux, are you, is my homo in the chat? I saw you earlier. Now she's my homo. Uh, Dwayne Norvell, thanks for the super chat, says, Ohio loves what the hails. Our prayers go out to you. By the way, speaking of, someone called me casually homophobic the other day. Casually homophobic. That sounds really lame. Like, if you're going to be homophobic, shouldn't you just be like all in out there? Like really, really homophobic? What is casually homophobic anyway? And it was because I called a fed a, at the F word. But aren't all feds F words? I, I thought that's what 4chan told me. I could be wrong. Kirk Gardner, welcome to the Fox Den. All right. I can't see your chats live. Oh, there she is. There's my homo. <laughs> She's here. She's here. Hashtag my homo. <laughs> can you flux can you believe it they called me casually homophobic i don't even know what that means what, do, what does that mean how can one be casually homophobic <laughs> my homo hashtag my homos would disagree i'm just saying all right my homos are better than their homos matt bond thanks for the super chat says wonder if lynette's lawyer knows she's already thrown under the bus telling the police that he said she could breach the civil order and go to a council meeting. I don't know. I guess it remains to be seen. Stephanie Gordon, thanks for the super chat, says, did the judge tell Lynette to go, go to Silverman? My God, that's a good question, because the judge in Silverman seemed to have a very long history. Is he, like, <laughs> referring her to his friend? I don't know. Maybe there should be, like, I don't know, an inquiry into it. Jim Dara, thanks for joining the fox den i just unplugged my headphones all right there we go where's my fox button there it is thanks for joining uh and also you too wild stallions i like your name thanks for becoming a member amos girl thanks for the super chat my question is did the judge recommend silverman to lynette so another one of you wants to know i want to know that question too that's a very it's a very good question. Did he? Debbie Childers. Thanks for the super chances. Megan sent you a feathered meme with feathered pen. Well, where did you send it? Oh, probably my email. Hold on. Let's go see. <laughs> oh, this is good. Hold on. All right, hold on, it's coming. Um, phrasing? <laughs> Where is it? There it is. 
He's got feathers around his cuffs. <laughs> Mark Feather! Oh, that's good. That's good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. That's, uh, that makes me laugh. You guys, I get such a kick out of your memes. When you send me memes, I get so happy. Oh, here's another one Debbie sent. <laughs> oh my gosh. I asked for smoke coming out of the ears. Debbie has delivered. <laughs> ah! Now, what we need is a thought of talk bubble. Mark feathers! <laughs> This is so good. Oh, man. I can't believe there are still 3,900 of you here. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. <laughs> Sarah Adams, you're my homo, too. <laughs> Who is your homo? Hashtag fat neck. We're done. <laughs> Look, I have so many homos in the chat that I can't possibly keep up on them all. But Sarah Adams is definitely one of my homos. In her pimp shoes. <laughs> I have the best lesbians. The best. There are no better lesbians than found on this channel in the chat. The best lesbians ever. And the weirdest thing is all the lesbians I know that are attracted to this chat are very attractive. <laughs> I don't have any ugly lesbos here. It's amazing. All my homos are attractive. Um... <laughs> One of these days, we're going to have a homo off with all those people who say I'm homophobic. I'm going to gather all my homos together and we're going to have like a, a homo off between their homos and my homos. Mine are better, guaranteed. Guarantee it. They're funnier, they're better looking, and they're smarter. Oh my God. No uggos. <laughs> oh man. You guys are so funny. I have to stop looking at the live chat and get back to the super chats. <sighs> Let's change up the music. Let's go to... Nope. There we go. All right. Where was I? I have forgotten where I was. All right. We'll leave this... Oh, wait. There was more, wasn't there? Wait. Hold on one second. I think I had more memes to look at. Oh, yeah. Debbie sent me more memes. Let's see. <laughs> Shut up. This is so good. This is so good. <laughs> Should I just sit here and laugh at these memes? This is fantastic. Kurt Hobbs, thanks for the super chat, says, Jeremy has another hearing. The judge will have a field day with him if he's seen this. I think that we can safely assume that he has absolutely seen this. Uh, Debbie, you're winning tonight. You're, these, this is fantastic. MG Law. I starred this because it made me laugh out loud. So this dickhead judge is citing down to the second of something someone said. Yes, yes, sir. That's what he's doing. Brenda Essig, uh, thanks for the super chat. Uh, I appreciate our super sticker. I appreciate that. And Sergeant, Sergeant Mom 2, welcome to the Fox Den. Welcome. We have fun here. It's a good time. Canada is watching. Canada is watching. Thanks for the super chat. I thought Lynette's lawyer was just there for one app or one hearing, you mean? I don't know. Uh, he did say he was there on a temporary basis. He didn't say how long. James Eaton, thanks for the super chat, says, stand firm. Don't let this crackpot set precedence. Frankly, I think if he does, though, it'll be in our favor because no appellate court is going to uphold what this dickhead is doing. Eileen J., thanks for the super chat. Please call her Lie Nut from now on. Perfect name for her. It's, I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen the evidence that she's presenting because she hasn't presented any yet. That's the big problem. Maybe, maybe Jeremy's a, the big dickhead. But we wouldn't know. Because guess who didn't give out her, give up her, uh, you know, discovery? How would we know? 
Sergeant Mom, thanks for the super chat. Says with the amount of coverage in this case, law tubers can law tubers flood the court with requests to video the proceedings? No. Uh, media, if if you're a legitimate media that does a recording of court hearings, then yes, you can. But in order to record a, um, and you wouldn't flood the court, you would just fill out a form. There's a form in every court uh, for media access. And what you would do is if you, but you have to have all the equipment and stuff. And the only YouTuber I know who does that is Scott over at the recovery addict. Oh, look who's here. Do you want in Brad? If you want in, add yourself. I don't want to add you if you don't want in. Hello. Hey, how's it going? I am all sort of almost done with the super chats, but it's still going. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, I was actually hoping you were going to pop in here. I'm, yeah. This is going to take a while, man. Oh, man. It's, it's good. I'm all excited about it, but wow. It's, it's um, more like uh, Legal Vice's Griftathon. You, you're just oh, going good through Lord. them. I'm just, yeah, I'm going, we're going through them. We got to get through them. They sent them. We got to read them. That's how it works. Right. So this may take a while. Um, in fact, I need to open up the studio again because... Debbie, who just gave me all those amazing memes, she wants to be a mod. And if Debbie, if you're still here, start spamming the chat so I can make you a mod. I don't know if you're still here. I can't see you. And Venmos. Ooh. I know. I got to get to the Venmos too. We're not. We're not even close to being done here. Oh, oh my goodness. All right. Let's see. How do I get to my? How do I get to my studio? I've forgotten how to do everything. That means the beer is working. Studio.youtube.com. Mm, oh yeah i never even considered doing that <laughs> wait that's not how i get there normally or all studio. right debbie now i am there where i can mod you if debbie is still here debbie you have earned your wrench if you <sighs> like your wrench spam the chat now paging debbie is debbie here god that would be terrible if she's not here and i just laughed yeah, for right. like 10 mean 10 minutes on her memes oh Oh, that would be terrible. Someone reach out to Debbie. Tell her that I I looked at her memes. All right, we're going to the jazz now. I've had enough lo-fi. Ready? Here we go. Not that one. There we go. Uh, everyone shut up for Debbie, <laughs> says Lois. <laughs> Sarah Adams. I thought you were drinking root beer. I should have known. <laughs> All right, Brad, keep an eye out for Debbie. I'm going to keep getting piling through here, okay? Yep, no worries. All right, Sandra, thanks for the super sticker. Appreciate you. Uh, Peeps W, thanks for this super chat. The judge with a grudge going to be on Megan's wall of shame. Well, he does deserve to be on that wall, and we are going to put him on that wall as soon as we possibly can. Gina Quintano, buckle up. They're amazing, and we are family. I really think that the Hales audience is really something special. Sandra, thanks for the super chat. Is it me? Russ the Suss's kid is a Levy elected official. Anyone else making that connection? Why else would a misogynist side with a woman over a man? I don't know. It's a good question. Jeffrey Montgomery, thanks for the super chat, says just for fun, wondering how many more you will have. How many more what? Next time when writing beers? super chats, uh, well, we're halfway, a little more than halfway through this one. Let's see how quickly I can get through these. Jason Williams, thanks for the super chat, says a gag to all viewers violates international laws. Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, the judge doesn't seem to care about laws, though. He's not real interested in that. Caroline, thanks for the super chat. Says, I would welcome you and your crew to the WTH family now. The fast chat and super chats, like, this is normal for them. That's insane to me. We found a Debbie. You found Debbie? Yep. Where is she? Uh, just I don't see. Oh, there she is. Wait, I got her. Chat, stop moving fast. <laughs> Slow down. All right, there you go, Debbie. You got your, mo you got your wrench. All right. Jump. Thanks for the super chat. Says DUI guy sent me. By the way, I'm not a fan of putting your ongoing court case online, but this to Thomas is a wacko. I kind of agree with this. Oh, by the way, I didn't even introduce Brad to this audience that doesn't know him. IT Goatee Brad. Uh, he's 
he's the uh, the miracle IT guy that found me online and helped me with all my computer problems, and then he just kind of joined the show. So yeah. he's here now. He stays. So, so, uh, <laughs> so those of you who don't know the the Megan Fox lore, uh, <laughs> Megan was <laughs> she was streaming. Stop! I'm gonna her... spit on my keyboard. She was streaming from her laptop that was horribly underpowered to do what it, she wanted it to do. So we were able to start a give and go to be able to. Um... Oops, wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> and we were able to raise enough money for her to get a, a more powerful machine. And in addition to a second monitor and uh, a studio light. So, stream deck. The stream deck for all the <laughs> buttons and everything. All the buttons. All the buttons. How many buttons? So many buttons. You know, I yes. can't deal with this. I'm going to nuke America. <laughs> so, uh, and then um, she encouraged me to, one, be able to uh, join because I was using the microphone right here and it was sounding awful. And then I got the camera. So now I'm a semi professional streamer as well exactly and uh brad's great he's got good voice talent he helps me on the podcast fox den daily which you should be following on apple podcast spotify amazon you should be following that now i'm reporting on this case there too but in short segments like 25 minutes so you get just your basic updates every day it's a daily podcast and brad is my voiceover god on that podcast he's so good at it yeah the so, only yeah. thing that the chat ever tells him is more passion brad i could be passionate but right now the little guy's asleep so we got right, you gotta be quiet passionate gina quintano thanks for the super chat gina quintano hashtag buckle up says the hails are the kindest people and yes we are family i really do love their chat their chat is just the nicest people on earth debbie childers thank you so much for the super chat can they take him off the circuit enough to complain if enough complain. No. Uh, well, if enough people complain to the legislature that makes them worry about this, then yeah, they can impeach him. But that's what they ha That's the only remedy. Impeach or vote him out. Dan Davis, thanks for the super chat, says 15 minutes. <laughs> 15 minutes. Oh, wait, I have to drink. <laughs> yeah. 15 minutes. Terry Stratus, thanks for the super chat. If Crook is an addict, maybe the ATF needs to know. I don't recommend calling anybody about anything except the legislature. You can call them all day long. Debbie Childers, thank you for the super chat. Says, other than his hair, he is short in other parts. All right, I feel okay. like I want to put I want to put Debbie's memes back up on the screen because they're so freaking funny. Oh, look at somebody. I didn't catch me any memes. So wait a minute, somebody made me a bingo card I haven't seen yet. Ooh. Order Creek, Levy County Court, Hales versus Lynott, unbelievable idiocracy in court going on, Otter Creek, Florida. Judge retells previous testimony. Well, that definitely happened. Crook violates injunction. Silverman objects. Bomb threat called in. Oh my God, this is so good. Oh my gosh, I'm tweeting this out. This is hysterical. This is so good. I got to take a screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> Judge is wrong. I like the free spaces. Judge is biased. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, C. Thank you, C, for sending that to me. You're awesome. Uh, you're incredible. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, there's another one. Smoky ears, Judge. <laughs> oh. Florida Judge goes off. <laughs> Smoke in the ears. Thank you, C. That's fun. Um, but yeah, I think that these memes have been so good tonight. They always are. Wow. The chat that, always... I'm going through them, and they're pretty good. Look at this one. This is one Debbie sent me, the feathered judge, because we were asking for feathered... <laughs> 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 and he's only only got the pen writing. You know Silverman is speaking because that's when the judge is writing. <laughs> only when Silverman speaks. There's a significant lack of tarring though. We <laughs> Yes, no tarring. There's been no tarring. Tarring and feather. There's lots of feathering, but no tarring. Oh, mother featherer. That's the funniest. <laughs> mother featherer. My god. All right, 
Debbie Childers says, damn, girl, now I'm drinking. It's your fault. <laughs> you cannot blame a third party for your own actions, Debbie. Now, the judge doesn't know that, but I do. Dan Davis, thanks for the super chat. It shows how much people love what the hails. All you have to do is watch Christmas in the Creek. I heard that's a really good one. I heard the Christmas in the Creek one is really a good stream to watch uh, to get a handle on who the hails are. All right, where are we going here? Mama G, thanks for the super chat, says, can you hear Larry saying, you tell that judge I am coming and bringing hails with me. <laughs> if Larry shows up in court on Friday, I'm going to freaking lose it. It's going to be great. Absolutely great. Kate, thanks for the super sticker. I appreciate you. We got eight more to go. We're getting there. We're almost there. Fubar, a.k.a. Ugh. <laughs> Love the hails. I'm going to look into a design for merch for Jeremy and George. They can have all the rights to it once completed. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that. Jeffrey Montgomery, why don't you read one more for the hails of it? <laughs> That's pretty good. Sarah Adams, thanks for the super chat. Who is your homo fat neck? We're done. I already read that one, but I'm reading it again because it was funny and it made me laugh. Ellie Fent, thanks for the super chat, says, I think this woman might be more of a story than this court case. That girl she has, she does not have legal custody of. She took from her bio family. Isn't that kidnapping? Last I checked. Ellie, I don't know about all that. I don't know what the details are. That's allegedly. We don't know. Um, could be, maybe not. Don't tread on me. Thanks for the super sticker. Appreciate you. Teresa Finn, thanks for becoming a new member of the Fox Den. Chickens get eaten. Welcome. Sarah Adams, I feel so personally betrayed. <laughs> Love you, Brad. <laughs> what did I do? No, she said she loves you. It was because oh. I said, where's my homo? Is Flex in the chat? And Sarah oh. was like, I'm your homo? What are you talking about? There's just so many homos in the chat that I can't keep track. Oh, well. I mean, so, that's. I guess that's not a bad problem to have. It's a good problem because all my homos are the best homos. Like I said, Sarah Laidlaw, thanks for the super chat. Scammer Lynette, one of various aliases, should be her own viral story. Look for a news story. Struggling mom adopts sickly baby. Lots to unpack. What? Typing into Google furiously. Just what we need, a, a DHS story uh, involving uh, sick kids. Mm. That's like Megan's bread and butter. Holy crap. Struggling mom. Whoa. Hold, please. We have to turn the music off. What? Stop. <gasps> Wait, I have to archive this. Hold on. Who's worse, the mom or the kid? We have to figure out what's going on here. Is this really a thing? Was she in the news? What concerns me is that I've heard that the, it sounds like the living conditions might be really bad. Like, an outdoor facility and, and things like that. And with all the CPS investigations we've covered on this program that where they don't need to be involved and it's literally like a medical problem and there's parents who are trying their hardest, you know, to get their kids some help. Um, it's terrible to consider that there are children out there that CPS is totally ignoring who are suffering Where's in unsafe Charlotte conditions. Harbor? Um, Puta Gorda. I have family in Puta Gorda right now. I don't know where that is. While this is archiving, we'll continue on. James Fender, thank you for the $5 super sticker. We've finally reached the end of the YouTube super chats, but that means we've just switched over to my phone. <laughs> we can switch over to Venmo. and We got Venmo and Cash App still to go. And the bad news is I don't think I'm logged into Cash App on the new, um, on my new phone. So I'm going to have to reset my password and all that other crap. All right. Let's see what we have going on here. What date is today? The 27th. Rosalind, thank you for the Venmo. I appreciate you. Tammy, thank you for the Venmo. Um, all right. So that's that's Venmo. Let's do Cash App. So Please the only thing about this series or this story is that it says it was last updated December 29th, 2021. The one in the sun? Yeah. Shut so it's, not, it's not there? 
I always think that's your wife whenever that happens. I'm always like, oh, Brad's wife is. <laughs> <laughs> Most people oh. would think that I would have an AI chatbot as my wife, but <laughs> AI chatbot, hilarious. Okay, I'm. Ch I have to change my. I have to get into my uh, cash app. So now I have to go to my. What now? I have to go to my inbox and get a confirmation code. Lord Jesus, be a fence. Hold, please. Do, 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 do. <laughs> All right, here's the code. Now I can hopefully read your messages. Welcome to Cash App. Uh, <laughs> there we go. All right, Dale, thanks for the Cash App says for hashtag buckle up, hashtag grudge judge, hashtag Megan Fox rocks. Well, that's nice of you. Thank you so much. Misty, thank you for the Cash App. I appreciate that. And we're good. I think that's it. Are these people telling me I'm yelling at my wife? Like, I, I, <laughs> no, I'm better than that. Siri. No, oh. Brad does not yell at his wife. That's that. That does not happen. Brad is a very nice husband. I this weirdly this article is not archiving. It's just like sitting there. I've never seen this take this long. Hmm. I mean, it might, but it look. Well, it's if still... you if you keep scrolling, it's probably finding more and more things that it needs to. Um, I don't know what any of this means. Are you telling me you know what this means? Oh, look, there it worked. There it goes. Yeah. On a recent trip to Walmart. Oh, Lynette Preston shows her adopted daughter, Harley Grace, two troll dolls to choose from on her first birthday. This story is part of a Thanksgiving week series that recognizes those people who do something special. Lynette Preston learned her adoption of Harley Grace was final while the two were sitting in a minivan outside a pharmacy waiting for the child's prescription to be filled. That's it? That's all it got. So it got taken down? No, it's you have to subscribe in order to be able to get the rest That's of it. That's not true. I can get past any paywall with uh, archive. Supposedly. I've never, <laughs> I've never not gotten past a paywall. To me, this looks like it's been taken down. I'm going to give her a little email and find out if she still has it. So in other news. Yeah. Um, Tell me. Do we want to talk about uh, a certain uh, bachelor's uh, hearing? Not really. No. I've been at this for five, five and a half hours. hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, the hearing. Okay. So maybe we'll do that tomorrow. I don't think I have any plans tomorrow. What day is today? Tuesday? Today's Tuesday. So tomorrow's Wednesday. I don't have plans tomorrow. So why don't we do that? Why don't we re why don't we watch the tonsil twins hearing in its entirety? It's a 40 minute um, hearing. And there is definitely more stuff in there that we need to talk about. We definitely need to talk about. So we'll watch that tomorrow during the regular live stream. And tomorrow's a normal day. I will be streaming at my normal time, like around 11 o'clock. I'm what do you think? Noon. Oh no! So you can't be there. Well, what I if I start at ten? What 10 if I start at ten? Be All right, I'll start at ten so that you can get at least two hours in. How's that? Yep, works good. All right, Debbie says I have to check my email because she sent me another. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> she sure did. She sure did. So while she's pulling that up, uh, for those of you who don't know, the Tonsil Twins case is the case of Clayton Eckerd, former Bachelor winner. Oh, my God. <laughs> what in God's name is that cup? I don't know. It looks like a cross between a sippy cup and a bong. Yeah. I'm not sure, but it's AI. So, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> wow. But yeah, the Tonsil Twins is an interesting case. Former yeah. bachelor Clayton Eckert, he's been falsely accused of fathering twins with a woman who allegedly only gave him a couple blowies. So she's a uh, she's an anomaly, a human anomaly. She could conceive twins through oral sensations, if you know what I mean. All right, let's see. Dan Davis, thanks for the super chat. Uh, justice for harmony. Um, I'm really, that whole thing makes me very 
uncomfortable. Mama Bear Lee, thanks for the super chat. Says there are so many hails inside jokes and the messages makes me laugh. Two inch pipe and long driveway are actually actually literal. Oh, okay then. <laughs> oh, good. Well, I need to know these inside jokes. Maybe eventually I'll get it. Uh, but yeah, tomorrow tune in. And all of you who are new here, <laughs> flux oral arguments. That's what I'm going to call it from now on. <laughs> oral arguments. That's my homo. <laughs> Keeping it real. Oh, man. I love that. Yeah. So tomorrow, let's do that hearing. We will watch the whole thing tomorrow. The The funny thing about the Arizona Central cut down version of that hearing is that there's so many good pieces about the hearing that it's so hilarious of what they actually cut out. Right. Because there yeah. were a bunch of people were like, I heard on Reddit on the Reddit page, our justice for Clayton. Oh, it's not that it's not that interesting. Then I watched the thing and I'm like, are they high? Yeah. There's so much in here that should have been highlighted in the, in the AZ central piece. Not that you can pick, you can't pick everything. I understand. I'm not criticizing them. I'm just saying of the things they chose, I, I don't think I would have chose, I maybe would have chosen one of them. Yeah. But I would have chosen other things. In fact, when we go through it, we should mark out like, here's what I would have used, right. you know, like from this hearing. It was so exciting and so unbelievable. Yeah, the, the hearing um, was a, um, a status conference um, when they were supposed to go to trial in theory the next or this or today, actually. But um, in the status conference, they said, nope, we're punting this to um, June, 10th. June 10th. And I'm going to be there. And Brad's going to be running my stream. I'm mm -hmm. going to be there on June 10th. I'm going to be in. Hopefully, you're taking the day off, Brad. I hope you're taking the day off on June 10th. Take the day off. Me. Write that down. Take the day off because you're going to be streaming. Yeah. <laughs> and June 10th, I'm going to Arizona. I'm going to visit my precious parents because they live in Scottsdale and I'm going to be with them. And I'm going to head to the courtroom where uh, Laura Owens and Clayton Eckert are going to finally have it out. They're going to duke it out in their trial. They got two hours each to put on their evidence. Was she pregnant? Wasn't she pregnant? Did she go to the press and lie to destroy this man's reputation or not? Does she have any evidence that she was ever pregnant? We don't think so. So it's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, pretty interesting. Dave Neal's going to be there. He's the host of Bachelor Rush Hour. If you haven't subscribed to that podcast, you should. He's hilarious. He's a comedian, podcaster, uh, and also journalist who belongs to the professional society of journalists, by the way. He's very uh, I serious. I heard that. Very serious about that. Uh, Dave Neal will be in Scottsdale with me. So will Reality Steve might be there. I mean, it's just a whole tube town convention happening in Scottsdale, Arizona on June 10th. So we are going to bring that to you live from the courtroom. I will be giving information both to Dave Neal and on my own channel. We're going to be streaming simultaneously, probably. Oh, it's going to be so hot in June in Scottsdale. And not just because I'm there. It's going to be so freaking hot because it's Arizona in the desert, in the valley. It's going to be like 112, maybe 115 degrees. It's going to suck. Is Steve uh, going to apply for pool access? Uh, recovery addict is recovery. Addict. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Scott at recovery addict. That's another channel you need to know. If you don't know about it, recovery addict, please go. And if you like court drama, court stuff, Scott is a great person to follow. Scott has the most amazing golf announcer voice where he does very little interruption of trials, but he will, he will narrate just like this. He's a total pro. He will narrate just like this. The prosecutor is walking up to the podium he is waving at the jury and uh, carrying a piece of paper. It is the funniest thing you've ever freaking heard in your entire life. I love him. His dry sense of humor cracks me up. Uh, and he's going to, and he does an amazing job. He's, he can be part of the press pool. Like he's got those credentials and that experience. He is going to be uh, hopefully in the next couple of days, uh, filing for media access to be the pool reporter at the Maricopa County Court on June 10th. We'll see what happens. So uh, there's a give, send, go that Megan has um, available for uh, helping to sponsor her uh, flight down to Arizona. And I think if we make it and any little extra money uh, that goes in there, Lois Thomas says Megan Fox has to wear a moon belly to the court. <laughs> Oh my god, that would be the funniest that thing That would ever. be so funny. 
<laughs> oh, Roslyn, your message didn't come through in Venmo, but Roslyn's message on Venmo was supposed to say thank you, and I mean it. <laughs> it didn't come through. It I got no message. It just said that you sent a like a super chat. Um, oh my god, a moon bump would be absolutely freaking hilarious. I may have to do that. Although, God, I don't like walking around looking any heavier than I already am, especially because I, I gained 10 pounds. But this... you'll have a reason, Megan. You will be <laughs> pregnant. Look, for twins. those of you who don't understand, we actually believe that this woman wore a fake belly into court. You, it, a fake belly. A f freaking fake belly. And in fact, let me bring up a picture of that because... Was that in court or was that um, via... Oh, it was in court virtually. where she was like... No, well, virtually, but still, she was in court. You consider that in court. Well, but, she... but think of the difference, though. If I'm sitting at home, I can I can put a pillow under there. I could do anything in order to to fake having it, which is why it looks like her uterus is up under her boob. <laughs> <laughs> so, ju seeking justice for Clayton, the Twitter page that I absolutely love, just posted this. Wait, where is it? Here we go. Just like yesterday, here is a picture of her alleged moon bump. You guys, dude, she pushed it up over her breast. And here is the screenshot of it over her breast. Look, this is not real. That motherfucker is not real. Okay? That's all I have to say. That motherfucker is not real. I've had enough beers. It's been long enough. I, I can say it. it. Hashtag... T M F I N R. <laughs> okay. That is not a belly. <laughs> that is not a belly. I am 100% pregnant. <laughs> she said she was 100% pregnant. And then mysteriously, all of a sudden, I am no longer pregnant. Motion to dismiss. Bullshit. Um, okay. So I am looking at the studio right now. What did I come in here to look at? Oh, I know. You were making Debbie a mod, and I already did. I yeah, made her a mod. Did. Okay, uh, view my channel. That's what I want to do because I'm checking out how many subscribers I have. Holy crap! What thirty seven thousand? Man, look at you! Wow, you guys, thank you so much. I mean, that's insane. But if you are not following this Tonsil Twins case, please get caught up. Go to my playlist. Let me show you what it looks like. Here are my playlists. Go to Fetal Attraction, Owens v. Eckerd. It's right here. Open it up and start playing it. This <laughs> freaking thing. Go to the bottom, though. These are in order by when they were posted. Go in the order. Oh, don't worry about this one. I need to get rid of this. Yep. Get rid of Remove. Okay. Start with pregnant or not pregnant. Down here, Laura Owens v. Bachelor. Then move your way up. Go to the bottom. Start there. Move your way. If you want to binge a case, you will not be able to look away from a train wreck, if you will. This is the one. You guys watch The Bachelor on ABC? I mean, you can't ask for a better case than this. Former Bachelor on ABC show. And this woman. Another thing. So there's plenty of. Oh, God, I think I did uh, the hearing with her. We watched the hearing with the fake moon bump. We mm -hmm. Everything is in here. Get caught up before June 10th. You've got plenty of time. I know a bunch of you love YouTube. You're watching YouTube more than you watch TV. Go to that playlist. You will not regret it. Trust me when I tell you this is the craziest story you ever heard. If you want to get the overview, though, I am a journalist. I write things. That's what I do. You can go clickety click on my article on pjmedia.com. Let me pull it up for you where I have written an overview. Did I hear something about Tucker Carlson assassination attempt today? That was weird. Yep. Did anybody uh, else? Hear? Who, what so, happened? So the Russians supposedly captured a Ukrainian guy who was trained by a handler to uh, work with explosives and work at picking or grabbing notes what? from secret caches and ended up picking up a bomb. Then he was supposed to attach the bomb to Tucker Carlson's car at the bottom what? of the four seasons in Moscow. Wait a minute. Uh, and he was oh, paid $4,000. Because he interviewed Putin? Because he interviewed Putin, supposedly the Ukrainians wanted to kill Tucker Carlson. Wait a minute. Aren't the Ukrainians our allies? 
well, and they're yes, trying to but, kill an American. That's interesting. The American journalist that's going against the uh, Ukrainian populism. Uh, so it's it's pretty crazy. Um, I mean, in the same way that Russia wants to assassinate uh, their political uh, opposition, what better thing to do than to hopefully kill Tucker Carlson while he's in Moscow to kill or to t um, interview Putin to ensure Jeez. that the narrative doesn't get broken about the war. Well, that's scary. And I'm, a, I'm glad he's still alive and he's back in the States now. Is that the case? Is, yeah. is he safe? So he, so he was caught on on the way to the four seasons supposedly. And the, he was interrogated by the Russians and this, um, uh, or video came out of him admitting to all of this stuff, but wow. All right. I just dropped the link in the YouTube chat. I'm going over to rumble. I have not forgotten you to drop it over there in case you need to catch up on the tonsil twins case. This is a very good overview, um, of the case. There are two articles, actually. That's the first one. The second one I will drop, uh, after that it, it you guys, this case is you think that the Hales case is a train wreck you can't look away from. The only thing it's missing, though, is two Hummers and a twin pregnancy. <laughs> a pregnancy from Hummers. And poorly That's written legal missing. documents. And poorly written legal documents. <laughs> also, some of the best written legal documents you've ever seen in your whole life. Because yeah. Greg uh, Woodnick, who is... Uh, Clayton Eckert's lawyer. He is so talented at the writing. He's good and he's great in court. So tomorrow, tune in 10 a.m. Eastern time. We're going to watch Greg Woodnick make his arguments in front of a judge in Maricopa County. And it's, we've got the, we've got the court footage. It's going to be great. And you're going to, I mean, this is like a stand up and cheer kind of moments that there are in here when he just says this, this person lied. She's a big fat liar and uh, you should sanction her judge. It's great. And That's you can great. see her dripping with or seething with anger every time she gets called a liar. It's so great. <laughs> and she's like poking her lawyer like, <laughs> he's calling me a liar. And her lawyer is trying his best to ignore her. It's so good. It's yeah. so, so good. All right. It's time. It's time to call it a night. You guys, you have been amazing. Thank you so much, Kate, for the super sticker that just came in. Appreciate you. You guys are amazing. I really want to say welcome to all of you What the Hales fans. You're always welcome on my channel. Thank you for being here. I hope that you find interesting and informative content here for you. But you are always, always welcome. And I just appreciate you. Thank you for tonight. You guys gave me the biggest night on YouTube I've ever had. Most amount of listeners, biggest amount of live viewers, most number of super chats, highest revenue on this channel ever. And you really just killed it. You killed it. Frankly, I have no excuse for not buying a moon bump at this point because I have the money. <laughs> I'm going to buy one and I'm going to make Dave wear it. Oh, no. <laughs> I think Dave should wear it. I think we should make Dave wear it. He can use it for his, for his, um, he can, he can use it, it for, for his stand up. He can use it for his stand up routine. Yeah, that too. <laughs> All right, everybody, make sure you get over to meganfox.locals.com. And don't forget, subscribe, follow uh, Fox Den Daily Podcast. It's my daily podcast. I just started it. I'm testing it out to see if people like it. I'm giving it two months. After that, if it's not working out, I'm going to kill it. So make sure it goes and gets, if you like it, make it go, you know, bring the numbers up and that way I'll keep doing it. And that's totally free. It's all, it's totally free for you to go listen to Fox Den daily. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Brad, thank you for coming to keep me company during no. the endless super chats. No problem. That. All right, guys. Good night. I'm going to find some place to send you. I need to send you somewhere. Where am I going to send you? Because this is a big crowd. Who is going to get the redirect is the question. Oh my God. Because this is a big redirect. It Holy is a big crap. Redirect. All right. Hold on. Let me, let me go. Let me see who's, who's live. <sighs> Runkle. Runkle's Runkle is live. live. Runkle is live. All right. Well, yep, that's where we're going. All right. Ian Runkle, Runkle of the Bailey. He is another law tube staple that you need to know if you don't know him. He is a gun expert, a gun rights expert from Canada. He's an attorney. He has silver hair. He looks like an elf. How could you go wrong with that? I mean, 
You just can't. He's the nicest guy ever. He doesn't swear like I do. And he's just uh, sorry a lot. He's just so sorry. Sorry. He's the sweetest guy. Please tell him I said hello. Make sure you tell him Megan Fox raid incoming uh, because that's where you're going. Please tell Ian that I said hello. Good night, guys. <laughs>